My dad despised my mom for being a white tiger armor. He turned around and got together with the village beauty abalone armor. After abalone had her way with my dad. It caused his armor abilities to be unable to stand tall. Now, in this era of armor awakening. Women can awaken their armor forms when they come of age, possessing the power to destroy heaven and earth. Men, on the other hand, can awaken as masters of armor and become armor warriors by forming contracts with women. Together, they control armor maidens to resist monsters. In my previous life, I made a contract with the Shura armor maiden. And gained powerful skills like instant teleportation. However, I was betrayed by my girlfriend. She deceived me and led me to the territory of the White Tiger, one of the four great beasts in the wilderness. In the end, I died a miserable death under the White Tiger's claws. Now, I have been reborn. My first task is to find the powerful school beauty armor and form a contract with her. As I was organizing my memories, that unpleasant clamp sound rang out again. Claude, I am an S-class Shura armor, in the whole of Eldoria. There is probably no existence higher than my level. If you form a contract with me, you will definitely not suffer. The one speaking was Ephraim, my girlfriend who betrayed me in my previous life. Suddenly, a crisp sound echoed through the entire ceremony. I touched my swollen cheek and Ephraim looked up in disbelief, you dare to hit me? Even within the family, she is the beloved little princess. It's you, I'm hitting, looking at the furious Ephraim in front of me, I calmly dusted off the white powder on my hands. What she had done couldn't be solved with just a slap, this is just the beginning. The students who were about to awaken around us were also attracted by this scene. You see, these two people in front of them are not ordinary. One is a newly awakened S-class talent as a master of armor, and the other is an extremely rare S-class armor warrior. Under normal circumstances, they should have happily formed a spirit pact. But now, they suddenly turned hostile and even dared to hit Ephraim, they truly seek death, Brandon, who had been observing the two from a distance angrily raised his fist. It turns out he had already colluded with Ephraim, feeling his seemingly fierce but only brute force fist. A cold smile curled up at the corner of my mouth, I swiftly retaliated with a powerful slap to his face, causing Brandon to perform a 720-degree mid-air spin, broken teeth and specks of blood flew out of his mouth. Seeing this, Ephraim angrily lifted her head, Claude, we have no grievances or conflicts, how could you be so ruthless? Just you wait, I will personally flay you and rip your tendons apart. However, I only sneered, as a seventh-tier master of armor, the moment I released my intimidating aura. Ephraim, who had been incredibly arrogant, trembled all over, indeed, as Ephraim had previously mentioned. S-class armor was a top existence throughout Barnes, even in Tulum. But among this group of awakeners, there happened to be an exception, I surveyed the surroundings, and my gaze finally fell on the girl in the corner, instantly, my eyes lit up. Evelyn, the school beauty of Forest of Freedom School, she originally had a bright future. Her parents heroically sacrificed themselves on the front lines of the Beast Tide and were accused of being traitors responsible for the battle's failure. Moreover, she awakened a degrade spirit, a dilapidated armor that was considered trash. Even the chance to redeem herself on the battlefield was taken away from her. This former pride of heaven instantly fell to the abyss, becoming the object of everyone's scorn. However, I knew very well that the spirit Evelyn awakened was not as simple as a degrade spirit, nor was it some shabby armor, the armor spirit she embodied was clearly the incredibly noble SSS grade imperial armor spirit emperor's armor. I didn't accidentally stumble upon this information, because my awakened talent was the SSS grade divine vision, which allowed me to unlimitedly access the hidden attributes of any living being or object, see through all illusions, and even enable contracted spirits to undergo a second awakening. After forming a contract with the armor spirit, it could greatly enhance my attributes and briefly grasp the power of the world's instinct, in my previous life, with the help of these divine eyes. I had already sensed the hidden power within Evelyn. However, at that time, I had already established a contract with Ephraim, with the assistance of Divine Awakening. 
Ephraim successfully ascended to the SS-class jade-faced Shura, and her abilities were indeed outstanding. However, forcibly breaking the contract would cause irreversible damage to both of us. Therefore, after careful consideration, I decided not to break the contract. Since then, I have tried to find other ways to help Evelyn awaken, after all, SSS grade armor spirits were extremely rare existences, even if Evelyn didn't form a contract with a spirit master, she could still make a huge contribution as a wild armor spirit in a battle against the beast tide. However, no matter what methods I tried, the hidden power within Evelyn's body remained unawakened. The reason I decided to venture into the beast territory was also because I received information from Ephraim about a precious treasure that could enable armor spirits to undergo a second awakening. It was secretly concealed within a hidden realm in the White Tiger territory, the outcome of this adventure was naturally predictable, although Evelyn sacrificed herself to send me out of that hidden realm, I ultimately couldn't escape the pursuit of the White Tiger spirit, I disappeared sadly in the wilderness. In our previous life, we missed each other, in this life, I cannot make the same mistake again. Isn't that our school beauty Evelyn? How did she awaken a degrade spirit? The once highly acclaimed heavenly pride has now become the object of people's scorn. Just like her parents, they were regarded as traitors by humans, what face does such a person have to continue living? If it were me, I would have long thrown myself into death. Facing the malicious words whispered by the girls surrounding her, Evelyn could only shrink into the corner, silently burying her head, at first, she didn't want to believe that her parents were traitors. But the data from the front lines of the beast tide, no matter how many times she checked, couldn't find any problems, feeling the fists hitting her body, the pain in her heart was even more unbearable than the physical pain. These girls who were now attacking her were close friends just a few days ago, but now they were scarier than enemies. Just when Evelyn was feeling hopeless, a cold voice suddenly sounded in her ear, she curiously looked up and saw a tall figure standing in front of her. The person said, is this how you treat your classmates and comrades? I reached out and grabbed one of the girls, who was ready to strike, I glanced at them and the girl. I had restrained was about to retaliate, but when she saw my face, she swallowed the mockery that was about to come out, her previous contemptuous expression instantly transformed into shyness. Claude, big brother, you hurt me, she said, if it had been before, she might not have been so submissive. But the rejection I displayed when I refused to form a contract with Ephraim, they all saw it. This turn of events reignited the hope within the level 1 armor spirit girl, with Ephraim, an S-class battle spirit. No longer blocking her path, her perspective changed, she saw a new opportunity, as who wouldn't want to form a contract with a spirit master possessing an SSS level talent. The surrounding girls were thrilled at this situation and eagerly gathered around me, Claude, brother, I am a level 1 armor spirit, the embodiment of the demon slashing blade. The grip is comfortable, and it feels amazing in your hand. Choose me. I can even transform into Pikachu. Any kind of sister you desire, I can do it all, one of them exclaimed. In an instant I found myself surrounded by various girls, even Ephraim, who had calmed down from a distance, she regretted the impulsive words she had spoken earlier. However, I seemed unaffected by it all and walked straight towards Evelyn, I asked her, Evelyn, would you be willing to form a contract with me? Let's investigate the true cause of your parents' death. Upon hearing this Evelyn's body trembled, and she looked up in disbelief, are you telling the truth? She asked. Absolutely, without any hesitation, I replied, Evelyn immediately nodded and reached out her hand, preparing to press her palm against the floating battle spirit contract in the air. Leaving aside the fact that I as an SSS level spirit master, was willing to form a contract with her, the condition of uncovering the truth behind her parents' death was something she couldn't refuse. Claude, you need to think this through, she's just a D-level useless battle spirit, and you are an SSS level spirit master. Don't ruin your bright future because of a momentary impulse, someone warned me. At this moment, the teachers in the academy couldn't help but feel a hint of panic, after all, I possessed an SSS level talent as a spirit master, and as long as nothing unexpected happened, I would undoubtedly become a dominant force in the region. Their academy would also gain great renown because of this. 
Claude, listen to the teachers. You, as an S-class battle spirit, am the most compatible with you, you can punish me however you want tonight, Ephraim said flirtatiously, thinking that it would help her cause, I sneered. I remembered that in my previous life, it was listening to the nonsense of these people that led me to form a contract with Ephraim, only to meet my demise at the hands of the spirit of the white tiger. Get lost, I coldly pushed Ephraim aside and walked up to Evelyn without hesitation, I firmly pressed her arm, sealing the contract with her battle spirit. In the next moment, a brilliant golden light burst through the sky, illuminating everyone as if the sun had descended upon them. As they witnessed the contract with the battle spirit taking effect, Ephraim's ingratiating expression instantly turned into resentment. She couldn't understand why her own S-grade armor spirit was inferior to Evelyn, a useless D-grade. Looking back at Brandon lying on the ground, a hint of jealousy flashed in Ephraim's eyes. Since she couldn't have Claude, she decided to completely destroy him, after all, no matter how talented he was, his combat power would be insignificant when bound to a worthless spirit. With this in mind, Ephraim pushed through the crowd and quickly approached Brandon, she asked softly, would you be willing to form a contract with me? Brandon, who had just regained consciousness, immediately nodded, Ephraim, an S-grade armor spirit, was something he desperately wanted. I can form a contract with you, but you must agree to one condition, he replied, at the same time, as I completed the spirit contract, a panel slowly appeared before me. Emperor's armor, SSS grade armor spirit, special rank, emperor spirit, celestial weapon, laser sword, laser shield, mount, emperor's radiant war dragon, attributes, gold, wood, water, fire, earth, light, darkness, skills, five elements deadly strike, emperor's demon annihilation slash ultimate star annihilation slash heavenly astral emperor, and more special abilities, time stop meditation, shape-shifting illusion creation. Status, sealed, unable to summon, first layer of seal can be lifted at any time, second layer of seal requires the snow mastiff's fawn, holy crap. When I finished reading the attributes of the emperor's armor, my eyes were filled with uncontrollable shock. In my past life, I had also possessed an SS-grade armor spirit, so I expected that there might be some difference between the two. However, I never anticipated that despite just a one-level difference, the Emperor's armor's attributes would completely suppress mine in every aspect. Typically, each armor spirit only had one attribute, and some exceptionally talented spirits might awaken additional attributes. But to have two or three attributes was already exceptional among spirits, Yet, the Emperor's armor possessed all attributes, meaning it would not be restricted by any attribute in battle, making it invincible, the skills listed in the skill bar were even more outrageous. The only problem was that the Emperor's armor was currently sealed, however, that didn't pose a problem for me. My Divine Awakening had the ability to release the first layer of the seal, just as I was planning to use my Divine Awakening to assist Evelyn in unlocking the first layer of the seal. A resentful voice echoed in my ear, Claude, I challenge you to a life or death duel. Looking towards the direction of the voice, I was surprised to see someone glaring at me from afar. Are you two so eager to die? If you're a real man, come with us to the life or death arena, I retorted, Claude remained silent, and a hint of resentment flickered in Ephraim's eyes. She gritted her teeth and pulled out a shining silver canine tooth from her pocket, this snow mastiff's fawn, said to have fallen from a seventh-rank snow mastiff beast, was originally a precious treasure given to her by her father for cultivation, but as long as she could cripple this SSS-grade prodigious spirit master, what value did a snow mastiff's fawn hold? When Claude saw the crystal-clear canine tooth in Ephraim's hand, he couldn't help but feel amused. Although his divine awakening could unlock the first layer of the seal occupied by Evelyn, repairing the Emperor's armor would still require various precious items as assistance. The Snow Mastiff's Fawn was one of the keys to unlocking the seal, unexpectedly, before he could search for it himself, Ephraim had handed it over. As he looked at the life or death challenge floating before him, Claude couldn't help but smile. Instead of immediately signing it, he turned his head and looked at Evelyn beside him, noticing her gaze, Evelyn didn't hesitate and nodded decisively, Claude chuckled and casually signed his name on the life or death challenge. The duel was officially established, 
we're all classmates, there's no need to escalate it to this point. The teachers around, witnessing this scene, rushed over to dissuade them. Claude, I'll give you one more chance, as long as you break the contract with that traitor, I can still be your partner, I can fulfill any of your desires. Otherwise, this will be your graveyard, Ephraim said, upon hearing this, Brandon couldn't help but feel a surge of humiliation. He was about to speak when Ephraim ruthlessly interrupted him, leaving him no choice but to swallow his words. Seeing this, Claude couldn't help but burst into laughter, he had initially thought that Brandon was playing the role of a sidekick, but it turns out he was a little bitch. This battle, aside from dealing with these two unpleasant individuals, was more importantly about helping Evelyn regain her confidence, a spirit without self-esteem, regardless of its quality, would only be a soulless puppet. Claude didn't want the magnificent SSS Great Emperor's armor spirit to end up in such a state, but before that, he needed to remove the first layer of seal on her. However, in the next moment, she felt a sudden surge of holy and gentle power coursing through her body, astonishing her. The tattered armor of the degrade spirit, considered worthless by everyone, started to undergo a transformation from head to toe, the peeling rust faded away, replaced by a fiery red resembling flames, the surrounding crowd was stunned when they witnessed this scene. It was their first time realizing that the quality of a spirit could still improve after awakening. They could feel Evelyn's spirit quality continuously rising from C grade to B grade, A grade, until it reached S grade with that holy and gentle power. Could it be that this was an S grade top tier spirit? As the person involved, Claude merely curled the corners of his mouth into a slight smile. Evelyn's talent was far beyond this, controlling flames with the dragon as her totem, clad in a fiery red armor, this was the flame dragon armor, the leader of the five elements. It was an S-grade spirit that could grow, its weapons included the flame blade, flame bow, and flame dart, its attributes were the five-star fire, and its skills included flame fist and demon ceiling slash, special abilities included zen definition, introducing the flame dragon armor, the five-element fire spirit, master of flames. Upon seeing the panel that appeared before him, Claude nodded in satisfaction, in his previous life, he had studied the SSS grade spirit of the Emperor's armor extensively. The Emperor's armor was a natural armor born from the chaos of the primordial universe, possessing self-awareness and controlling the power of light and shadow, as well as the five elements. However, due to unknown reasons, it eventually became damaged and sealed, transforming into a spirit that returned to the mortal realm. Therefore, when I used my divine awakening to unlock the first layer of the seal, the flame dragon armor, as one of the five elements, was successfully unsealed, at the same time Ephraim, who stood on the opposite side, also revealed her spirit form. In Brandon's hand appeared an icy spear emitting a chilling aura, so, this is an S-grade spirit, its aura is too strong. He has formed a contract with that useless D-grade spirit of Evelyn's, Claude might regret it now. Among the spectators, a wave of exclamations arose, is Claude prepared to meet his death? Holding the chilling spear in his hand, Brandon's face revealed a sinister smile, as long as he eliminated Claude, Ephraim would forever be his. Thinking of this, Brandon couldn't suppress the excitement in his heart, he raised the spear and charged towards Claude's direction, just as the spear was about to pierce through his body. Claude's lips curved into a gentle smile, and he uttered a phrase, Flame Dragon Armor, Merge. In the next moment, an unmatched blaze soared into the sky, and at the same time Evelyn, who stood beside them, disappeared into thin air, in her place, there was a crimson battle armor attached to Claude's body. Brandon, who had thought he was about to succeed, found himself easily held by the flaming armor. The terrifying combined attack of two S-grade spirits was effortlessly caught. Even the strongest spirit in the hands of a waste is nothing but rubbish, Claude, how dare you insult us. I'll make you die. The opponent fell into a rage easily, gripping the spear and shaking it forcefully. Immediately after, a painful howl followed, the damage received in spirit form would be reflected back to the physical body. Brandon spat out a mouthful of blood directly onto the pitch black spear. A princess like Ephraim couldn't withstand such agony, sensing Ephraim's thoughts. Brandon stood up again, preparing to awaken his S-grade talent, 
Claude, let me show you our bond. What kind of bond do you have? Adulteress and whore. After being baptized in blood, Ephraim transformed into a spirit, feeling a surge of bloody aura spreading throughout her body, her strength instantly skyrocketed, and she felt that she was just one step away from becoming an SS grade spirit. Looking at the burning flame dragon armor in front of her, the only thought in both their hearts was to kill Claude with this strike. However, just as they were about to deliver their final blow, the previously noisy surroundings suddenly fell silent. The birds in the sky froze in mid-air, and themselves were held in place by a mysterious force. Although their minds could still think, their bodies were unable to move. Could this be the power of time? It's so terrifying. A hint of surprise flashed in Claude's eyes, as if he held time itself in his hands. He didn't even need to summon a spirit to deal with the two of them, the reason he dragged it out until now was to restore Evelyn's confidence. And test the abilities of the Emperor's armor. What I'm most curious about is the special ability of Zen definition, which directly involves the manipulation of time, now that the experiment is over. There's no need to keep these two alive, there's only one outcome, and that is death. Claude, please spare me, I'm willing to serve you like a slave, Brandon, it's up to you how to deal with him, please spare me, I beg you. I'm an S-grade spirit with unlimited future potential, and my father is the mayor, I can give you anything you want. Claude sneered, is this your bond? When faced with great danger, you two flee separately. Thinking back to their previous grandiose boasts, Claude couldn't help but laugh, as for Ephraim's father, Claude had no fear at all. At this moment, the first seal on Evelyn was unlocked, successfully breaking through to the second level of the flame dragon armor, the realm of a second order spirit master. Not only that, Ephraim activated the bet to open the second seal of the emperor's armor in the dual arena. As for these two before me, Claude recalled how Ephraim and Brandon had pushed me towards the spirit of the white tiger, it wasn't so easy to diminish their existence. You no longer hold any value to survive, in the next moment, a flaming longsword appeared in midair. Claude shouted, slash. Sealing demon slash was the ultimate skill of the flame dragon armor. But Claude could choose a more convenient way, without even needing to trigger the sealing demon slash. He knew very well that Ephraim, as a spirit master of the Shadow Spear, would not immediately perish after being shattered but would abandon the body and pretend to be dead, escaping in the form of an illusory battle spirit. This move could easily deceive most spirit masters, even though it would cause significant damage to herself, but compared to her life, it was still worth it. As the word slash transformed into crimson flames, it attached itself to the blade, a fiery crimson dragon soared through the air, its roar echoing through the sky. The students surrounding them all lifted their heads and looked at the fiery crimson dragon hovering in the sky, their eyes filled with envy and astonishment, even a blind person could understand the outcome of the duel at this moment. Seeing himself about to be devoured by the fiery crimson dragon, Brandon sat dumbfounded on the ground, devoid of any will to resist. Ephraim let out a final roar, taking the opportunity of the curse to escape from her body and transform into a soul state. Unfortunately, her little trick had long been seen through by Claude, just as Claude controlled the fiery dragon, preparing to devour the grey shadow attempting to escape. Brandon, who had been sitting on the ground all this time, suddenly stood up and firmly grasped the shadow spear in his hand, Ephraim, who was about to transform into an illusory form to escape, felt her soul being locked inside the spear. Brandon, what are you doing? Let go of me. Ephraim shouted, we are the closest partners, how could you escape alone, even if we die, we should go together to the afterlife. You madman, let go of me. Ephraim didn't expect that the once well-trained Brandon would become her biggest obstacle. Claude, I beg you, spare me, okay? You want money? Resources for cultivation? I have them all, if you kill me, my father won't let you go. Until the end, Ephraim still foolishly hoped that Claude would show mercy, soon, the flames dissipated, leaving behind only a purple crystal at the original spot. 
Upon witnessing this scene, Claude couldn't help but feel a bit surprised, after all, the temperature of the fiery dragon formed from the essence of the flame dragon armor was unimaginable. Under such high heat any object, no matter how sturdy, should have completely melted away. Perplexed, Claude took a slow step forward and curiously picked up the purple crystal. However, the information that appeared before his eyes made his pupils contract. Demon Spirit Stone, Shadow Spear, Skills, Shadow Thrust, Shadow Rebirth. Shadow Thrust, teleport to a designated location, significantly increasing the power of the next attack, Shadow Rebirth, when facing death, can abandon physical form to escape in an illusory state, waiting to reshape the body in the future. All attributes decrease by 99% in the illusory state, status, sealed, absorbable, isn't this Brandon's battle spirit? Could it be that the Emperor's armor possessed the ability to seal the battle spirit as a magical spirit stone? Looking at the diamond-shaped crystal in his hand, Claude's eyes flashed with surprise, if that was the case, then the evolvable on the attribute panel of the Inferno Dragon armor would be very interesting, the death of one party automatically ended the life and death duel, the Snow Mastiff's tooth, which was the wager, naturally fell into Claude's hands, fuck me. One hit kills this rank battle spirit. This is the SSS rank pilot battle armor talent, Claude. I was the one who spoke out loud earlier. Don't take it out on me, Claude. Brother Claude, add me as a friend. After a few moments of silence, the crowd surrounding the battle instantly erupted into a heavenly din. Originally, they had thought that Ephraim and Brandon's double S rank combination was already running horizontally across the whole of Tulum City. Unexpectedly, Claude, this SSS ranked armorer, casually contracted a battle spirit that was actually a hidden extreme battle spirit, and with just one move, she easily won in seconds. At that moment, everything was like a beautiful dream that would wake up at any moment. Evelyn had just awakened for the second time, and his control of the battle spirit was still not pure and some of the information he knew about the future was in the central area of the Blue Star Federation, that was the downside of the One Mind, as long as you didn't deliberately put up defenses, you could always sense each other's inner thoughts, what's more, the Imperial Armor was also an SSS level battle. Spirit, and the consumption it required was even more terrifying. She had originally thought that Claude's choice of her was more or less based on her appearance, in addition to the quality of the hidden battle spirit, after sensing the thoughts in her head, Claude couldn't help but have a black face, otherwise, she was still confident in her own appearance, besides, Brandon and Ephraim had initiated the duel to the death, so who could blame them for their own deaths? She had also imagined that if she hadn't awakened the battle spirit, a waste of time that wasn't deranked, she wouldn't have had the ability to investigate the truth, Tulum City, a small town, obviously couldn't provide the conditions for her own cultivation, it wasn't that Evelyn didn't have charisma, on the contrary, to be the acknowledged school beauty of Tulum City, from her temperament to her figure, or perhaps her looks, Evelyn was an undisputed first-class existence, from the moment she awakened her derank fighting spirit, there was not a moment when she did not live in ridicule. Seeing this scene, Claude was stunned at first, but he reacted quickly, and then couldn't help but frown, his voice gradually turning cold, Evelyn had originally died and was ready to just muddle through her life, no matter what he asked for, he himself would try his best to accept it, and Claude, who was an SSS-ranked gifted armorer, not only decided to make a contract with himself, but also allowed her battle spirit to awaken for the second time, successfully advancing to the quality of an S. Ranked battle spirit, after leading her to the small forest at the back of the campus, Claude sat down on the grass with her buttocks, trying to relieve the bloated feeling in her brain, if even she thought she was inferior inside, then even as an SSS class battle spirit like the Emperor's armor, I'm afraid her future achievements would be rather limited, thinking with her toes. She knew that Claude would definitely be the pride of heaven when he went to the central region of the Blue Star. Federation in the future. If we didn't hurry to hug his thigh now, what better time would there be? As for the two who were killed, Ephraim and Brandon, no one had cared about them for a long time, since then, she too had become more and more numb, and with her, the former high-flying schoolgirl who had been hailed as a genius had disappeared, one person doing the work of two was, of course, a great drain on energy, 
After that, of course, they would surely start Ephraim's father's revenge, but Claude already had a plan in mind, get up, you are my fighting spirit, not a slave. There had been a time when Evelyn had tried to fight back, but all she had gotten in return was more abuse, but now that she had taken the initiative to stand up for herself, Claude couldn't really do anything, Murphy, don't guess blindly. I'm a man. Why don't I take off my trousers and prove it to you? Without hesitation, Evelyn suddenly dropped to one knee and bowed her head deeply, but it was all worth it. But Claude's appearance had actually caused her battle spirit to awaken for the second time, the pilots of battle armors and battle spirits had never been in a superior-slash-subordinate relationship, and Claude didn't want the future battle spirit she would fight with for the rest of her life to have that kind of character, just as Evelyn's mind was in a whirlwind of thoughts, she suddenly felt someone grab her hand, I see. At the same time, a clear tear dripped from the corner of her eye, so leaving. Tulum City and going to the central area is the only option, then how could it be necessary to cut off the roots before leaving? That was why the Lu family of Tulum City had long been at the top of Claude's death list, but he did not need battle spirit, he needed a comrade in arms who could fight side by side, and the battle spirit contract was the most equal contract in Blue Star, this kind of renewed kindness, even with life, is not too much. Dead people are the most worthless things, in this battle, he not only settled the grudge from his previous life, but also nipped two hidden dangers in the bud, that's why Evelyn was prepared in her mind, no matter what the request is, as long as it comes from you, I will do my best to fulfill it, but can you change the location, there are sometimes people passing by here speaking of which, her ears suddenly turned red, thank you for your kindness, I will repay you with my life, that is why the battle just now was fought almost entirely by him, controlling the inferno dragon armor by himself, since the invasion of the beast tide, countless lives had been lost around the world every day, with this rebuke Evelyn stood up hastily. If it hadn't been for the fact that the base of the seventh-ranked master of armor from his previous life was still there, Claude feared that his spiritual power would have been drained the moment the armor merged, and Evelyn, who had long since regained her true form from her armor, sat on her knees in the corner of the arena, her eyes filled with disbelief. But Evelyn never expected that Claude's request was actually to let her stand. It was tantamount to restoring the dignity she had once lost. But as grateful as she was, Evelyn's heart was also more subtle, the next moment her body involuntarily followed, but the wood had been turned, and it could not be undone, most importantly, it had restored Evelyn's confidence. The higher the quality of a battle spirit, the more cultivation resources it would require. Of course, it was a lie to say that she wasn't moved, with Evelyn's looks, I'm afraid no one under heaven would refuse, but compared to the momentary pleasure, what he was more focused on was the future. Entering the territory of the spirit of the white tiger in his previous life had not been without gain for Claude, on the contrary, he had received an extremely important clue that could potentially change the future direction of the entire blue star. As one of the four divine beasts, the spirit of the white tiger, it would soon enter the fading life stage. Among the foreign beasts, there was also a distinction between levels, the extremely numerous ordinary fey beasts were no different from ordinary beasts except for their stronger physical characteristics, and were usually used as cannon fodder, among the beasts hunted by humans, these ordinary beasts made up the majority. Further up were the elite level beasts, these fey beasts were not only stronger, but also possessed spiritual intelligence, capable of using simple tactics and continuing to grow in the midst of battle, because of this ability to learn, these elite fey beasts were usually able to grow into the leaders of a clan of fey beasts, at the top of the hierarchy were the four divine beasts of the beast tide, green dragon, Xuanwu, white tiger and vermilion bird. Of course, these were not the four elephants of heaven and earth of Barnes' traditional mythology, the reason they were given this name was simply because they had similar physical characteristics, thousands of years ago, several Ninth Order armor masters of the human race had joined forces to organize an assassination, the chosen target was also the white tiger spirit, who was at the forefront of the beast tide. In that battle, after paying the price of losing half of the Ninth Order's armor masters and destroying countless S-class or higher battle spirits, the human race had also managed to trap one of the four great divine beasts, the White Tiger Spirit, 
however, a hundred years later, the white tiger spirit, which was supposed to have turned into a withered bone, actually reappeared at the forefront of the beast tide, not only that, but its strength was even greater than before, it was only through. Later research that mankind discovered that the four divine beasts all possessed a special ability called fading to life, when they were on the verge of death, they could use a secret method to return to their juvenile stage and live a new life, it was also because of this ability that the four divine beasts were able to stand for 10,000 years, in the near future, the white tiger, whose lifespan in this world is coming to an end, will take the initiative to begin his fading into life, if the fading ceremony is successful, the spirit of the white tiger will return to its peak, however, Claude had a bold idea, although the four divine beasts were strong, during the fading stage, the beasts were equal, and even though they were divine beasts, they had to hatch out of their eggs honestly, during this fading birth period, the white tiger spirit had no means of resistance. If one could take advantage of this time to infiltrate the foreign beast's territory, then there was a good chance that they would be able to wipe out the white tiger in its literal cradle, the reason for this thought was not how much Claude wanted to contribute to Blue Star, but simply because he saw the conditions for unlocking the third seal of the Emperor's armor, the item required to unlock the third seal, the white tiger's claw. As one of the four great divine beasts, the white tiger could only be fought by a group even as the ninth-ranked armor master of the human race, if he were to follow the normal process, he would have to cultivate to the level of a ninth-ranked armor master, find a group of ninth-ranked armor masters who were also not afraid of death to team up with him, then challenge the spirit of the white tiger, and finally convince that group of bigwigs to let him have the white tiger's claw. Claude felt that the success rate of this set of scenarios was not as good as using the white tiger's chance of coming to life to sneak into fey territory and play it himself, this time, with Evelyn, that emperor's armor at his side, even if the plan didn't work out, he was sure he would be able to retreat in one piece, but first, he had to increase his strength, with that in mind, Claude reached into his pocket. The next thing he knew, a flickering, fluorescent canine tooth appeared in his hand. He had to thank Ephraim, the captain of the transport team, for this, otherwise he would have had to go through a lot of trouble to find this snow mastiff tooth, unlock the second seal of the emperor's armor. A blinding golden light flashed in Claude's eyes and divine awakening was unleashed. At the same time Evelyn, standing next to him, could only feel the divine and soft power descending once more, this is the third awakening. As she felt her battle spirit begin to change again, Evelyn couldn't help but let out a cry of surprise, originally, she had thought that Claude's talent of awakening the battle spirit twice was a divine skill among divine skills, but she hadn't expected to receive three awakenings in just a few hours. That was the horror of an SSS rank talent like this. There was one advantage to divine awakening, it was that when it was time for another awakening, as long as the necessary items were submitted, Claude could just leave it alone and happily hang around waiting for the seal to be lifted, taking advantage of Evelyn's time to unseal the second layer of seals, he also glanced over the diamond-shaped purple crystal in his hand, if he remembered correctly. It was the magic spirit stone that had sealed the monsters, but at this moment, he didn't know what kind of mutation had occurred, and he was actually able to seal the battle spirit as well. Claude lowered his mind and sent a stream of spiritual energy into the magic spirit stone, intending to probe the situation inside, but at that moment, the magic spirit stone, which originally had no abnormalities, suddenly turned into a black light and seeped into his body, this unexpected situation shocked Claude to the core, but when he looked at his attribute table, a flash of surprise flashed across his eyes. Next to the original eye of divine vision, another talent had suddenly appeared. Talent Dimensional Sealing SSS Effect, Signet, Summon, Transform Signet, after defeating the battle spirit, it can be transformed into a magic spirit stone, summon, summon the sealed battle spirit for your own use, retaining some of its combat attributes from its life, when the energy is used up, the magic spirit stone shatters and cannot be summoned again, transformation. If you absorb the energy contained within the stone, there is a chance that you will gain the sealed ghost special. Ability Transformed Ability, Spectral Burst Spectral Spear Another SSS Rank Talent Throughout the history of the Blue Star, there had been master armorers with two talents, but none of them had ever risen to the fame of a powerful group, however, Claude had never thought that he was actually a dual-talented master of armor, 
and that he was also a dual talented SSS rank talent. If the main effect of God's eye is to work with battle spirit, then Dimensional Signet is the perfect talent to boost your own combat power. What does a Master of Armor fear most? Of course, it's when the opponent bypasses the battle spirit and attacks the main body directly, therefore, as long as you are a high-level armor master, your top priority is to increase your own combat power. Now, the appearance of the Descending Seal was tantamount to directly giving Claude a power comparable to the battle spirit, no less. If enough battle spirits were sealed, one could choose the right ability to transform and become a hexagonal warrior directly, not a battle spirit, but better than a battle spirit. Combined with the increase in SSS level battle spirit emperor armor, even if the four great divine beasts came in person, they might not be able to defeat him in a single move. The only pity was that the ability that was transformed this time was not spectral rebirth, which was a perverted life-preserving divine ability, still, spectral spike was not bad, at least it made up for his current lack of displacement, just as Claude had finished transforming the spirit stone, Bai Qing's trembling voice suddenly reached his ears, I have successfully awakened. Snow Mastiff Quality Armor, S-Level Battle Spirit Growable Weapon, Zhen Lei Axe, Zhen Lei Staff Attribute, Gold of the Five Elements Skill, Zhen Lei Sharpening, Zhen Lei Fist Special Ability Zen Seal Introduction, the Snow Mastiff Armor is Gold, the Five Elements, and it is infinitely powerful. Indeed, it's the Snow Mastiff Armor, after casually smashing the giant tree next to him, Claude nodded in his merged armor form, he had already made a guess when he saw the Snow Mastiff fangs needed to unseal, now, as he had expected, the second step of the unsealing was the Snow Mastiff Armor, if the Inferno Dragon Armor was an all-powerful type that could do a little bit of everything, the Snow Mastiff Armor had absolute power, not only that, the Snow Mastiff Armor's defense was also very good, the only thing it lacked was speed, if I remember correctly, Ephraim's father was supposed to contract a battle spirit with top-notch defense, and in order to carry out his plan, he needed an attack-focused battle spirit like the Snow Mastiff Armor. After disarming his transformation, Claude spoke slowly to Evelyn, who had returned to her original body, hearing this in such a hurry Evelyn couldn't help but be a little surprised, although she had long predicted that a genius of geniuses like Claude would not waste away in this small town of Tulum City, she had not expected it to happen so soon, the top academies in the central region would start recruiting in a few days, and if they moved later, they would probably not be able to catch up. After all, Evelyn had only just woken up and her thinking had yet to change, besides, moving in such a hurry was also due to an inner thing that he only understood as a reborn person, if the development of this world didn't have a butterfly effect due to his own rebirth, then, in these few days, a major event would happen in the central region of the Blue Star Federation. A few days later, the Celestial City would open its annual festival, this celebration would be attended by a Ninth Order Master of Armor, an Eighth Order Fey Beast would enter the Sky City to assassinate the Ninth Order Master of Armor, but in the end the Fey Mirror Beast didn't succeed, and after seriously injuring the Ninth Order Master of Armor, it was surrounded and killed by the surrounding Masters of Armor. As an Eighth Order Fey Beast, even a single scale on its body was a very rare material. In his previous life, Claude's strength was low because he had only recently awakened, so he only drank from the surroundings, but this time, after all the preparations, he was sure to obtain the most important item, the Heart of Mirror Image. With this item, the danger of entering the White Tiger's territory would also be greatly reduced, however, before leaving, it was still necessary to eliminate all the hidden dangers. If memory serves, Devon had already secretly made contact with the Beast Wave by this time, because of his treachery, Tulum City had fallen to the Beast Wave shortly thereafter, and the entire city had been slaughtered, for both public and private reasons, Devon must not be retained. Understood. Am ready to act at any time after receiving the order, Evelyn nodded, since her parents had been accused of being traitors, her original home had been confiscated as well, apart from a few changes of clothes, she didn't have to do much, since Claude was leaving, of course, she had to follow as battle spirit. Even though killing the mayor would be a capital offense if she was found out, Evelyn wasn't afraid in the least. She had seen too many miracles happen to Claude, so she believed that Claude would be able to work miracles again. At night, the mayor's mansion in Tulum, what, Ephraim is dead. 
Inside the mayor's mansion, Devon received the news, his body shaking and the documents in his hand falling to the floor. It can be confirmed that it's a student named Claude who did it, halfway through his speech, the auxiliary officer raised his head and looked around, unsure if he should continue, but what? Murder pays for murder. Arrest someone for me. Seeing him in that half-spoken manner, Devon couldn't help but get angry, but, it was Missy herself who initiated the life and death duel, and both sides have signed a life and death contract, I'm afraid that arresting someone if you insist on it will cause offense the assistant officer said nothing more, he is just a subordinate, there is no need to say some things so clearly, as an auxiliary officer, he knows Devon, the mayor, very well, he's the one who gets all the credit, but when things go, Wrong, it's his subordinates who get the blame, if he made it clear, Devon would end up taking the blame himself, damn it. Bunch of idiots. What's the point of you guys? After he had knocked everything on the table to the ground, the anger on Devon's face finally subsided a little, he was, of course, very fond of Ephraim's daughter. If it were normal, Devon wouldn't care about the law and would use his resources directly to order an arrest, in Tulum City, he was king. But now was the critical time for the mayoral election, and there were many people with their eyes on the prize, if someone with an axe to grind picked up on this and didn't let it go, the aftermath would be very messy, and he might not even be able to keep his job as mayor, compared to the power in his hands, his daughter seems a bit worthless, after weighing the two sides, Devon finally forced himself to swallow, forget it, recently, first prepare fully for the mayoral election, send someone. To follow that Claude, after the mayoral position is secured, I will personally kill him. As he said this, Devon's knuckles cracked, and his face became unusually terrifying, in his eyes, Claude was no different from a dead man. As for the fact that it was Ephraim who had taken the initiative to ask to go to the gladiatorial arena of life and death, Devon directly ignored it, yes, he'll go and arrange it, Seeing this, the auxiliary officer also hurriedly left the room, not wanting to touch this form, in the empty office, Devon was once again the only one left, after casually picking up the information on Claude from the table and reading it, the disgust in his eyes slowly turned to consternation, SSS grade talent. The contracted battle spirit was also the best of the best in S class. The more he looked down, the more cold sweat broke out on Devon's forehead, the SSS rank talent alone was enough to determine that Claude's future achievements would definitely not be inferior to his own, not to mention, he had also successfully contracted an extreme S-class battle spirit, even if it was placed in the central region of the Blue Star Federation. This was a genius among geniuses that all the major top academies would snatch up. But this heavenly talent made Devon even more determined to kill him first, Claude, if you don't die, I'm afraid I won't be able to sleep peacefully for the rest of my life just as Devon stood up and was about to secretly order Claude's execution, an unfamiliar icy voice suddenly rang out in his ear, Mayor Hall, Ephraim has entrusted me with a message for you. Ephraim asked me to tell you that she's lonely down there and wants you to go down and stay with her. What? Hearing the whisper in his ears, Devon's heart was suddenly startled, the fighting skills he had developed over the years made him unconsciously dodge to one side, the next thing he knew, a huge silver axe was slashing at him. Who are you? Devon's eyes filled with both shock and anger as he looked at the tall figure in silver armor in front of him, he hadn't expected an assassin to be bold enough to attack in the mayor's mansion. Glancing down at the floor tiles at his feet, which had been splintered by the giant axe, his heart couldn't help but flash with horror. As the command center of a city, the mayor's mansion was built with special materials that matched the military quality of the Beast Tide's frontline, attacks below the third level could leave no trace on it, however, the attack of the mysterious assassin in front of him was able to directly split the bricks indicating that it was at least a fourth rank or higher being. It should be noted that even in the military, a fourth rank battle armor pilot was considered elite, not to mention that in civilian organizations, they were the equivalent of a chief-level existence, who in the world would commit suicide with such a large amount of money? I'm telling you, I'm Tulum City. Drop your weapon and you still have a chance to turn back. As the head of a city, Devon was no fool and hurriedly tried to buy some time, inside the mayor's mansion, there would be special patrols at regular intervals, as long as they patrolled the office, they would surely be able to detect the anomaly. Put down your weapon. 
When he heard that, even Claude couldn't help himself, of course he knew Devin's trick, which was why he had already taken out a team of guards when he had infiltrated, at least until the next patrol no one would come to interfere, besides, the effort required to maintain the Snow Mastiff's armor in its combined state was much greater than the Inferno Dragon's armor, no matter what, it was impossible to waste any more time here, damn it. Seeing that the other party was determined to kill himself, Devon also broke through his previously friendly facade and reached his hand directly into the fish tank on the side, at the same time, his entire body was instantly covered by a piece of turtle armor without a single crack, this was the legendary battle spirit of the highest level looking at the green helmet on Devon's head, Claude couldn't help but laugh a little. There weren't many battle spirits in beast form, but even at the cost of some strength, the masters of armor usually chose the more adorable beast girls to contract. Cat girls, for example, as for that oddball in front of me who chose a king's bastard, one could only say that it was too crude, however, there was no denying that after sacrificing most of its offensive capabilities, the defense of a top-tier battle spirit was absolutely top-notch, if the battle spirit's quality didn't reach the point of crushing, a battle spirit of the same level wouldn't even be able to break through the defense, if it had been placed a few hours ago, Claude might not have been able to do much with that shrinking turtle, even though the Inferno Dragon's armor could do a billion points of everything, it was still hard to break through compared to the Snow Mastiff's armor, which specialized in strength, after all, he was only a second level armor master. To challenge Devin, who was a fifth rank master of armor, would have been crossing three ranks, in the case of an ordinary armor master, not to mention crossing the third rank, even if it was an ordinary overstep challenge, he would have to be pushed to the ground and rubbed, it was also the SSS ranked imperial armor that could do something so astonishing. If Ephraim, the transport captain, hadn't sent the snow mastiff's teeth to break the second seal, Claude, who couldn't summon the snow mastiff armor, wouldn't have decided to kill Devon in such a hurry, Ephraim probably didn't even dream of it, and he unwittingly acted like a son of the band of filial piety and sent his own father away with his own hands, Ephraim, who is a member of the snow mastiff armor, has been sentenced to death, no matter who you are, I advise you to hurry and tell the mastermind behind the scene, you might even be able to fight for a lighter sentence. Devin, hiding in the turtle shell, screamed again, he had once fought a sixth level armor master, by relying on this impeccable turtle shell, he was able to drain their spiritual energy and win. Therefore, Devin was confident that no one could break through his absolute defense, not to mention a fourth ranked armor master, even if there was a seventh ranked armor master, he wouldn't be the least bit afraid. But what answered him was still the sharp axe with a flashing ghostly light, ow. While Devin was still lost in his fantasy, he suddenly felt a sharp pain in his back and couldn't help but let out a miserable howl, generally speaking, people with top-notch defenses had a lower tolerance for pain than those who were frequently injured, and Devin was a typical example of this, it had been too long since he had tasted pain, so much so that he almost fainted from the pain for a moment. But what shocked him even more was how this little fourth-ranked armor in front of him had managed to break through the defense so easily. Looking at the turtle shell shattered in front of him, Claude couldn't help but be a little surprised, unlike the balanced development of the Inferno Dragon's armor, the Snow Mastiff's armor, as an attack specialization type, was gifted with an extremely large increase in power attributes. Combined with the attack enhancement of Spectral Surge, the blow he had just received should have been equivalent to the full strength of an ordinary 6th class armor, Devon, who had taken the blow directly, had only suffered a crack in his turtle armor, and his skin was indeed a bit thick, this power is definitely the existence of a 7th level or higher master of armor. Who the hell are you? Devon, whose eyes were bloodshot, had already fallen into a rage at that moment, if he had known that the opponent was a 7th ranked armorer, how could he have been so stupid as to stand still and take a beating, he would have been ready to run a long time ago. But the most puzzling thing for him was, who had he offended by alerting a 7th ranked armorer? Even in the barn's officialdom, a 7th ranked armorer was a high ranking member of the hierarchy. Now he was actually going to personally assassinate himself, a tiny 5th ranked master of armor, Claude didn't reply, just silently raised the shocking thunder axe in his hand, Hell knew there were no listening devices in this room, it wasn't like he was one of those confused villains in the film who had to deliberately leave out his name and motive before killing someone, 
assassination is all about leaving no trace. Either no one knows, or you kill everyone who knows. After gently pressing the belt, a chipping figure slowly appeared in the air, the moment the Zhenlei axe touched the word sharpen, a flash of blinding white light instantly enveloped the entire room, Zhenlei sharpening, shatters evil and destroys evil, sharpens iron like mud and disperses chaos. As the sharp axe shimmering with ethereal light sliced down once more, all Devon felt was that everything in front of him began to spin, and even his head felt a subtle sense of lightness. But in the next moment he realized in horror, his own body was still several meters away. At the same time, the alarm sounded late and the mayor's residence was in an uproar, looking at Devon, dead but still in battle spirit form, Claude couldn't help but shake his head, it was as he had expected, under normal circumstances, after a master of armor died, the battle spirit form would automatically be removed, but now that Devon was still in that state, there was only one possibility left. He had long ago refined the battle spirit as a sacrifice and transformed himself into a half-orc. Using it as a sign of his defection to the Fae, in any era, traitors were the most despicable of beings. What's more, it was against a battle spirit who had fought with him all his life. To his dying day, Devon never imagined that the one who finally sent him to hell was only a newly awakened second-level master of armor. Just as Claude was about to leave, he suddenly heard Evelyn's surprised voice, Claude, there seems to be a secret room behind that bookshelf. Claude, there seems to be a secret room behind that bookshelf. Following Evelyn's lead, Claude found an inconspicuous bookshelf in the corner, normally, bookshelves are placed next to desks so that you can easily find books to read, but this bookshelf was bizarrely placed in the corner, which was no different from this place, now Claude had two options, either he pretended that he didn't know anything about this secret room and left immediately before the guards of the mayor's mansion arrived, so that there would be no danger, or enter the secret room and find out what's going on. Any fool would know which to choose, whatever it is that would make Devon, the capital of a city, use a secret room to hide, it must be an extremely important item, probably proof of collusion with the beasts, without hesitation, Claude slashed down with the shocking thunder axe in his hand, in an instant, the bookshelf turned into a patchwork of fragments scattered all over the place, and behind it, a dark door appeared. Behind the door was a dark and incomparably dark tunnel, after pushing. The door and stepping inside, a thick, bloody aura swept in, even though Claude had fought countless bloody battles on the front lines in his previous life, he couldn't help but frown when he smelled this stench, he had only ever smelled a stench of blood like this once, in one of the few major battles that had resulted in heavy casualties, but this was the mayor's mansion, the administrative center of Tulum City, so no matter how he thought about it, it should be incomparable to those few mass graves. Besides, the further he went in, the more the sickening smell of blood intensified, he could even feel his feet starting to stick, as if he were walking in a liquid, a bad premonition immediately appeared in Claude's heart and he hastily reached out and pressed his hand to the side of his belt, Inferno Dragon Armor, Merge. In the next instant, the crimson armor descended in a blaze of flame, the blinding firelight instantly lit up the pitch-black passage, but the scene before him made even Claude, who had seen life and death in his previous life, unable to resist taking a breath of cool air, in the chamber in front of them, countless corpses lay horizontally, and the liquid he had just stepped on was the same that was oozing out of their bodies. The passageway, which had originally been paved with white tiles, had now turned dark red with blood, in the center of the chamber, a pool of blood that had collected countless amounts of blood was bubbling with blood, Claude had also heard of this evil ritual, which had been outlawed by the Federation. It was said that as long as one was able to collect the essence blood of a hundred armor masters, their battle spirit could be transformed and awakened for a second time, obviously, this was the ritual that Devon had prepared for himself, a sound of vomiting came from Claude's ears, obviously, the newly awakened Evelyn couldn't bear to watch this scene if it's uncomfortable, stop the sensory sharing. Feeling the uncomfortable thoughts coming from her heart, Claude said quietly, when master of armor and battle spirit merged, generally speaking, the master of armor would be the one leading the battle, and the battle spirit would play more of a supporting role, of course, both sides would share their senses during battle, however, there are times when it is more convenient for one person to fight than two, therefore under certain circumstances. 
the battle spirit would choose to relinquish control and be fully controlled by the master of armor. I'm sorry, I'm too useless, Evelyn's weak voice rang in his ears, don't think too much, that's the reaction of a normal person, Claude didn't think about it, no matter what, Evelyn had just woken up, she hadn't even been on the battlefield, she hadn't changed from her original identity yet, so it was normal for her to feel uncomfortable, he remembered the first time he had gone to aid a town massacre by the beasts. The town full of corpses had given him nightmares for days, if she wasn't afraid at all. But excited, then it was Claude's turn to be afraid, although he wanted to improve Evelyn's attitude, the current environment was clearly inappropriate for training and might even be counterproductive, having cut off her sensory input, Claude moved towards the center of the chamber. He had originally thought that the chamber might contain Devon's hidden treasures, or evidence of his secret dealings with the Fae, but now it seemed that the pool of blood that symbolized the evil ritual was a hot potato instead, no matter where it was placed, it was an absolutely anti-human existence, each time a corpse was walked over, the sacred flames around the inferno dragon's armor would gradually incinerate it, soon, the corpses piled up on the ground were reduced to shards of light, that dissipated in the air, humans could not be raised from the dead, Devon, the culprit, had already been killed, Faced with these innocent victims, Claude couldn't do much more than spare their bodies from further torture, as for the pool of blood in the center of the chamber, he did not destroy it. This was the hard evidence that Devon had committed a heinous crime, if it was just destroyed, who would remember these victims? Not only that, but Devon himself, the traitor, might be honored and worshipped as a martyr because of his status as mayor, how could this bastard deserve such treatment? Just as Claude was about to turn and leave, he suddenly saw something pulsing in the pool of blood, the next thing he knew, a blood-red crystal was floating slowly in the air, this is it, the moment he saw that blood-red crystal, Claude couldn't help but be surprised, he had always thought the blood pool awakening ritual was nonsense, not only him, even Barnes' official top secret information had recorded the results of the blood pool awakening experiments. The only difference was that the victims Barnes used were all death row inmates who had committed the most heinous crimes, what is certain is that none of the blood pool awakenings evil rituals against humanity were successful, could, now it seemed that this ritual wasn't so simple, after all, this blood red crystal that had suddenly appeared had never been mentioned in Barnes top secret test materials, after some deep thought, Claude reached out his hand to hold the blood red crystal, at the same time, he raised his alertness to the highest level to be able to get rid of it in time in case of an accident, however, the blood-colored crystal did not seem to move as expected, instead, it lay quietly in Claude's hand, seemingly an ordinary gem, could it be that I'm thinking too much? Just as this thought flashed through his mind, the seemingly harmless blood-colored crystal suddenly turned red and bored a hole into his armor, it was just like the magic crystal from before, at the same time, an icy voice rang in Claude's ears, a tribute matching battle spirit detected, Barry's moment automatically assimilates what? The moment he heard the icy voice ringing in his ears, a hint of an unpleasant feeling flashed through Claude's heart, sure enough, the next moment, a ghostly cold aura enveloped the entire chamber, countless ghostly silhouettes of sorrowful souls were wrapped around him, as if they wanted to die, and Claude could clearly feel that this ethereal aura seemed to want to assimilate him. However, there was no denying that if he opened his chest to accept the assimilation of this aura, his realm would definitely increase drastically, it wasn't even impossible to break through to a fifth-class armor master with a single thought, combined with the SSS-class imperial armor battle spirit, even a seventh-ranked master of armor wouldn't be a match for him at that time. But there was a price to pay. That ethereal aura was laced with the grievances of thousands of people, if he truly accepted assimilation, even he would become one of them. Although it was said that blackening was ten times stronger and whitewashing three times weaker, Claude was not prepared to become a manipulated puppet, his ultimate goal was not just to be a fifth-level armor. At this thought, Claude's eyes flashed with a brilliant golden flame, give me a break. The next moment, the blazing red flames on the Inferno Dragon's armor erupted, transforming into a holy fire dragon that roared and hovered in the middle of the chamber, in an instant, the thick fog of blood that lingered in the chamber was swallowed by the fire dragon, at this point, Claude finally regained control of his body and couldn't help but breathe a long sigh of relief, but it was also a wake-up call. The difference in information caused by the reincarnation had made him a little too 
confident, almost forgetting that this was still the same blue star with its many crises, such a situation would not happen again. It was a good thing that Evelyn's sensory communication with him had been cut off long ago, otherwise, the scene she had seen might have been more than just a nightmare for a few days, when Claude heard the noises from outside, he knew that he had waited a little too long, without hesitation, he hastily lifted his armor ensemble and stepped out of the secret room, but where the exit was, a team of uniformed guards was already waiting. Attacker, stop resisting at once. You are suspected of assassinating the mayor, we will arrest you according to the law. Seeing him come out of the secret room, the captain-like person in charge immediately raised the long gun in his hand, the moment he saw this person, Claude's heart couldn't help but jump, back then, when he traveled to the central region of the Blue Star Federation, Greg himself had accompanied him and his men all the way, unlike Devon, a scum who had long since gone over to the alien beasts and betrayed the human race, Greg, as commander of the army of Tulum City, had stood firm as a true soldier in the midst of the impending onslaught of the beast tied to the very end. In the end, the people died and the city died, at the end of the massacre, as the beast tide receded, his body could still be seen standing at the city gates, holding the battle flag, now the only fifth-ranked master of armor, Claude doesn't really want to fight him if he can, the reason why Devon wanted to awaken the battle spirit for the second time through the blood sacrifice ceremony, and even went so far as to defect to the fey beasts in the end, this was largely due to the fact that he had been forcibly promoted to the fifth rank through drugs, and there was almost no room for a breakthrough after that, it could be said that even if he continued to cultivate until the day he died, he would still be in the realm of a fifth-class armor master, but Greg was different, as the commander of Tulum City's army, through diligent cultivation and battlefield combat, he had truly risen to the level of a fifth-tier armor master step by step, and he had a very solid foundation. In addition, the battle spirit he had contracted with was also a top class A battle spirit, and even among fifth rank armor masters, his battle power was among the best, no matter how you looked at it, Claude was not willing to fight him, he was only one person, but the mayor's office had a steady stream of reinforcements, if he was delayed until a large number of Tulum city troops arrived. Even if he had the SSS class battle spirit emperor armor, if he was entangled, there would always be a Moment when he would run out of spiritual power, Devon has been communicating with the beasts in private and has been betraying humanity for a long time, and if you don't believe me, there is proof in the secret room. I am here to kill this traitor. Claude lowered his voice, hoping to draw the other party's attention in another direction, traitor. Hearing these words, Greg could not help but raise his eyebrows as his heart sank. He, too, had recently discovered that Devon's behavior was somewhat abnormal and had sent people out to investigate, only the scouts that were sent out lost contact two days ago for some unknown reason. Although what Claude said matched his suspicions, he couldn't possibly assume that the head of a city was committing treason based on a suspicion and the words of a person whose identity he didn't know, ill investigate what you said, but for now, please stop resisting or well use force, Greg didn't want to delay any longer and raised his lance to point it at the mysterious masked man in front of him, if Devon has really betrayed us, then this man in front of him is one of the people who knows about it, how can we not let him go? Claude saw this and couldn't help but sigh, Greg is a good soldier, but unfortunately a dead brain, it seems unrealistic to rely on his mouth, but in battle, if he still used the Inferno Dragon armor, he could easily be linked to himself. After all, this morning's battle was too amazing, so I'm sure word would spread quickly, the Snow Mastiff's armor, with its great strength but lack of speed didn't quite fit the current situation either, just as Claude was contemplating which armor to summon, he suddenly noticed that the tablet of the Emperor's armor seemed to have changed, next to the two armors that had been unsealed, another name appeared, Berry Armor Not Fully Unsealed Quality, SS Grade Combat Spirit Growable Special Rank, King Weapons, Berry Splitting Wind Claw Jinching Divine Artifact, Heavenly Devil Blade Jinching Divine Artifact, Berry Demon Dagger Jinching Divine Artifact, Berry Purgatory Blade Jinching Divine Artifact, Berry Purgatory Halberd Jinching Divine Artifact Attributes, Law Skills Attributes, Law Skills, Prime Impact, Berry Hundred Shattering Strike, Infinite Ray, Thunderbolt Strike, Berry Claw Slash, Demon Dagger Slash, Purgatory Blade Slash, Divine and Demonic Destruction Slash Special Abilities. 
shifting shapes and changing landscapes space and time shuttle condition partially sealed can be summoned usage condition only the strongest chi of earth and sky can be brought into full play and the true power of the chi can only be used by those with an impure state of mind if used by someone with an impure state of mind it will eventually be forced to disintegrate layer one seal raised layer two seal lift condition unknown introduction Berry armor, the strongest armor in the galaxy, righteousness can become a king, evil can become a devil, if the user possesses the strongest chi, even heaven and earth can't stop it. The moment he saw the tablet, Claude's eyes were filled with surprise, he wasn't surprised if the unlocking of the emperor's armor was based on the five elements armor, after all, the five elements armor should have been able to merge with the emperor's armor, but the berry armor was also the ultimate armor, it should have been separated from the emperor's armor. But now, how did it suddenly unlock? Could it be because of that Barry's moment? Claude suddenly remembered the blood-colored crystal that had been condensed from a pool of blood, if that was the case, it made sense, this Barry's mark was a most evil thing that had been refined at the cost of countless lives. The Emperor's armor, on the other hand, was the very embodiment of the celestial Tao, wielding the power of light, both represented ultimate righteousness and ultimate evil, after some of the powers had been assimilated into each other, it just suited Barry's armor to be both good and evil, to put it simply, it should have been a wrong evolutionary path, but in the end, Barry armor was summoned by mistake. The only pity was that, as the ultimate armor, the Barry armor was in the same state as the Emperor armor at this point, and it wasn't fully unsealed, moreover, the conditions for unsealing were still unknown, fortunately, under the influence of Barry's moment, the first layer of the seal was successfully unsealed, and the Barry armor could already be summoned, without the slightest hesitation. Claude placed his hand directly on his waist, Barry armor, merge. The next moment, a brilliant white light shot into the sky, piercing through the endless darkness that covered the sky above. Tulum City, originally silent in the darkness of the night, was instantly lit up by the white light pouring down from the sky, in an instant, the whole town was as bright as day, more than a few people even ran out of their homes just to admire this unprecedented spectacle, what the hell is this? Which big brother is here for the trouble? With that kind of noise, he must be at least a 7th rank armor master. Don't tell me, I really did know a 7th ranked armorer in the past, but he couldn't have done something so outrageous. Soon, a loud discussion broke out in the crowd, at this moment, Kerr was, of course, unaware of what was happening outside, all his attention was focused on the gold and silver armor in front of him, with his opponent's unwavering gaze, Kerr's back was already soaked in cold sweat, Though he had seen countless bloody battles, this was the first time he had encountered an entity that could make him feel so oppressed. Even when he had faced a 7th class armor master directly in the past, he had never felt this kind of pressure. Could it be that the one in front of him was a 9th rank master of armor himself? Kerr looked at Devon's body that was not far from his head, and his heart sank. Although Devon relied on medicine to build up his body, he was still a fifth ranked master of armor, especially in terms of defense, even he could not easily break through the defenses, but the wounds on his body were so severe that he could not even see the body. However, judging from the wounds on his body, it was obvious that the other party had used absolute power to first shatter Devon's proud defenses before finally killing him with a single blow. Anyone who could do that was definitely much stronger than him. This confirmed the judgment in Kerr's mind. But a ninth ranked armor master, no matter what power he was in, was the top of the top, equivalent to the existence of a strategic level weapon, if it was one of Barnes powerhouses, with his status, if he casually gave an order, there would be countless people who would immediately tie Devon up in five pieces. What exactly was the reason that he would personally make a move to assassinate a master of armor of the fifth order? Are you still going to block me? Just as Kerr broke into a cold sweat, a low voice came from the armor, Elder, may I leave my name? If the investigation into Devon's rebellion is indeed true, I can report your generosity to the higher-ups. Wiping the sweat from the corner of his forehead, Kerr clasped his hands and saluted, he was just a wave, not a dead brain, if there really was a ninth rank armor master in front of him, he wouldn't be able to stop the other party with his strength. What's more, even if he added up all the troops in Tulum City, they would still be no match for the person in front of him, a high-level armor master, that's how terrifying he is. 
leave a name. Hearing his request, Claude couldn't help but stare, if he hadn't left his name before because he was afraid that the other party would find him by following the trail, the situation wasn't quite the same now, if he could draw everyone's attention to a berry armor that didn't even exist, it would just be a firework display of his identity. In any case, no one would associate a big man with ninth rank strength with a tiny second rank armor master he had just awakened, at this thought, the corner of Claude's mouth under the helmet twitched slightly and he said in a deep voice, my name, Barry, Barry, hearing this name, Kerr searched hastily for it in his own mind, but no matter how much he remembered, he couldn't remember that there was this big brother above the ninth rank, Senior Barry, you, just as Kerr was about to open his mouth. Again, he realized that the silver figure in front of him had already disappeared, in the sky, which was already as bright as day, the sound of thunder could be heard faintly, a golden blade slowly condensed in the air, the next moment, that aura of a blade plunged towards the ground with an unparalleled momentum, and the target, it was the mayor's mansion. What the hell? Seeing the oncoming blade aura, Kerr was stunned, had only asked for one name, so he didn't have to kill them all. With the power of that blow, he should be able to level the entire mayor's mansion, no wonder. As he danced with his spear, gritting his teeth and preparing to strike, he suddenly realized that the blade had turned in mid-air and was crashing heavily into the open space not far away, a flash of despair flashed across Kerr's face and he could only close his eyes in silence, but the imagined ground shaking did not happen, instead, the floors, which had been specially paved with special materials were transformed into pieces of flying dust that dissipated into the air the moment they came. Into contact with the blade awnings, immediately afterwards, a secret room that had been hidden was suddenly revealed to everyone, I didn't die, Kerr opened his eyes and looked at himself, unharmed, with an incredible look in his eyes, if before he had doubted whether or not the person in front of him under the gold and silver armor was a ninth rank powerhouse, now, he was incomparably certain. Except for those top armor masters, who else could achieve such a subtle level of power control? Even he had the honor of seeing a ninth class armor master in person. Most importantly, when had Barnes ever possessed such a fierce, savage power? Not daring to be the least bit slow, Kirk quickly took out his communicator and dialed the number he almost never used, I am Tulum City Commander Kerr, please transfer me to the Battle God Temple, I have something important to report, Barnes, Battle God Temple, the normally empty hall was now filled with people for the first time in a long time, if outsiders were to see this scene, they might not be able to help but gasp in shock, after all, everyone here was a rare high-ranking armor master. But now they had come here in person for a single purpose, to find out who this mysterious master of armor who had contracted the armored battle spirit really was. While the crowd below argued Alex, who was sitting in the front row, had a question mark on his face. He had been happily researching in the laboratory, but was suddenly called upon to act as host, since the battle spirit contract was a celestial book, Alex was busy with scientific research and rarely attended this kind of meeting that involved national affairs, however, there was one principle for the meeting of the battle spirit temple, and that was that it had to be presided over by a ninth-ranked master of armor who had been given the title of battle spirit, the position of mayor is equivalent to the administrative head of a city, for those of you who may not be aware, the mayor of Tulum City, Devon, was confirmed as a human traitor a day ago, the combat power of a humanoid nuke makes them powerful enough to have a major impact on the world situation, not only that, but the Tulum City mayor's mansion was built to strict specifications and could withstand the attacks of a 7th ranked master of armor, yet it couldn't even withstand Barry's blow. None of the high ranking armorers present broke out in a cold sweat. If it weren't for Barry's blow Barnes would most likely be in a no-return situation because of that tumor, and Devon's problem would be dealt with by the appropriate personnel next, noticing the expectant look on his face, Alex's mind was filled with confusion, these words caused an immediate stir in the war god's hall, as soon as his words were out of his mouth, another rebuttal sounded, seeing the smell of gunpowder intensify, another master of armor hurriedly stood up to ask a question, a hi. Ranking armorer sitting below the first one shook his head slightly after reading the relevant information, after receiving the approval, Kerr's eyes were filled with excitement, and he immediately projected the battlefield images from that time into the air. 
He didn't want to leave behind such a colorful piece of the God of War Temple's history as Alex, the God of War, angrily raising the table while presiding over a meeting in X year X month, every master of armor of the Ninth Order was a being at the pinnacle of the world, however, the information they had gained was still too little, after thinking about it for a while, Alex, who was the decision maker, finally took out the aura of a Ninth Order master of armor at this very moment, but Barry, easily shattered the turtle shell with the strongest defense with a single blow. Also, secretly send people to look for this strong man named Barry, and if you find him, don't take offense and be sure to receive him with the highest level of etiquette, Kurt, who had personally witnessed the Battle of Tulum City Mansion and had traveled all the way here for this meeting, spoke first, seeing that the crowd was beginning to take an interest in this big brother's position, Kerr, too, was ready to strike while the iron was hot and looked towards Alex, who was sitting in the main seat. But he was a little confused by the situation, it was more important to find out the other party's position first than the current argument, no need, your strength is still shallow, you only see the surface, if Barry is determined to hide, then it must be impossible for him to reveal his fighting spirit in public like that, that armor is most likely just for covering, so there is no need to waste manpower, in Barnes. Despite the separation of military and government, the mayor was still able to command the army to some extent, for some reason, Kerr's mind suddenly flashed and his inner thoughts came out, since all the other warlords in Barnes were away on missions, leaving him as the only Ninth Order Master of Armor in the country, he was the only one qualified and able to preside over the meeting. Besides, the onslaught of the next wave of beasts could come at any time, and we don't have any extra manpower to waste, in fact, there is some information that has been blocked for more sensitive reasons, I wonder if I can decipher it here. The others here nodded in agreement upon hearing this, ninth ranked armor masters, being placed in any power is equivalent to a strategic level existence, it is impossible for us to randomly use a large amount of resources to conduct an investigation without any evidence just because of your words, even the outcome of a battle would change as a result. The armor masters who were still arguing closed their mouths when they saw him speak, now you ask me if I can decipher it. Alex, who had never experienced being temporarily drawn into a battle like this, had thought it would be better for him to keep his end of the bargain, I don't think so. Kerr, you are only a fifth rank armor master and your strength is still shallow, so it is very likely that you have overestimated your opponent's strength, Upon hearing his conclusion, the eyes of everyone in the room lit up, including Alex, who was also a legendary, how the hell do I know? It's all about pulling the strings, not only that, but Devon is secretly killing a large number of armor masters to build up blood pools, in a vain attempt to raise the quality of his battle spirit through blood sacrifice rituals, my guess is that this mysterious strong man named Barry is definitely a ninth rank master of armor or higher. The battle spirit that Devon has contracted is a giant deep sea turtle, a specialized defensive type. It can be said that even a sixth rank or higher battle armor pilot would have a hard time breaking through its defenses, after all, he was one of the few ninth rank master of armor in Barnes, a registered battle spirit. Well, from the information we now have, it seems that this great man is on Barnes' side, most importantly, I think that this mysterious elderberry is most likely our Barnes' native hidden powerhouse. For several years now, he has been secretly working with the Fey Beasts, providing a great deal of top-secret information and deliberately causing several beast-tide impacts, resulting in tens of thousands of deaths and injuries, he was just suddenly brought into the meeting to make up the numbers, and none of the information was synchronized, apart from the fact that this big brother's name was Barry. They didn't even know if the other party was male or female, tall or short, old or thin, let alone more private information like the battle spirit they had contracted. In his heart, he wanted to pick up the table and leave, but in order to keep his dignity on the surface, he nodded with a cold face, if he didn't nod again, it would be impossible to continue. Thanks to the approval of the god of war. They didn't dare to imagine how serious the consequences would be if Devon suddenly defected in the middle of a battle, Leaving aside the question of who this Barry Sr. is, I think we need to address the question of whether or not he's on our side, or rather, how sympathetic is he to us. 
Alex, known to the outside world as a multi-intelligent near-demon and the god of Barnes' law, would never have expected to be directly rebuffed by the only correct answer, having received the instruction, the crowd rose in unison and quickly walked outside, they now had one mission, find the mysterious powerful man called Barry. Of course, Claude, who was thousands of miles away, didn't know that all of Barnes had already started searching for him, at that moment, he and Evelyn had already left Tulum City and were on a train heading for the central region, looking out of the window at the rapidly passing scenery, Claude couldn't help but fall into deep thought, at the time of the Beast Tide invasion, the lands had originally fought on their own, however, due to the overwhelming strength of the beasts, it took less than a few months for the vast majority of Blue Star's land to be occupied in an almost crushing manner, it was at this point that the few remaining major countries reacted by signing an offensive and defensive alliance agreement, forming the Blue Star Federation, small border towns such as Tulum City played more of a fortress and stronghold role, with limited amenities, education as a way of life was, of course, only provided up to the end of the 12 years of compulsory schooling. If the battle spirit of the contract was of good quality and wanted to go further, then the only way was to go to the central region and enroll in one of those Master of Armor advanced academies, to ensure that these seeds of the future could thrive, the vast majority of academies were built in the rear, where the pressure of battle was not too great, the one they were heading for now was Starlight City, the center of the Blue Star Federation, I wonder what the center is like, unlike Claude. Evelyn, who was sitting on the side, had a little curiosity in her eyes, Although she was born in Starlight City, she followed her parents to Tulum City when she was very young and has never left since, as a result, she doesn't have many memories of her so-called hometown, but Tulum City has left a deeper impression on her, it's nothing special, it's just a place for people to live. Hearing this question, Claude just shrugged his shoulders, this was no lie. After thousands of years of construction, even a small border town like Tulum City was not much different from the cities in the central region in terms of basic living conditions such as food and housing, if anything, there were more places of entertainment, in his previous life, he had successfully enrolled in a Barnes-affiliated Master of Armor Academy in Antilla, and since then he had stayed in the center of the city and settled down, Claude clearly remembered that there was a massage parlor with a red lantern in the alley next to the academy, and there would often be some cat girls, rabbit girls, cowgirls, and other animal girls standing at the door inviting battle spirit to come and visit, spirit will stand at the door to invite customers, whenever there was a holiday, several housemates would accidentally reveal a smile and go in company, and then they wouldn't come back for the night, at that time, Claude was still very innocent, he just wanted to cultivate and didn't know what they were there for. It wasn't until he graduated that he finally learned the inside story, there are good things about not calling me, is there? But that was just a thought in his head, if those roommates had really called him, he definitely wouldn't have moved on, the reason why those battle spirits had fallen into such a state was simply because the piloting battle armorers they had contracted with had been killed on the front lines, having lost their livelihood, they had no choice but to take up this profession, in barns. There is an official organization to take in these battle spirits and reintegrate them into society, apart from that, of course, there were some healthy recreational activities in the central area, however, in his previous life, he was so addicted to cultivation that he couldn't help himself, and the fact that he often had to go to the front to put out fires and provide support meant that he hadn't really experienced anything, on the contrary, Ephraim. Relying on the privileges that came with his status as a high-ranking pilot of battle armor, often threw money away at some entertainment venues. Fortunately, now that this scourge has been removed and Evelyn's supervision is much better, such things shouldn't happen, please take your seats, the train is about to leave. Next stop, Starlight City. After a short stop, the sound of the train's departure echoed through the carriages, and Claude was prepared to keep squinting for a while longer, even though the announcement said it was only one stop, given the size of Barnes, it would take another hour to get there, but just as he was about to close his eyes for a nap, he suddenly looked out of the window and saw a man carrying a suitcase, pushing in at the last moment as the doors were about to close, if it were normal, this could be just. Another bus driver, but when he saw his face clearly, Claude's pupils suddenly contracted, he suddenly remembered something. Although Barnes trains were renowned for their safety, it was the accidents that had occurred that made them all the more memorable. 
And the Starlight City mega train derailment was one of the most tragic of all the accidents over the years, nobody on the train survived. The official report to the outside world was that the derailment was caused by an accidental collapse of the track material, however, Claude, who was a 7th rank battle armor pilot, had access to some documents that were not available to ordinary people, among them was a detailed report on the Starlight City mega train derailment. That train derailment was no accident. There was plenty of evidence to suggest that someone was behind it, the reason is also very simple, the train was carrying a 9th order master of armor who had returned to Starlight City from the front lines. Although the countries had signed an offensive and defensive alliance agreement and formed a federation, power struggles were human nature, no matter which country, no one wanted a situation where one country was dominant. But Barnes, who has consolidated the forces around him and has many talented people, has a hidden tendency to overwhelm all the countries, the target of this train derailment was the strategically important ninth rank master of armor, and the other people in the carriage were just unfortunate pallbearers, but that was the end of the investigation, the reason was simple, there were no survivors in this incident. There were no survivors, so there was no one to give clues, the only person who could be considered a suspect was a man carrying a suitcase, he was the only one who could not be identified after the incident, with this in mind, Claude hastily pretended to look up at the man who had just got into the car, but the result of the comparison made his heart sink, in fact, the man looked exactly the same as the one in the CCTV footage from his previous life. Looking at the man holding the suitcase and sitting down not far away, Claude couldn't help but sigh a little, in his previous life, he hadn't been in a hurry to leave Tulum City and had luckily escaped the accident, this time, however, he was boarding this death train, this one, what about the legendary butterfly effect? Evelyn, who was sitting uncomfortably on the side, noticed that there was something wrong with his face this time and couldn't help but feel a little worried, earlier, in the midst of the battle in the mayor's mansion, Claude had thought that the images in the middle of the secret room might cast a psychological shadow on her, and had cut off the sensory sharing in the middle of the battle, in the background. He was almost always fighting alone, even though Claude's awakened talent was SSS rank. He was only a newly awakened second rank armor master, and being able to kill Devon, a fifth rank armor master, was already considered an extraordinary achievement, add to that the fact that the consumption that should have been borne by two people was now being borne by him alone, and how could he not pay a price? I'm sorry if I can be of more use, Evelyn couldn't help but sound a little dejected at the thought, in reality, Claude could have just used the full power of his battle spirit emperor armor, which was SSS rank, without worrying about its damage, don't think too much, it's not your fault, seeing this, Claude immediately understood that she must have started brainstorming again, and couldn't help but feel a bit helpless on his face, under the influence of the SSS rank dimensional seal talent, after. Absorbing the magic spirit stone, his body had, from a certain point of view, begun to transform into the battle spirit state, although it was true that he had burdened himself with the effort of two people in the battle with Devon, it wasn't really a problem, at most, he was a little tired afterwards, on the contrary, Evelyn's mind was always in an unstable state after all that bullying, and she started to fall into a state of self pua when she was not moving, the reason why she had to promise. Ephraim to go to the arena of life and death, apart from revenge, was to help her regain her self-confidence. But compared to others, it was rare that she could still maintain her current state of being a normal human being, if it was his former self, Claude wouldn't even dare to say that he could do better than her, after seeing the man holding the suitcase to her right and lowering his voice slightly, Claude said quietly, feeling the strange breath in her ear, Evelyn's face couldn't help but blush a little. And for some reason even her heart beat faster, but she soon regained her composure and looked. Over in the direction Claude was pointing, sure enough, not far away, a man carrying a suitcase was standing out, after all, normal people traveling in a car usually put their suitcases under their feet or on the luggage rack above them, and it was quite rare to see them held directly in their arms like this. This person must have a problem. After observing for a while, Evelyn finally spoke her mind, what have you found out? This time it was Claude who was strange, if it hadn't been for the information he had received in his previous life, even he wouldn't have noticed this man, but Evelyn, could she really see him? Of course she could. He wasn't playing with his phone. 
After looking around and making sure that no one was paying attention to her, Evelyn pushed up the two very substantial pads and came up to Claude's ear to whisper, let's not even talk about the fact that he was holding the case, the most important thing was how any normal person could be in a car without playing with their mobile phone, he remembered that when Evelyn was a schoolgirl, she had always acted cool to the outside world. So Claude rightly thought that she should be exactly what she appeared to be, and that her thoughts would be considered more orthodox, he really hadn't expected Evelyn's thinking to be so clear, looking around, Claude noticed that apart from those sleeping, almost everyone around him was indeed playing with their mobile phones with their heads down, I have to say, the angle of the shot, although it looks odd, is really telling, how about that, I've analyzed it pretty well, haven't I? Seeing his pensive look Evelyn's face lit up with excitement, this seemed to be the first time she had ever helped. Claude could only nod helplessly, he didn't want to correct Evelyn for this strange way of thinking, no one could dare to say that the way they thought was necessarily right, whether it was a black cat or a white cat, the one who could catch the cat was a good cat. There are times when this peculiar way of thinking can be just the thing, you've analyzed it correctly, this person could have explosives in his bag, Claude didn't hide anything and told her the possible outcome straight away, after all, when the battle takes place later, Evelyn will also be fighting side by side as battle spirit, we can't let her merge with herself with a confused face, explosives, you mean, Evelyn, who wasn't clear at first, finally reacted when she said the last word, hastily. Covering her mouth, her eyes full of shock, most likely, Claude nodded, in his previous life, the suspicion that this man was carrying explosives on the train was the highest of all the analyses of the derailment, and the explosives he was carrying were definitely of a very high yield. Otherwise, it would not have been possible to blow up an entire train and kill a ninth rank armorer, so what now? Evelyn's eyes flashed with a hint of panic, but she quickly calmed down and continued to pretend to chat idly, she knew very well that at a time like this any move that might arouse suspicion would make the other party very suspicious, as for the authenticity of this message, Evelyn had no doubts, no, if there was a mole on the train, everything would be over, faced with her suggestion, Claude flatly refused, given the tight security at Barn Station, if the man's suitcase really did contain explosives, it was definitely someone's secret help that allowed him to evade inspection and successfully blend in, the lives of a carload of people were at stake, even if it was a one in a million chance, he had to consider it, what were we going to do? Evelyn was also out of options at this point, this kind of mega-level attack, even if a battle-hardened high-ranking armor master was present, might not be perfect, either way, she was only a newly awakened disciple, so being able to spot the problem was already a rare feat, wait. Claude only spat out one word, if she remembered correctly, there was still half an hour before the man destroyed the train, but strangely enough, if he only wanted to carry out the mission of assassinating the ninth rank armor, he could have detonated the items in the case as soon as he got on the train, after all, the longer he delayed, the longer the night would last. But the fact that he didn't meant that something must have happened in that half hour. The time passed minute by minute, but strangely enough, the man didn't make any strange movements, just sat in his original position, holding the suitcase dumbly, seemingly just an ordinary passenger. But the more he behaved like this, the more strange Claude felt, how could a normal person stay in one position for so long? Not even a specially trained armorer could do that, no rest is the greatest rest. You stay here and be ready to fight at any time, after gently whispering an explanation in Evelyn's ear, Claude picked up the water bottle and stood up, coming to the middle of the corridor, there were very few records of this derailment in his previous life, and many of them were speculation based on what was left at the scene after the fact, so there was no guarantee that this was the truth, originally. He had wanted to mantis the bird in the back, but the time remaining had clearly not allowed him to do so, well, Claude picked up his mobile phone and put it to his ear, but the open bottle of water he was holding accidentally fell out of his hand. At the same time, the liquid in the bottle splashed in all directions, Claude, what are you doing? Be careful. I spent a thousand barns coins on these trousers, you can afford to pay for them if they get dirty, in an instant, the surrounding area was filled with abusive voices, sorry, 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 contrary to the displeasure of the other passengers, the man's face didn't even flinch after the water was splashed on his trouser leg, and he didn't even blink his eyes. 
still staring straight at the seat in front of him, this kind of behavior which was completely contrary to human common sense, reinforced Claude's inner thoughts, Sir, I'm really sorry, I've got some paper here, you don't need to wipe it, a voice so calm that it didn't have a single ripple in it rang out. The man, whose movements hadn't changed, finally twisted his neck stiffly at that moment, a sense of numbness filling his every movement, although he had dodged quickly enough, Claude took the opportunity to touch him, however, the next moment, an extremely violent killing aura came directly from his fingertips. The moment he felt that icy aura, Claude's body couldn't help but shake violently, this aura, he couldn't have been more familiar with it. How could it be him? I'm really sorry, I'll leave this package with you, in a moment, Claude calmed down again, his face remained unchanged and, smiling, he left the handkerchief in his hand and walked towards the toilet at the carriage entrance. A flash of skepticism flashed through the man's eyes as he looked at the handkerchief in his hand, but he quickly shook his head, it was she who was too sensitive, with the strength of one of the four great divine beasts, even if it was only a doppelganger, if she was determined to disguise her scent, even if a ninth class armorer came to visit in person, she wouldn't be able to detect anything fishy, besides, this clumsy human seemed to be of the second class, so it must be a coincidence, since, it was handmade, it was a bit inconvenient to control this body used as a disguise, however, the reaction she had developed from years of fighting still allowed her to unconsciously release her own killing field the moment she was touched. Fortunately, she withdrew it in time and didn't draw attention to herself, no matter what happens, the target of this mission is still that human ninth rank armor master, there's no way she can make a mistake on such a trivial matter. Inside the bathroom, Claude's eyes were filled with astonishment as he stood by the sink, the icy cold aura that had just emanated from his fingertips, apart from the white tiger spirit who was in charge of the killing, who else on the blue planet could possess such an aura that could be described as frighteningly severe and murderous. He had thought of many possibilities, but he had never expected this, on this journey, it was actually the white tiger himself. Although it seemed unbelievable at first, Claude realized after calming down that this was the most reasonable explanation, no matter what, the target that had been assassinated was a ninth-rank armor master. At that level of existence, there were countless ways to preserve one's life, so how could one be killed by a bomb so easily? So the so-called bomb might not even exist, the so-called investigation results of those top-secret level information that he had seen in his previous life were probably just used to cover people's ears, in fact, all those documents were just used to cover up the shameful incident where the White Tiger spirit had once successfully infiltrated the Blue Star Federation and returned in one piece after killing a Ninth Order armorer, fuck. How could Claude not expect to be betrayed by one of his own? True, the bomb was gone, but the scene was even worse. He was still more willing to defuse the bomb than face the White Tiger spirit, who was above the ninth rank, no, suddenly, Claude noticed something strange, if he remembered correctly, in yesterday's real-time report, the spirit of the White Tiger had clearly still appeared on the front line of the beast tied thousands of miles away, so how could it now have infiltrated the center of the Blue Star Federation without a sound? Unless it was a diversion. In fact, there was no such ability as a doppelganger in the intelligence barns had gathered against the White Tiger, and the only reason Claude knew about it was because he had paid with his life, if that was the case, then it all made sense, even if the White Tiger spirit was so confident, it wouldn't be foolhardy enough to personally infiltrate the Blue Star Federation with its own body just to assassinate a ninth-ranked armor master, but if using a consumable like a split body, which wouldn't have too much effect on the main body even if it perished, could be exchanged for a strategic level existence of the human race like a ninth-ranked armor master, then that would be very valuable. Anyway, it was just an attempt, it would be best if it succeeded, and even if it failed, there would be no cost, and it would also cause the rest of the human powerhouses to panic, so it was just a sure thing, at that thought, Claude's eyebrows furrowed, originally, he had always thought that this train derailment, which had been dismissed as an accident in his previous life, was just an internal struggle within the human camp, but what he hadn't expected was that it was actually a plot by the Fay to secretly target the humans, the only thing he could be thankful for was that whoever was on this train was only a doppelganger of the white tiger spirit, and not the main body in person, even though it had the strength of the ninth rank, it wasn't completely insurmountable, 
still, it was probably an opportunity. Even though it was only a doppelganger of the white tiger spirit, it also had an entity, having an entity meant that it would drop materials, if you were lucky, you would probably get the white tiger claw, the item needed to unseal the third layer of the SSS class battle spirit emperor's armor. Of course, it was still a bit difficult to do this on your own, even if it was only a doppelganger of the white tiger spirit, it still had 9th class combat power, although the combat power of Barry's armor was indeed fierce, there were still some problems, because it was summoned in the wrong way, summoning Barry's armor did not consume Claude and Evelyn's spiritual energy like summoning the Emperor's armor did, on the contrary, from a certain point of view, the Barry armor didn't consume anything at all for the two of them. The only thing that was used was the berry sculpture, which was condensed from a pool of blood, the longer they summoned it, the more it consumed Barry's moment, in the previous battle at the mayor's mansion, the diamond-shaped crystal, which was originally the size of a fist, had shrunk a little, even though it was only a single blow, the problem was that Claude only had that one, so far. The only method of refining Barry's moment was one that could be a byproduct of a blood sacrifice ritual. But then again, he wasn't heartless enough to kill someone to refine it, therefore, the number of times Barry's armor was now summoned was one less, Claude didn't want to use this existence, which was the equivalent of a bottom card, until it was absolutely necessary. Claude raised his head and looked towards the first class cabin not far away, pondering in his heart, what? The white tiger is on the train. Are you sure this isn't a joke? In the first class cabin, Lydia, who was leaning against the window with a scroll in her hand, couldn't help but shake her head after listening to the conductor's report, if she remembered correctly, today wasn't April Fool's Day, was it? With the tight security at Barnes, not to mention the white tiger, if even a random animal could get on the train, she would eat the whole book. Why are the staff so brain dead? As this seems to be a mischievous letter, directly thrown away is not only need to be specially presented to their own here but sent the letter above, is indeed so written, and also marked as a passenger disguised as a white tiger specific seat. Although the woman in front of her looks like heavenly fairy, voice is like fairy palace heavenly music, but her body with the cold light of snow white armor and that of the ninth level of the horror of the breath, or let the back of the conductor seeped out of the cold sweat, letter. Hearing this, Lydia couldn't help but raise her eyebrows and casually picked up the already examined letter and looked at it, she wanted to see where the person who was spreading rumors was, but the more she looked, the more serious Lydia's expression became, when she saw the last line, she was even more surprised, there was no other reason, at the bottom of the letter was Barry's signature. To ordinary people, Barry didn't mean anything, but to them, the executives, it couldn't be any clearer. Barry was most likely a hidden ninth rank powerhouse, not only that, the ability to control battle armor and the quality of the battle spirit that he had awakened were probably the highest of all the battle gods, at the time of the meeting at the battle god temple, Lydia was on the front lines of the beast tide and did not attend in real time, but she did receive the minutes of the meeting afterwards. When she saw the video of the battle at the mayor's mansion, even Lydia, who was also a ninth. Order battle spirit, couldn't help but marvel at the moment, she wondered if she were in her place, she would not be able to do it as cleanly as Barry, as a wild battle spirit, Lydia did not sign a contract with the master of armor after the awakening ceremony, as the vast majority of battle spirits did. Instead, she chose to enter fey territory on her own and hone her skills in battle, though she suffered many losses in the beginning because she did not have the master of armor support, Lydia became more comfortable in battle as the empire grew, coupled with the fact that she was an SS class battle spirit herself, after all, although the relationship between master of armor and battle spirit was one mind, they were still essentially two people, sometimes, in battle, it was inevitable that their minds would clash, with the help of a chance she received from the Fey territory, she soon managed to break through the ninth rank and became the first being in the history of Barnes to enter the battle god temple as a battle spirit, for some reason, after repeatedly watching the video of Barry's strike, Lydia always felt a subtle sense of proximity, she always felt that this Barry armor seemed to resemble her own nature. It was even likely that it was a wild battle spirit that had cultivated to the ninth level on its own, so Lydia was immediately curious about Barry, this mysterious powerhouse, unexpectedly, destiny was so fortuitous. The Barry the entire barn's hierarchy was looking for was actually on the same train as her. 
Knowing who had delivered the letter and carefully tucking it away, Lydia lifted a strand of broken hair from the tip of her ear and looked up at the conductor standing across the way with his head bowed, this letter came out of nowhere, we checked the surveillance, but we really couldn't find any clues, despite the unmistakable softness of the voice that came through, the conductor couldn't help but break into a cold sweat, it doesn't matter, contact the Wings of Angels station and ask them to. Send someone to wait at the station and check the passengers as they get off the train, don't forget to reassure them, don't neglect any of them, and try to fulfill their wishes. I'm sure I won't cause too much of a commotion, but it's inevitable that there will be accidents, after thinking about it, Lydia deliberately took care of it, yes, my subordinate will go to prepare. Without the slightest hesitation, the conductor turned around, left the carriages and began to direct the workers to the various carriages, at the sight of the wisps of mist rising from the teacup, the corner of Lydia's mouth twitched slightly, and she casually changed into the steward's uniform that had already been prepared beside her, the spirit of the white tiger, bury this trip, really interesting, 7D car passengers. I am sorry to inform you, in the routine inspection just now, the staff found that there is a piece of glass in the compartment loosened, and it is likely to cause serious consequences. Passengers are now requested to go to the connecting area to find a member of staff and we will move you to a higher class of seating, so please understand, Claude, who had just returned to his seat, nodded slightly as the announcement rang in his ears, as expected, Barry's name was just as good, the note, which could have been thrown away as a joke, was now taken seriously, to an outsider. This might look like nothing more than a normal carriage overhaul, but he knew very well that this was the ninth powerhouse on the train preparing to strike, the reason was simple, even if the scale and intensity of the battle was suppressed, it was still a battle between two ninth ranks, even if it was just the aftermath of the battle, the surrounding passengers would not be able to withstand it. The evacuation was something that had to be done. Thanks to the free upgrade service, the passengers in the compartment had no complaints and were happy to follow the staff out of their seats, Claude, of course, was no exception, so he pulled Evelyn up and made his way to the compartment connection, but when he saw the steward meeting him, a flash of color flashed through his eyes, in his previous life, this fallen ninth-ranked powerhouse hadn't revealed his identity, but Claude never expected it to be her. Hello, please go to carriage 3A, this is the seat reserved for you, after handing over the ticket, this person in front of her always gave Lydia a familiar feeling for some reason, could it be that he was the mysterious Barry, she thought as she shook her head, according to Lydia's assumption, this mysterious strong person named Barry must be a fierce warrior spirit similar to herself. It was known that only females could be awakened as battle spirits, and this little handsome guy in front of her was obviously a 24k pure male, and judging by his ID, he's also a genuine master of armor who's only recently awakened, no matter how you look at it, it doesn't match her guess, Claude took the ticket and smiled before pulling Evelyn along with him and turning to disappear into the crowd. It wasn't until he left the carriage that he heaved a sigh of relief, he had never thought that the one at the top of this train was actually Lydia, as the first and only being in history to ascend to the ninth rank as a savage battle spirit, Lydia's exploits were legendary even in the entire Blue Star Federation, then, at some unknown point, she suddenly disappeared from public view, there were rumors that she had fallen to the onslaught of the beast tide, there were also rumors that she had returned to the war god temple to influence a higher level, but since then, no one had ever seen Lydia in person. Claude had been curious about this for some time, and had even gone to the database, however, with his identity as a 7th ranked armor master, the permissions he possessed were far from sufficient to gather information at the level of a war god, after much time and curiosity, Claude put the matter behind him, but what he never expected was that Lydia would actually die in this train derailment. But this is the biggest problem, if the person on that train had been any other 9th ranked master of armor, Claude would have had no qualms about stepping in and saving her, after all, for an existence on such a strategic level, if one more could survive, it would be one more chance of victory against the beast tide, besides, we were all countrymen in the same barn's camp, so if we could save one, it was one, but Lydia was different, she wasn't an ordinary ninth level war god. 
as the first being to cultivate to the ninth level as a wild martial artist on the blue planet in a thousand years, the Lydia of her previous life, if she hadn't fallen, would probably have caused a huge change in the future development of the martial arts on the blue planet, a butterfly gently flapping its wings at one pole of the world would cause a huge storm at the other, that was the legendary butterfly effect. Claude did not dare to guarantee what the future of the blue star would be if he saved Lydia, in fact, it was likely that his advantage of being unpredictable would disappear as a result, as Claude pondered, a celestial roar suddenly came from the carriage behind him. At the same time, a terrible pressure followed, not that the carriage hadn't been overhauled, but what was that? This can't be a terrorist attack. This isn't a kindergarten bus. In getting off. The sudden jolts caused panic among the passengers, for a moment, the train was in chaos, Please don't worry, one of the passengers may not be happy with our coordination plan, so there is a small conflict with the staff, it will be dealt with soon, please go to your seats in an orderly manner, don't linger in the aisle, the train staff, who had already received the instructions, hurriedly calmed the crowd, when they saw that someone was coming out to direct the scene, and that the bumps were only just there, the passengers calmed down, but only Claude knew what had happened on the original train. It looked as if Lydia had gotten her hands dirty. But he didn't think Lydia would be able to defeat the white tiger spirit that had infiltrated the train, even if it was only a double, as someone who had once personally fought the white tiger, Claude felt that no one should know the white tiger's strength better than he did, in a way, the abilities of the four divine beasts had already surpassed the ninth rank. It seemed to him that the best Lydia could do was to trap the white tiger's spirit inside the carriage and wait for Barnes' reinforcements. The problem was that she wouldn't necessarily be able to hold out for that long, if the slightest bit of battle damage leaked out, the entire train would be shattered in an instant, the battle between the ninth rank was so terrifying, to save or not to save. This question immediately popped into his mind. If he simply wanted to leave with Evelyn unharmed, relying on the ability of Barry's armor, he could easily do so, only at the cost of the lives of this train of people, even if he hadn't saved them, the normal course of events would have seen this train heading for the end of the line, at that moment, there was another bump in the road, and Claude knew very well that he did not have much time to think about it. In a battle between high-level powerhouses, victory or defeat is often a matter of a split second, a decision has to be made immediately. Meanwhile, inside the 7D carriage, Lydia, who had already transformed into battle spirit form, couldn't help but reach out and wipe the drops of sweat that were dripping from the corners of her cheeks, this battle was far more arduous than she had imagined, just one round of exchanges had consumed a great deal of her mental energy, not to mention the fact that she had to split her mind to keep the aftermath of the battle from leaking out, but what surprised Lydia the most was that the slender figure in front of her was actually the original form of the white tiger, one of the four great divine beasts. In human intelligence, the sex of the four great divine beasts had always been unknown, but she had never expected that the incarnation of the white tiger spirit was actually female, a fierce battle spirit. On the contrary, it seemed as if the engagement she was about to undergo had no pressure whatsoever on her, and her voice was filled with ease, originally, she had infiltrated Barnes this time to test the effectiveness of the mirror heart disguise, if the effect was good enough, the stealth infiltration plan she had used before could be used on a large scale, if possible, she could kill a few high-ranking armor masters to weaken the human's high-end combat power, but I hadn't expected to encounter something so interesting, after fighting with humans for so long, the white tiger more or less understood some of the means of human combat, which was nothing more than gaining power through the spirit pact ceremony, however, it was the first time she had seen a wild battle spirit who had not performed a contract and had cultivated to the ninth level on his own, the white tiger, famous among the fae for his collecting fetish, was immediately interested. Human, it'll give you a chance, if you surrender and return with me to fae territory, I can spare the humans on this train, roll. Lydia answered with only one word, it would be hell to believe the words of the Fae, only a wall of sand would believe the promises they make, pity, when the white tiger saw that persuasion had failed, he shook his head regretfully and white light surged in his hands again, clearly intending to make a quick fight of it, no matter what, this was also human territory, and delaying until the other mole crickets arrived to support them would be more or less troublesome, 
facing the terrifying aura. That was coming towards her, Lydia gritted her teeth and as her spiritual energy exploded, every part of her body was completely covered by the mecha, even if she had to die, she had to buy herself enough time. Just as Lydia was desperately preparing to fight for her life, a cold, deep voice suddenly echoed throughout the carriage, where did this wicked animal come from, daring to be so ruthless? What kind of ant dares to talk to my father like that? Being called a sinful animal, the white tiger couldn't help but feel a flash of anger. Just as she was about to lash out, the sense of vigilance formed by years of battle caused her heart to suddenly jump, not daring the slightest hesitation, she quickly dodged aside, the next moment, a halberd crashed heavily into her, what? When she saw that the halberd left no trace on the ground, the white tiger's eyes were filled with astonishment, she could sense that the strike she had just received was at least of the ninth class, even though the materials used in the construction of this carriage were good, the ninth class attack could only turn it into flying dust, however, not only did the attack not destroy the carriage, it did not even leave a trace. There was only one way to reach this level, the person who had struck. Had already reached a level of perfection in his power grasp that was completely inferior to the four divine beasts, it was even possible that he was stronger. However, what puzzled the white tiger the most was when such a strong person had appeared among humans. Your Excellency, with your strength, what is the need to hide, why don't you come out and have a chat? Unlike his attitude towards Lydia, the white tiger's tone this time was incredibly polite, no matter what race you are, as long as you are strong, you will always be respected, after all, they are still a group of unenlightened animals, even if they want to learn from humans, it seems like they are just parroting them now, as an icy voice rang out. A black and silver suit of armor slowly emerged from the connection between the carriages, with it came an unspeakable feeling of oppression, even. Though the white tiger considered herself to be a divine beast, at that moment, a trace of cold sweat could not be suppressed from her back, she had never felt such an aura since she faded into life, this feeling was like a whole planet, no. The whole galaxy was against her. Who the hell are you? Against the oncoming crushing aura, the white tiger finally spat out a sentence with great difficulty. At this moment, she was incomparably sure of herself, this strong person, it was definitely not from the human race. Otherwise, why would they bother to build fortresses? It wouldn't be enough for them to follow right behind this big brother and level their foreign beasts to the ground. Amidst the white tiger's stunned gaze, a low voice finally rang out from within the armor, Lydia, who had taken the opportunity to regain her spiritual strength, was shocked to hear this name, Barry, the Barry she had been searching for all through Barnes, had appeared right before her eyes. At that moment, for some reason, Lydia's heart suddenly felt a surge of emotion, even in this situation where she knew she would surely die, she had not expected Barry to step in and help her, after all, the white tiger was one of the divine beasts, an existence beyond the ninth order, and Barry had already done his best to provide information. It would be a bit much to ask people to risk their lives again, but at the last moment, Barry stood out, stood on the side of her human race. Save them. Unlike Lydia's surprise, the white tiger was much more certain of the suspicions in her heart, since coming to the blue planet, she had never heard of a strong human named Barry, it seemed that this unknown strongman was not from the human race, as long as he wasn't from the human race, that meant there was still room for discussion, I don't know why you're hiding your identity, but I think you can't be compared to human ants, so if you're willing to come as a guest to the nest of foreign beasts, we, four siblings will welcome you, and then some misunderstandings can be cleared up, even though the white tiger had already become the god of the fey beasts, she still had absolute respect for that level of power, and her tone was full of humility, hearing this, Lydia's heart suddenly hung in the air. Above the blue planet, the human race was not the only race, there were countless different strange spirits, the reason why humans could be awakened as battle spirits was also inspired by these races, at the meetings of the battle spirit temple at that time, there was the same opinion that this legendary Barry strongman might not be a human race, and there were many others who agreed, the reason was simple, he was just too strong. Strong enough to push the limits of what humans could achieve, now, with the white tiger's confirmation, this possibility had increased even more, and Lydia simply couldn't imagine what a catastrophe it would be for the human race if Barry were to be drawn in by the fae. Humph, the guest. 
Hearing the White Tiger's invitation, Claude couldn't help but smile, speaking of guests, I've been to the Fay's Nest before, especially you, White Tiger. I can never forget the precious gift you gave me then. How could he forget? Although Ephraim and Brandon had deceived him, it was the White Tiger's spirit that had killed him. If it wasn't for the White Tiger, how could he have returned to the day of the awakening ceremony and made a deal with Evelyn, who was an SSS class battle spirit imperial armor? All of this was attributed to that White Tiger claw, and Claude had always thought of himself as a person who would return favors, this claw, of course, had to be returned. Of course, at that time, the White Tiger did not know his inner thoughts, when she heard that Barry had once come to the Fey Nest, her face was filled with surprise, since there had been a friendship, it would have been easier to pull them together. It was just strange that a strong person of that level should be fresh in one's memory if one had ever met him, why is it that he can't remember it right now? But very quickly, the White Tiger pushed that thought to the back of his mind and spoke with a smile. Since that is the case, please do not stop me, Your Excellency, after I settle this human molecule in front of me, I will personally bring you to my territory to receive you." Lydia was about to open her mouth to convince her, but she suddenly felt an incomparable aura crushing down on her, in an instant, she was forced to kneel, as the armor, emitting a terrifying aura, slowly moved aside to make way. Lydia's heart was filled with a sense of sadness, so Barry hadn't saved her, then he had only saved himself, but at this moment he was suppressing her with his own hands, for what exactly was he doing it? Thank your excellency for your help, and I will surely repay you a hundredfold afterwards, seeing Claude move, the white tiger's face was filled with a smile and he raised his hand, ready to kill the defenseless Lydia once and for all. However, just as Lydia closed her eyes and prepared for her ultimate death, the white tiger's angry hiss suddenly rang in her ears, Barry, you dare to undermine me? Barry, you don't talk about martial arts. As she felt the gusts of pain coming from her abdomen, White Tiger's face was both shocked and angry, she couldn't understand why Barry, who had seemed so cooperative before, would suddenly lash out and sneakily attack her. Lydia, who had never thought that she would be able to escape death, could not help but feel a strange emotion as she looked up at the black and silver armor standing in front of her, unfortunately, Claude shook his head regretfully when he saw the white tiger covering its belly not far away, that blow had clearly been intended for the heart. However, the white tiger's combat experience was too great, and she dodged the fatal spot at the last moment, this carefully laid trap only resulted in serious injury with the power of Barry's armor, even if he fought the white tiger head on, he wouldn't necessarily lose, but it was certain that even if he could win in the end, I was afraid that the Barry's moment in his hand wouldn't last long, to fight is to use the brain. What's the difference between wudu and no wudu? The one who can stand to the end is the winner. The good thing was that even if this blow didn't kill the white tiger directly, it at least managed to seriously injure her, the one who had infiltrated was originally a doppelganger, and in this state of serious injury, it was thought that she wouldn't last long, despicable. After forcibly sealing the wound, but still being able to feel the rapid flow of vital energy in her body, the white tiger's face couldn't help but flash with indignation. Even if this was only a doppelganger, it was still made with some of her essence blood, if she were to fall here, not only would it affect her divine soul, but the most troublesome thing was that once a human obtained this body, after studying it, they would probably research some weaknesses specifically for her, therefore, no matter what, even if you were to die, you couldn't die in human territory. At that moment, there was only one way, a quick fight. Even one berry was difficult to deal with, and if he waited until the humans arrived, he wouldn't even be able to leave if he wanted to. As she thought about it, a gleam of white light appeared in the white tiger's eyes, apparently she is going to fight to the death, Barry, be careful, she is afraid that she is going to fight to the death. Our support is on the way, just hold her off. Seeing this, Lydia hurriedly raised her voice to remind them, but Claude just shook his head, a quick fight had been his idea as well, it wasn't only because every second of maintaining the armored merged state would require the consumption of the non-renewable Barry's moment. Although Claude's desire to save the lives of this platoon was one of the reasons Head made his move. Getting the materials that had fallen from the White Tiger's fall was just as important, if he could use it to obtain the 
White Tiger's Claw, and thus unlock the third layer of Evelyn's seal as an SSS class Battle Spirit Emperor armor, then he would no longer need to risk entering the White Tiger's territory, although Claude was absolutely certain that he could cultivate to the ninth level, time was a big problem, it should be noted that the White Tiger's Claw was also only an item required for the third level of seals. What about the fourth and fifth level seals after that? Would it be even more difficult to obtain the items needed to unseal them? If you wasted decades on a single White Tiger Claw, even if you died, you might not be able to completely unseal the Emperor's armor, to put it another way, unsealing it might not have been so attractive to Claude, after all, even the unsealed Inferno Dragon armor and Snow Mastiff armor were now both rare and extreme battle spirits, however, after fusing with Barry's armor. The little bit of satisfaction and laziness in Claude's heart disappeared completely, he dared not imagine that even. Barry's armor possessed such power, and then the Emperor's armor, which was the same as the ultimate armor and even stronger, possessed what kind of power? I'm afraid that changing the heavens and the earth is just a matter of a wave of the hand. If Barnes power intervened in the middle of the process, I'm afraid that if the White Tiger's claw was really dropped, it would be very difficult for him to take it away in public, so it was necessary to stop this fight before Barnes could intervene. At that moment his and the White Tiger's thoughts were again in agreement, without the slightest hesitation, Claude reached out and gently pressed the side of his hand armor, in the next second, an incomparable aura rose into the sky, half of the Blue Star Federation was instantly enveloped by the power of Barry's armor, and even though Lydia desperately wanted to prevent the aftermath of the battle from leaking out, when she felt this overwhelming royal momentum, not even a single thought of. Resistance could enter her mind, Lydia didn't understand, she was obviously a ninth class powerhouse, but in front of Barry, why was she as small as a mole cricket that could be crushed to death at any moment, and how could Barry's power be so terrifying? The Barnes Ninth Order war gods, who had rushed to assist, couldn't help but look surprised when they felt this aura from Claude, they had long since received the news from Lydia, and of course they knew that the one facing the white tiger was none other than the heart-seeking Barry, and there had even been some of them who had wondered for a while whether it was too much of an exaggeration to call Barry a ninth order being. But it did not occur to me that humans were actually not ninth order. That a ninth order power field could cover half of the Blue Star Federation, ah. The people present, who are not a ninth order realm, walking outside, are all honored as the existence of the god of war, but in front of this aura, they felt they could only look up, it seems that this mysterious Barry is really feared to be in existence above the ninth rank. The thoughts of these so-called war gods were, of course, unknown to Claude, who was thousands of miles away, at that moment, he was staring straight at the white tiger in front of him, who was also preparing to fight for his life, other people might be put off by this aura, but Claude knew one thing, Barry's armor was very strong, but he couldn't maintain this peak level of combat power for much longer. Even if summoning Barry armor for battle didn't require the consumption of spiritual energy. The White Tiger itself was an existence beyond the ninth rank and was similarly burdened with a domain, this kind of invisible clash between domains, even if the Barry armor was able to absorb most of the impact, still placed a great strain on his own body, anyway, Claude had only just woken up, to be able to rise to the second rank of armor master within a day was already considered an exceptional talent. In a climactic battle like this, beyond the ninth rank, an ordinary second tier. Armorer would be turned into flying dust in an instant if he even got close. If he didn't have the SSS rank talent of dimensional reduction seal, and if he hadn't been able to briefly semi-spiritualize his body after absorbing the magic spirit stone, Claude was afraid that he wouldn't be able to last even now, even so, his body was nearing its limit, this blow would determine the final victory. Divine Spirit Incarnation Unleashed Without the slightest hesitation, the soul fire burning in Claude's eyes leapt wildly, as the grand finale ability of the SSS rank talent, the consumption required to unleash Divine Spirit Incarnation was not spiritual energy, it was the soul. Moreover, Divine Spirit Incarnation would go into a long cooldown period after each use. That was why Claude had always used it as the bottom of 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 the bottom. He really wanted to. 
see what kind of fighting power Barry's armor could explode under the enchantment of the Divine Spirit Incarnation. As if sensing his thoughts, the same purple light erupted over Barry's purgatory halberd, a Xinqing divine artifact. That aura, feeling the momentum of the king coming down from the sky, even as one of the four great divine beasts, the white tiger's back was drenched in sweat at that moment, since her birth, she had never encountered such a terrifying being. This mysterious berry in front of her, what exactly was its origin? But now was not the time for her to think too much, the halberd with the blinding purple light is now ruthlessly slashing down. At this moment, Claude, in the state of God incarnation, feels like the heavenly Tao of the entire world, with the infinite world origin in his grasp, poof. The white tiger, who had barely survived the aftershock, had a look of shock in his eyes, although it was only the aftershock of the condensed strike, its power was actually no less than that of a heavenly god in person, Barry's power was surprisingly so terrifying. However, even though she had just used all her strength to resist the impact, the actual killing move came immediately. Barry's domain, which had originally covered only half of the Blue Star Federation, had now enveloped the entire Blue Star Federation, even part of the alien beast's territory had been included, even the other four great divine beasts who were in submerged cultivation couldn't help but stick their heads out in shock and look at the place where the power was coming from, a huge halberd glowing with purple light hung in the sky. The terrifying fluctuations of power it emitted caused many beasts that hadn't opened their divine minds to follow their instincts and flee, and Claude, who had drawn a lot of world origins, finally finished storing his power at that time, the next moment, Barry's purgatory halberd crashed in the direction of the White Tiger, Divine Demon Destruction Cleave. Although it was only five short words, it sounded like a divine amnesty to the White Tiger, and there was no way to resist, but as a divine animal, how could it obediently wait for death? Even so, it was only a double. With a tiger's roar that shook the heavens and the earth, the white tiger that had originally taken human form also disappeared from its original position, in its place was a huge white tiger silhouette, facing the falling purple halberd, the white tiger raised its voice to the sky, immediately after, a golden wave of light, which also emitted a berserk aura, erupted from its mouth. This scene was seen by the barn's powerhouses who rushed over, and the four divine beasts far away in the fey. Beast territory also sensed it, as the top powerhouses, they all knew that this strike would decide the battle. They were all waiting for the result. Would the white tiger, a divine beast, be victorious in the end, or would this mysterious berry, who had appeared out of nowhere, have the last laugh? At that moment, the hearts of countless people hung in the air, but the imagined stalemate never materialized, the earth-shaking explosions did not erupt either, between heaven and earth, it seemed that only that unstoppable purple halberd remained. Even though the golden wave of light emitting a berserk aura was the last killing move that the white tiger had used by condensing his origin energy, it appeared incomparably fragile in front of Barry's purple halberd, and pieces of it crumbled, under the shadow, white tiger couldn't help but sigh slightly, this aura that crushed everything, even if her own body descended. I'm afraid she wouldn't necessarily be able to withstand it, besides, what was here was only a bilocation, in an instant, the gigantic silhouette that the white tiger had conjured up was pierced like a bubble by a halberd, the next moment, the berry domain that enveloped the entire Blue Star Federation slowly dissipated, and the figure of the divine beast white tiger also turned into points of light that dissipated, the sky and earth returned to normal as if nothing had happened, and the barn's war gods couldn't help but stop in their tracks. Everyone's eyes were filled with shock as they watched the white and purple. Points of light spread across the sky. Only they knew that nothing had happened, they had just witnessed a duel between the top fighters of the Blue Star. After this battle, I'm afraid no one would dare to question Barry's strength. It was a long time before someone reacted and hurriedly called out, Don't stop, Barry might not be gone yet. Don't let the big man escape again. Fuck me. You didn't say that before. Who knows how to accelerate? Hurry up and accelerate. Being so reminded, this in the outside world seems to be incomparably high and cold god of war, but at this time as if to attend the meeting of fans of the stars in general, rushing faster than one by one, at their level, 
they were more concerned with how to improve their strength, if they were lucky enough to get some guidance from Barry, who had surpassed the ninth rank, they might be able to make another breakthrough in their own realm. As for identity, it still mattered, since Barry was willing to step in to block the white tiger, it meant that even if he wasn't human, he was definitely more in the human camp, with such a strong person, it was too late to draw them in, who would still be idle and bored to check their account. However, when a group of Barnes God of War rushed to the train, see in addition to the jaws dropped a floor of the train crew, there is only Lydia is sitting in the same place, as for Barry, has long disappeared, where is he? An impatient ninth rank master of armor, as soon as he entered the carriage, he couldn't wait to look around, don't look, Barry's already gone, at this point, Lydia, who had been sitting on the side, finally came to her senses and slowly stood up, holding on to the wall of the carriage, the feeling of surviving a robbery was originally indescribable, but under this level of impact, even if she was a ninth order powerhouse, it was simply impossible for her to do so unharmed. So at the last moment, Lydia turned to cover the entire train with her spiritual power, hoping to save as many of the passengers as possible, but in doing so, she also gave up her last chance of survival, but just as Lydia was about to fall, she was surprised to find that the terrible aftermath of the battle hadn't even leaked out, this kind of subtle control of power had completely overwhelmed her imagination. Barry's armor was that terrifying. Not only that, even those closest to the battlefield itself were a purple light protection, Lydia is very clear, if it is not this purple protective barrier, in this level of battle, I am afraid that I am now even left with the dregs, however, this was what puzzled her the most, it was clearly the most critical moment of the battle, every decision could change the final outcome. Why did Barry need to spare a trace of his mind to protect himself? Never mind her fellow officers who complained about being a step behind her. Lydia looked away from the window, the purple and silver armor seemed to be right in front of her, there was only one thought in her head at that moment, Barry, who are you? Barnes Vocational Association, Temple of the God of War, the meeting hall, which had just opened a short time ago, was once again filled with people, without exception, they were all here because of Barry's reappearance, but what was different from the last time was this, the people who had come to attend this meeting were obviously much stronger, Alex, who was sitting on the main seat, still had the majesty of a legendary powerhouse on his face, but in his heart, he had already begun to weaken. In the past, Barnes wouldn't even be able to hold a meeting of this level for a few years, but who knows why, when it was his turn to preside over the meeting, things just seemed to fall into place, could it be that he was some kind of heavenly chosen assassin? He did not forget his duties, however. When he saw that everyone had arrived, he coughed lightly and opened his mouth, I believe everyone has already received the news that not long ago, the white tiger, one of the four great divine beasts, lurked on top of a train traveling to Starlight City by unknown means, based on the clues already investigated, it's most likely that her purpose is to assassinate Lydia, but just in case there were people who didn't know the content. Alex explained it briefly anyway, hearing this, the Participants looked at each other, seeing the surprise in each other's eyes, the white tiger, one of the four giants of the foreign beasts, had actually infiltrated the central region of the Blue Star Federation without them noticing, if they allowed the other side to enter Starlight City this time, the consequences would be unimaginable. Most importantly, Lydia, who was still a ninth-ranked war god, had been chosen as the target of the assassination and had survived with great difficulty, would she be the next to be assassinated? Seeing that many people had begun to whisper, Alex tapped on the table and said in a deep voice, I know that everyone has doubts in their hearts, so let's ask the person in question to explain the situation. After receiving the order, Lydia slowly stood up. At that time, I received the transfer order and took the train back to Wings of Angels, strangely enough, just one stop away from Wings of Angels. The train attendant reported receiving a note from a mysterious person, at the top of the note. Was the identity and location of the White Tiger in disguise, thanks to this vital information, we were able to locate White Tiger and deal with him in time to prevent any more serious consequences. Just as she was about to continue her report, a robed person at the conference table raised his hand and said suspiciously, the White Tiger's strength should have surpassed the ninth level by now, it's not just me, everyone here should know very well that none of us would have the strength to fight the White Tiger alone, of course, I do not doubt you, but I am curious about one thing, 
How exactly did you survive White Tiger's assassination attempt? Lydia's eyes flashed with a hint of hesitation and she looked at Alex on the main seat, seeing a nod of agreement, she continued, the one who helped is the one we were looking for, Barry. What? Barry has actually appeared. The moment these words were uttered, there was an uproar in the War God Hall, with their positions, they all knew that Barnes had recently mobilized a lot of forces to search for this mysterious powerhouse, but to no avail, unexpectedly, he had come to the door himself, what happened then? Someone couldn't wait to ask, even though Barnes had a number of armor masters to assist him during the battle with the White Tiger, there were still many people who didn't fully understand the situation at that time, when I was about to lose, Barry Senpai stepped in and not only blocked the White Tiger's fatal blow, but also deflected it, everyone should have heard about the massive appearance of a vision in the sky. It was Barry fighting with the White Tiger. Hearing this, many people took a deep breath of cold air. That giant halberd that could be called a celestial warrior, even though they were far away from the front line of the beast tide, they could clearly see the terrifying fluctuations it contained, even though none of the people who could attend a meeting at this level were high-ranking armor masters, they wondered if they wouldn't be able to do so even if they cultivated for a few more decades, but for that mysterious Barry, it seemed to be just a casual act, I'm afraid his power was much greater than anyone imagined. As a result, the White Tiger was forced to manifest his true body, and after the two collided, the White Tiger fell, while Barry was nowhere to be found, what? The White Tiger fell. The people here looked at each other and saw the shock in each other's eyes, if the previous results had been watered down, then the white tiger was a true pinnacle of existence, even the current Barnes war gods didn't dare to guarantee that they could fight the white tiger for a few moves, now, as one of the four great divine beasts, the white tiger, surprisingly, it had fallen. Even if it was only a doppelganger, it was still a feat that had never been seen before in the history of Blue Star. This battle made the experts who had doubted Claude's strength before completely shut their mouths, seeing that the meeting had fallen into silence, Alex coughed twice lightly, trying to break the awkward atmosphere, what do you all think? Judging by the fact that he had to save a train of people at the White Tiger's expense this time, Barry seems even more biased towards our camp, after a few moments, one of the masters of armor raised his hand to speak after a moment of reflection, however, another problem arises. Since Barry has chosen to kill the White Tiger's doppelganger, the Fey Beasts are bound to make an enemy of him afterwards, in that case, why did he choose to leave at the end instead of working with us? We don't have enough information at the moment, and we really can't be sure whether Barry's actions were rash or not, what is certain is that Barry is an existence that has transcended the Ninth Order, and under such a premise, if there is any miscalculation in his attitude, the consequences are likely to be devastating. The others nodded their heads at these words, if Barry had been a ninth order powerhouse, they would have been happy to use any means necessary to lure him in, but now, Barry's strength was probably more than ninth rank, besides, they still didn't have any information about Barry, even whether he was a man or a woman, the quality of the battle spirit he had contracted, which side his stance actually favored, and even whether he was human or not could not be determined, if there was an accident. During the negotiation, no one would be able to bear the consequences, therefore, this mysterious Barry could be a heavenly battle spirit or an unstoppable demon, no one dared to make an easy judgment, seeing that no one was taking a stand, Alex sighed helplessly, he knew very well that those who could attend this meeting, and there were not one in a million of them, would not have an attitude toward such things in their hearts. But this pot was really too big, so big that no one in the crowd dared to carry it, they were just waiting for a leader to appear. And who, besides himself, was qualified to be that leader? Thinking about this, Alex slowly stood up and, after scanning the circle, said majestically, pass on my order to mobilize more resources to investigate this mysterious Barry, no matter what, we must know his true identity, he is most likely the future Lord of Barnes War God Temple. Claude, who was thousands of miles away, obviously didn't know that the whole of Barnes had undergone drastic changes because of him, at the moment, he was looking at the hotel's reception desk with a puzzled expression on his face, are you sure there is only one king room left? It's like this, these days the flow of passengers is relatively high, our hotel only has one room left, please check in the receptionist tilted his head with a look of I understand, 
he had seen too many young men and women coming out in pairs, sometimes they just missed an opportunity. Being a good man, with a good heart and a willingness to help others, he was only too happy to set something like this up, as the saying goes, it's better to tear down ten temples than to ruin one marriage, if this could be put together as a couple, how much merit would have to go up. But what about those two? Claude lifted his head in confusion and pointed to the two large men next to him who had just checked in and were walking shoulder to shoulder towards the lift, those two guys, their arms are thicker than their own thighs, can they really sleep in one bed? This room fee, can be worth the money to change the new bed, that is the privacy of the guest it, may I ask, do you want to check in or not? At this time, the tone of the receptionist also appeared a slight change, he has worked so hard to create an opportunity, why is this boy still acting like an idiot? This kind of thing, if a boy doesn't take the initiative, it's hard to expect a girl to take the initiative. The receptionist took another look at Evelyn, who was demurely sitting not far away waiting, and shook her head hatefully, I don't know how lucky this mute boy is to have picked up such a beautiful girl, what? It doesn't matter if you don't have a room yet, it's only for one night anyway, just squeeze her in, Evelyn, who had been waiting a long time, finally couldn't wait any longer and came over to us, forget it, a room is a room, looking at the darkened street outside, Claude couldn't help but sigh, because of Barry's appearance, the entire wings of Angel Station had been shut down, so as soon as the train arrived and stopped at the station, a large number of staff who had been waiting there began to check each and every passenger. These checks continued into the evening, the good thing was that during the inspection, the officers would take care of the food and drink, and if any damage was caused, compensation would be paid afterwards, it was only because of the upcoming festival that Starlight City had imposed a curfew during this time, at that time, it would be difficult to find another hotel before the curfew began, since even Evelyn didn't have a clue, there was no need for him to be a big man, besides, what she had. Awakened wasn't some chimera-like fighting spirit, so she couldn't possibly use the night to eat herself dry, could she? All right, wait a moment please, after receiving the two people's documents, the receptionist couldn't help but smile as she skillfully returned the room card, not forgetting to admonish them, there are some items in the drawer that we have prepared especially for you, if you need them, please feel free to take them, they are all completely free. All right. Without waiting for him to finish, Claude hurriedly pulled Evelyn towards the lift, I'm afraid that if the ninth-rank powerhouses of the War God Temple were to see this scene, their jaws would drop in shock, who would have thought that the mysterious Barry, who had suppressed the White Tiger and surpassed the Ninth Order, would actually be defeated at this moment because of a few words. Regardless of what others thought, the current Claude only wanted to return to his room to rest quickly, even though the summoning of Barry's armor didn't require the use of spiritual energy, the strain on his mind was real, not only that, but this kind of domain collision beyond the ninth rank also kept his body in a state of overload. If he hadn't absorbed the magic spirit stone before to make his body half battle spiritized, I'm afraid this body would have disintegrated by now, the biggest. Problem was still his strength, Despite having two SSS grade talents and Evelyn's SSS grade battle spirit imperial armor, one's realm was the most indispensable part, this matter of taking the test must be put on the agenda. When he entered the academy, the aspect of knowledge was not so important to Claude, whether it was spiritual power control, battle spirit cultivation, or actual combat experience, those so-called mentors might not have mastered it as well as he did. What he valued more was the supply of resources from the top academies, although it was possible to use Barry's identity to ask the Barnes officials directly for them. Claude didn't want to do that as a last resort, things like favors always have to be repaid. Barry's armor, on the other hand, was something that was rarely asked for, anyway, Claude preferred to keep the only remaining bottom card for himself, with a ding, the lift finally reached the appropriate floor, having found the room number he was in, Claude didn't hesitate to open the door and insert the room card. All he wanted to do now was take a nice hot shower and go to bed. The scene in front of him, however, left Claude speechless, inside the aromatherapy-filled room ambiguous pink lights swayed and melodious classical music played, at the end of the room, a huge bathtub, big enough for two people, was placed in the middle without a cover, not far away, the transparent waterbed also began a strange lurching motion, the whole room exuded a strange atmosphere, 
what kind of standard room was this? Not a real erotic suite. At that moment, Claude wanted to go downstairs and strangle the receptionist who had helped them check in, when do you have to do that? It has to be now. Hearing a slight cough behind him, Claude reacted to the fact that someone else was in the room and quickly turned his head to explain, listen to my explanation, what I have opened is actually a standard room, I know, it should have been the reception that made the mistake, Evelyn lowered her head, ruffling her hair but still unable to hide her reddened ears. Holy shit! Watching this scene, Claude was completely confused, what did it mean? It meant that if Evelyn really wanted to take the opportunity to eat him up, he who had just finished the battle would have to put up no resistance. Most importantly, I heard that after overworking, durability would also decrease, had I known, would have bought a bottle of kidney bowl and brought it with me. One bottle refreshes the mind. Two bottles never tire. Three bottles of immortality. Just as Claude's CPU started to smoke and his brain was about to go into a state of rest, he noticed that Evelyn had suddenly collapsed beside him without any warning, without the slightest hesitation, Claude quickly reached out to help her, initially, he thought that Evelyn was simply overtired and should be able to recover after a night's rest, but when he saw the state of her body, Claude's face immediately changed. This condition, Claude realized that he seemed to have overlooked a problem all. Along, no matter what, in his previous life he had broken through to the seventh rank of the Armor Realm Master. Although he was now at the second rank, his aura control was nowhere near that of an ordinary second rank Armor Master, but Evelyn was different, even though she had awakened the SSS rank battle spirit Imperial Armor, it still didn't change the fact that she had only just awakened it, so whether it was aura control or combat experience, Evelyn was far from being able to compare with him, for herself. Some of the simplest actions might require all of her strength, in some cases, she might even have to pay the price by overloading her body, but even so, Evelyn didn't complain, just went about her duties as a battle spirit in silence, if it hadn't been for the fact that she had awakened the Emperor's armor at the same time, her body would have been greatly strengthened, otherwise, she probably wouldn't have lasted this long. But even so, the last ounce of its vitality had been depleted, if it wasn't replenished in time, it would slightly damage the fundamentals and affect future growth, if it's not replenished in time, it will damage the fundamentals and impact future growth. Trouble, as he carried Evelyn to the waterbed and saw her bloodless, pale face, a trace of apology flashed in Claude's eyes, this matter was indeed his own problem, the experience in his previous life had made him unconsciously treat Evelyn as an existence on the same level as himself, if he hadn't guessed wrong, she should have been in a state of physical deficit after the battle at the mayor's mansion. Under normal circumstances, she should have rested for a while and strengthened her body, but right after that, she had participated in the Battle of the White Tiger, where the intensity of the battle was even greater, without a break, this kind of high-intensity, continuous battle was a bit too much even for him, not to mention Evelyn, who had just awakened. If he had discovered it earlier and replenished his vitality with a highly nutritious potion, he could have easily solved it, but after dragging it out to this point, he couldn't use that method anymore, the reason was simple, a deficiency does not need to be replenished. In a situation like this, where you have an extreme deficiency, if you were to replenish a large amount of nutrients right away, the body would not be able to take it and it would be counterproductive. Claude wasn't sure if Evelyn's body would be able to survive this most dangerous stage before the spiritual energy was replenished, it looks like we still have to use this. Claude couldn't help but shake his head as he pulled out a diamond-shaped crystal that emitted a glittering white light. Although the white tiger that was killed was only a doppelganger, it was still a being, being a being meant that it would drop items, and this glistening white crystal was the loot left behind when the white tiger fell. As one of the four great divine beasts, it could be said that the white tiger's entire body was a treasure, even if Claude was more helpful, he couldn't be so selfless as to give such a treasure to Barnes for nothing, and he wasn't short of banners and 500 pieces, when he saw that the white tiger's claw had not been dropped, Claude was still a little sad at first, after all, the white tiger's claw, as the key item that could unlock the third layer of the emperor's armor seal, was the existence he needed the most, however, when he saw the properties of that dazzling white crystal, his entire being was stunned, white tiger origin SSS grade item description, 
condensed from the original power of the white tiger, but the power within is too violent, please keep it carefully, characteristics, can replace all materials that come from the white tiger, status. Absorbable Claude never thought that the white tiger would be so generous as to use his own origin force to create a distraction. One must know that, whether for a fey or a battle spirit, the power of origin was the rarest and most precious, even for an existence at the level of the white tiger, if it lost such a large portion of its origin energy, I'm afraid it would take hundreds of years to replenish it, however, it was precisely because of this that he was able to make up for the loss, even though he didn't get the white tiger claw. The white tiger origin could be used as a substitute, originally, Claude wanted to take a break and wait a few days for them both to regain their full strength before helping Evelyn unlock the third layer of the Emperor's armor seal, but at this moment, time clearly did not allow for that, the only way now was to immediately unseal the third layer of the Emperor's armor and use the feedback spiritual power to help Evelyn quickly replenish her vitality, since this power came from the battle spirit itself. Her body wouldn't experience any rejection, so it could be said to be the safest solution, however, there would also be a hidden danger in doing so. Breaking the seal would inevitably cause a huge uproar, the nerves of the whole of Barnes were on edge because of the recent battle between White Tiger and Barry, and Starlight City's sudden imposition of a curfew was the best proof of that, when he suddenly jumps out at this sensitive juncture, it is almost as if he is writing I have a problem, come and get me on the door of his head. Those are eight big words, but Claude did not hesitate in the slightest, and the palm of his hand, holding the glistening white crystal stone, suddenly exerted force, in the next instant, the source of the white tiger shattered, and an endless berserk aura immediately erupted, sweeping towards the window, in an instant, the entire starlight city was enveloped in this killing aura, that aura, it's the white tiger again. Damn it! Didn't we just kill it once? Why did it come out again? How can you call that thing a white tiger? Why don't we just call it the undead little strong man? Inside the Barnes War God Temple, the several ninth-ranked armor masters who had stayed behind couldn't help but stand up and curse angrily when they felt the terrifying aura, cursing aside, however, they rushed towards the source of the aura at the first opportunity, as the capital of Barnes, the security of Starlight City couldn't be a problem, especially at this critical time when the major top academies were enrolling. Even at the cost of their downfall, the White Tiger could never be allowed to take a step forward. At that moment, of course, Claude knew that Barnes would definitely make a move, but for the moment, he really didn't have the heart to worry about anything else, because this time, the unsealing seemed to be a bit off. Although it was said that the Earth Tiger's armor also used yellow as its main color scheme, this powerful Gera was full of brilliant gold armor on his own body, at first glance, it wasn't something that could be compared to the Earth Tiger that was sent by charging a phone bill Ah, Sure enough, the attributes above the panel confirmed Claude's suspicions, Emperor Armor Normal Form Quality, SSS Grade Battle Spirit Special Rank, Emperor Weapons, Aurora Sword Heavenly Dao Divine Artifact, Emperor Battle Halberd Heavenly Dao Divine Artifact Mount, Emperor Cult Attributes, Gold, Wood, Water, Fire, Earth, Light and Darkness Abilities. Fingertip Aurora, Sword Aura Light Blade, Five Elements Series of Essential Deaths, Five Saints Essential Death Status, Temporarily Summoned. Introduction, Emperor Armor, the incarnation of the Heavenly Tao, controlling the light and shadow of the Five Elements, possessing the ultimate power to control all things. Power, but for unknown reasons it was shattered and eventually transformed into Battle Spirit, returning to the Blue Star. The originally dark night sky was now half-lit by the brilliant golden light rising from the sky, this spectacular scene, which had been difficult to see for a hundred years, even made some people break the curfew and sneak out to watch, that golden light was also too damn cool. Isn't it possible that this is a robbery by some big brother? How can a robbery make such a noise? It's a miracle. It's a miracle. This is the descent of a god to bless the human race. As more and more people watched, the streets and alleyways were filled with noisy discussions, many converts who believed in the gods even bowed down in public to worship and praise the arrival, as for the Barnes war gods who were tracking the source, they also discovered the vision that appeared in the sky at that moment, unlike the ordinary people who marveled at the dazzling special effects, 
They were able to sense the terrifying power contained within this mysterious field. In addition to the warmth that seemed to contain everything, there was also an unspeakable imperial power, what on earth is this? Feeling the warmth of the light falling on his body, a Ninth Order armorer couldn't help but feel a little confused, he could feel that the dark wounds left in his body by years of conquest had all healed quite a bit under the baptism of this golden light, even the bottleneck that had plagued him for so long had a vague sense of loosening, how could the white tiger, who was famous for killing, do something like that? Not to mention whether the white tiger could do it or not, even if he could, he just didn't have the reason, it couldn't be that the white tiger was so kind that he was willing to burn his origin in order to give them welfare, could it? For some reason, when Lydia looked at the holy golden light scattered in the sky, she always got a familiar feeling from it. This feeling, just like Barry's armor from before. No. But as soon as this thought came to her mind, she quickly shook her head in denial, what she could feel from Barry's armor was only a feeling of icy coldness, compared to the warmth emanating from the golden light, the two were the antithesis of each other, the only thing that could be said to be similar was probably the same unrivaled royal power, right? Whatever it is, hurry up and find the source first. If I'm not mistaken, those rats lurking in the shadows are about to make their move as well, no matter what happens, this is our territory, we can't let outsiders take advantage of it Luxor Daigami, those people from the Barnes War God Temple have already moved as far away as they can, should we move too? Inside the Antilla Embassy, a row of black-clad men in ninja attire are kneeling on one knee, respectfully waiting for orders from the man at the head of the table, even though this light appeared in Barnes, the ancestor must have come from us, Lumina City. Everyone listen to the order, no matter what means are used, this golden light must be brought back to the land. Inside the Luminous City Embassy, a sharp-tongued man was commanding the cattle and horses in front of him, Mr. Mike, we have successfully located the source of the golden light, but its strength is hard to estimate, we may still have to ask you of the ninth rank to personally take action, inside the Sintra Embassy, after listening to his men's report. A burly and strong man put on the red armor that had already been prepared, between the tail jets his figure instantly disappeared into the sky. While all the forces hidden in Starlight City searched for the source of this mysterious golden light, Claude, the originator, had a look of shock in his eyes, although he had once speculated about the power of the Emperor's armor, he had never imagined that it could be so powerful, this feeling was as if everything in heaven and earth was in a single thought, it was as if he himself had become the heavenly Tao of this realm. One thought was life and one thought was extinction. This was still just the ordinary form of the emperor's armor. He simply didn't dare to imagine how strong the ultimate emperor was. But soon, Claude was able to shake off this feeling of levitation, although the feeling of transforming into the emperor's armor was great, he also discovered a problem. Under normal circumstances, the one that was unsealed this time should have been the Earth Tiger armor that was sent by charging the phone bill, the Wind Eagle and Black Rhinoceros, the two light shadow armors, were still needed before the Emperor's armor could be completely unsealed, but why was it the Emperor's armor that was summoned this time? At the first moment, Claude thought of his previous experience of summoning Barry, it was because he had absorbed the wrong evolution of Barry's moment, which had summoned the Barry armor in a strange way. Then there was a high probability that this time it would be the same situation, then the counterpart to Barry's moment was the white tiger origin. Without the slightest hesitation, Claude rushed his power into his body, it didn't take long for his eyebrows to furrow slightly, as expected, the problem appeared in the white tiger origin, as one of the four great divine beasts, the condensed origin of the white tiger was certainly a great tonic, but there were also parts of it that could not be refined. Even those existences at the war god level had to be careful in the process of refining it, what's more, Evelyn was only a newly awakened second-tier martial spirit, so she simply couldn't fully refine the white tiger origin with her body. For this reason, the Emperor's armor, which was a battle spirit, passively activated to protect its owner and withstand the backlash from the White Tiger origin on her behalf, the golden light that erupted earlier was meant to release the spiritual energy in the origin that could not be refined, but it couldn't solve the fundamental problem, if Evelyn's body could be compared to a pool of water, then the rate at which the water was released had now far exceeded the rate at which it was drained. 
Even if Claude had chosen to merge the armor at the first opportunity and helped her withstand some of the reaction from the White Tiger origin, it would only alleviate it for a while, if she wanted to completely dissolve this unrefining power of origin, she still had to find a suitable way to drain it from her body, just as Claude was contemplating what to do to resolve the situation. He suddenly sensed that a number of high-ranking armor masters were rapidly approaching his position. In the blink of an eye, he had a brilliant idea, if you wanted to release your energy, what else could you do besides exercising and hitting the rubber? Fighting, of course. There was nothing more suitable for sandbags than those high-ranking masters of armor who were rushing to the door. Although he felt sorry for these Barnes warlords, Claude could only say sorry in his heart, anyway, the Imperial armor also had healing abilities, so the important thing was to heal while fighting, maybe the fight would help them to open the second chakra. Nope. That sounded even more inappropriate. Just as Claude fell into the Ninth Order, a group of black figures suddenly appeared not far away, as soon as he noticed what they were wearing, his face went cold, Ninja. Antilla. How could it be them? But the next moment, Claude's eyes were filled with a teasing look, originally, he had been thinking about how to do this more gently, great god Luxor, our men have already done what they can, but I'm afraid we won't be able to hold off these barns or gods for long, in the crowd, a man with a green belt bowed his head and respectfully said, Luxor, as Antilles only ninth rank master of armor, is also a godlike being in their hearts. I see, Luxor, who was dressed in fancy clothes, only nodded. Slightly after hearing his men's report, this time, apart from the obvious fact that he had come to Barnes to take part in the upcoming festival, his main purpose was still to take advantage of the opportunity to make contact with other powers, although it was Barnes who helped them withstand the many onslaughts of the Beast Tide during the early stages of the Blue Star Chaos for most of the people of Antilla. Joining forces with Barnes was simply a desperate move to survive. Not only that, but the other forces around them, who naturally had to join forces, all thought the same, they always looked forward to the day when Barnes would fall into weakness and then seize the opportunity to betray him, Luxor was one of them, however, due to Barnes' great strength, such a betrayal could only be planned in secret, but what he didn't expect was for this to suddenly happen when they were about to meet today. According to Luxor's experience, this divine golden light rising into the sky was either an incomparable treasure coming from the world, or a strong person making a successful breakthrough, if it was the former, then this kind of masterless treasure was naturally for those who could, how about trying, but if it was the latter, as we all know, since breaking through a bottleneck requires the mobilization of the entire Bodhis strength, the moment of successful advancement is also the most vulnerable moment. If another strong person from Barnes managed to break through, it would be an additional obstacle to their future events, if the danger could be nipped in the bud, as long as they acted quickly enough, Barnes would not be able to find any evidence, Luxor was certain of that, it was also the reason why he was willing to use those undercover agents who had been lurking around for a long time to hold back the arriving Barnes warlords. Although these undercover agents were also the best of the best. If they could be traded for the downfall of a future Barnes war god, it would be well worth it. For the battle later, you try to stay as far away as possible, Looking at the golden light that was already close to his eyes, Luxor deliberately ordered the ninjas behind him, it wasn't as if he cared about their deaths, in a peak battle between ninth ranks like this, these people would not only be of no help, they might even be counterproductive. If their corpses were acquired by Barnes afterwards, it would only be a matter of time before their identities were discovered, is. Having received the order, the group of ninjas retreated, to them, Luxor was a godlike being, so of course they had no intention of disobeying, as the distance grew, Heaven's Path was finally able to make out the figure in the light, an armor glowing with a brilliant golden light bit the air, the imperial power emanating from his body alone made Luxor's heart sink, even when he had faced these ninth level foreign beasts. He had never felt such enormous pressure, if his guess was correct, this. Was it, Luxor couldn't even imagine how terrifying it would be if he returned to his peak state, since this Barnes powerhouse had just made a breakthrough and was still in his weakest state. But that only strengthened his resolve. This person cannot be retained. He had to be eliminated. In the midst of the golden light, Claude under the helmet couldn't help but corner his mouth slightly, 
the emperor's armor, as an existence at the heavenly Tao level everything in the world was just a thought away, reading minds was just a simple operation, and when Claude heard Luxor's mental fluctuations, he couldn't help but laugh, this bastard, is on the island to make a fuss for a long time. Too long have not seen the world inherited the name of the celestial way, still really think that he is a god. Although his strength as Antilla's strongest person was considered one of the most outstanding among the Ninth Order, even if he was compared to a god of war like Lydia, who had entered the Ninth Order with the body of a battle spirit, the victory or defeat would only be in the middle of the pack, even with Barry's armor, Claude was sure he could kill him in three moves. Not to mention that what he was summoning now was the Emperor's armor, which represented the heavenly Tao of the First Empire. Even if the seal hadn't been completely broken yet, it wasn't something that this kind of self-important scum could challenge, facing the huge Tengu that was blocking half of the moon's shadow, Claude simply reached out and pressed lightly on his belt, the seal, representing the power of gold, instantly transformed into a ball of light and attached itself to the armor, gold of the five elements, golden sundering leather. In an instant, Claude felt a warm current surge through his body and his power aspect increased geometrically, as for the giant Tengu that had been summoned, it had also opened its bloody mouth at that moment seemingly devouring the armor in front of it, the distance between the two sides was only millimeters. Seeing the golden armor about to be devoured by the heavenly dogs, Luxor, the originator, always felt that something was wrong, even though this mysterious powerhouse had used a lot of spiritual energy to affect his bottleneck during his breakthrough, he shouldn't be as powerless as he was at this moment. It was a bit too smooth. But he soon shook his head, no matter how much more he was, he was also a top-ranked existence among the Ninth Order, no matter how strong this person in front of him was, he had only just broken through the Ninth Rank, and even in a head-to-head -head match, the other party would not necessarily be able to defeat him, not to mention, he had made a sneak attack when his spiritual energy was exhausted. It was only natural that he didn't react for a moment, it seemed that even the heavens had blessed him. Just as Luxor was celebrating in his heart, the next scene made his jaw drop, in the sky, a huge sword emitting golden light descended with unstoppable momentum, and what Claude was using was one of the five elements of essential kill. Emperor Shocking Thunder Slash The giant Tengu that covered the clouds and the moon didn't even have time to dodge before it was split in half, in an instant, its body turned into a bloody mist and shattered into pieces between heaven and earth. At the same time, the earth-shattering sound of a wretched howl echoed across the skies of Starlight City, what? Seeing this scene, Luxor's eyes suddenly grew wide with rage, it should be noted that this moon-eating Tengu had been with him ever since he became Master of Armor, it could be said that it had long been an entity as close to him as a brother. When he became a ninth-ranked Master of Armor, the moon-eating Tengu had also entered the realm of the ninth rank, not only that, the Moon Eater Tengu with the bloodline of a foreign beast was fearless in battle compared to an ordinary battle spirit and could be described as a nightmare existence, even some fey beasts of the same rank were no match for it, but now, this mysterious powerhouse that appeared out of nowhere, even with just a single sword, he killed the moon devouring heavenly dog. That was as high as the ninth rank. How is that possible? Just like that? Looking at the huge Tengu turned into blood mist by a single sword, Claude was also a little surprised, unlike Barnes, Antilla also used armor masters as their main fighting force, but their contracted objects were more than just battle spirit. Some of the domesticated fey may also be subject to contract, in addition, the contracted beasts did not take up any of the combat spirit quota, as long as they were strong enough, they could be contracted indefinitely. Originally, Barnes also wanted to introduce this special type of contract, however, after studying it, he decided against it, the reason was simple, according to the terms of the battle spirit contract, both parties were one heart and one being after signing the contract, most. Masters of armor who contracted with the Fey usually showed symptoms of paranoia and cold-bloodedness, and there were even times when they refused to carry out the orders of their superiors, benefits can be distributed, and what is valued is strength, of course, but the object of the contract was a foreign beast, which would inevitably have an effect on the master of armor's mind, as it happened. The berserk power of the white tiger origin was almost unleashed, however, when he saw the two. 
figures standing in front of him, teaming up to smash the giant meteorite, a flash of surprise flashed through his eyes, touching the splash of blood on his face, Luxor raised his head and looked at Claude with burning rage in his eyes. Although he had infected many other fey beasts, the importance of the moon-eating Tengu as a benign fey beast was of course nothing compared to other fey beasts, but those Antilla people with backbones in their heads, after taking the initiative to become part of the alliance, not only did they not think of returning the favor, but they actually thought of colluding with outsiders to betray Barnes at all times. This trip to Barnes to liaise with the other forces, in addition to discussing how to betray, the most important point is the distribution of benefits after the incident is completed, faced with the burning meteorite, Luxor finally came to his senses, his eyes filled with despair, now that he had lost the moon eater Tengu, not only would his strength plummet, but it would be much harder for him to fight for greater benefits afterwards, on the other hand, if they had the moon eating Tengu to help them, the situation would definitely be one-sided. I'm afraid they didn't expect that the bait they set up would be eaten by us instead. In addition, compared to ordinary foreign beasts, they can rely on the power of the Master of Armor to recover quickly after being injured, the five saints must kill may be called a must kill, but it is actually an upgrade from the must kill of light and shadow armor, even so, the moon eater Tengu, who was as high as ninth rank, was still sent directly. This group of perverts are so fond of gambling with the country's luck that they should have just let them be buried in the mouths of the foreign beasts, that being the case, Claude doesn't mind snuffing out their only hope with his own hands, Luminous City's Jean San and Sintra's Mike also ninth ranked, were killed by the Tengu Tengu. These two were also ninth rank existences, as the belt was pressed down again, thunder rumbled in the clouds, Although the meteors in the sky looked like the end of the world, most of them had lost their power and were nothing more than fleeting meteors. In addition to allowing those watching the eating crowd to make a wish, they will basically not cause any impact, the three ignorant cobblers didn't really think that they could defeat Chu Guliang, did they? This was also the reason why he was able to surpass the ninth rank, as for the emperor armor, killing five saints could only be considered a minor skill, Claude, who had risen into the air with the help of the heavenly Daos power, couldn't help but laugh at the scene in front of him, when he opened his eyes and saw that he was unharmed, his heart was filled with gratitude for having survived, looking for death. Who could resist under such terrifying pressure? As the only ninth rank armor master, once Luxor fell, the entire Antilla would be unable to resist. Just take them away in a wave, in the early days of the Blue Planet's chaos, Barnes, also faced with external danger, finally decided to do the right thing and blocked several of the beasts' attacks on their behalf, however, it had to be admitted that the beasts, such gigantic and death-defying alien creatures, were indeed uniquely gifted in terms of combat power compared to the human incarnation of the battle spirit. Originally, he was still considering what to do about the other two rats who were preparing to betray him, oh. Shaking humans. And above the battlefield, the most important thing was to follow orders. With the shock from the previous emperor's shocking thunder slash, Claude still used the same five sacred must kill this time, looks like Barnes didn't get it right, who's the hunter and who's the prey. It was only the fusion of the inferno dragon, the earth tiger, and the power of the two armors of light and shadow. All of these factors together made Luxor lose his most basic reasoning and immediately sheathed his katana in his hand, wanting to immediately thwart the brilliant golden armor in front of him. He even suspected that Barnes had already known about their secret treacherous plans, but what Claude hadn't expected was that this world-famous moon-eater Tengu couldn't resist a single move from the Emperor's armor. Fiery Rock of Fire and Earth of course, he hadn't forgotten that Starlight City was underneath him, and that terrifying splendid gold armor in front of him was the bait that had been set up to lure them in. Otherwise, even those famous war gods who had left their mark on history would not have been able to cause such a commotion when they had just broken through the ninth rank. Just as Luxor was preparing to meet his death, he heard a loud noise coming from his ears, and when Claude saw this, a cold color immediately flashed in his eyes. Although the crotch of his trousers was soaked with some unknown liquid, it didn't affect his arrogance in the slightest, sure enough, Antilla was scum by nature, and he was the contact person for this treacherous plan. Unexpectedly, they were the ones to step in and help at this time. 
Seeing the reinforcements arrive, Luxor once again stared deadly at the golden armor in the air, his eyes filled with smugness, in a way, this kind of fey was contracted by special means, in addition to the influence on the armorer's mind, it was a fusion of the advantages of the combat spirit and the fey, and the increase in strength was very significant, like this uncontrollable time bomb. Barnes had no intention of using it, nor could he, even without an ounce of resistance, it was so. Incredibly natural to be sent, I want you to die. Even though these two people seem to be trying very hard to hide their identities, the unusually lascivious aura of one of them and the very conspicuous fiery red armor of the other allowed Luxor to identify them at a glance. In the next moment, countless meteors with blinding trailing flames cut across the sky and crashed in Luxor's direction, it was at this last moment that Luxor finally understood why the moon-devouring wolf had not chosen to take evasive action, the pressure that came from the emperor and could not be disobeyed made it impossible for him to even think of resisting, unexpectedly, he was now being sent to the door. The vast majority of the power of the entire skill was focused on the giant. Meteorite crashing towards Luxor, how could such a terrifying existence have emerged? Could it be that even the heavens favor Barnes? The night sky, originally covered in golden light, was ripped open without warning by a fiery red rift. This is why there is so much treachery within Antilla, if Luxor were to fight Lydia alone, he would probably win or lose, thinking of this, Claude's eyes flashed with a hint of coldness under his helmet, and the Aurora sword in his hand, glowing with golden light, was raised slightly, pointing at the three people on the ground from a distance, I'm in a hurry. You guys, get together. Damn it, how does Barnes still have a powerhouse of this level? Looking at the divine armor in the sky emitting a terrifying aura, Mike's eyes were filled with astonishment, through the work of the intelligence network he had painstakingly developed, almost all of the detailed information of Barnes' high-ranking armor master had been fully assembled, he had also played a small role in the White Tiger's infiltration and attack earlier. The original plan had been to use the time after Lydia's fall, when Barnes was unable to recruit any more 9th rank armor masters back to Starlight City, to carry out the long-planned betrayal, however, despite all his calculations, Mike had not reckoned on Barry, who had appeared out of nowhere, being able to suppress the White Tiger, one of the four great divine beasts, with his own strength, not only that, but because of Barry's appearance, most of Barnes' 9th rank armorers had returned from. The front lines of the beast tied to attend the emergency meeting of the Temple of the Battle Gods, for a time, Barnes' high-ranking battle troops gathered, originally, when Mike saw how safe Starlight City was, he had planned to temporarily suspend the implementation of the plan, he was also wary of the golden light that had suddenly appeared in the sky, it was one thing to borrow the white tiger's hand as before. But to assassinate in public now, that was more or less not treating people as human beings, most importantly, there were still quite a few Barnes war gods in Starlight City right now who hadn't left, although the three of them were also Ninth Order armor masters, this was someone else's territory, and dragging it out would only lead to death, unlike Luxor and Jean San, those two fools. He only wanted to use these two pawns to stir up shit in the background, if it really came down to it, the council's group of lords would definitely not be willing to do so, but what made Mike feel most strange was this, regardless of whether it was the berry that had suppressed the white tiger's spirit before or the current imperial armor that had appeared out of nowhere, no information had appeared in the intelligence gathered before, hell. This kind of peak power that had surpassed the ninth rank, why was it like a cabbage on the side of the road in barns? Why did it jump out without moving? The reason he had to act to save Luxor was simply because Antilla was the most important part of the plan, but this action has also changed Mike's heart for Barnes' strength rating, Barnes' base is really too terrifying. Even if it's just the Imperial armor in the air, even if they have all of Sintra's elite, I'm afraid they'll only be able to stop his progress, as for defeating them, that was just a dream, and that was just one person, he hadn't forgotten that there seemed to be a mysterious berry armor behind Barnes. If the two of them joined forces, he dared not imagine who else in Blue Star would be qualified to fight them. Despite the updated information in his mind, Mike knew very well that if he wanted to bring him back, he would at least have to survive first. But this imperial armor in front of him didn't seem to want to leave alive, I have to say, his guess wasn't wrong, Claude really didn't want to let them leave alive, the reason was simple, 
although the white tiger origin had replenished the deficit in Evelyn's body, he hadn't actually received any feedback himself, on the contrary, under the continuous high-intensity battles. His own spiritual energy was now almost exhausted, even though he was now able to draw on the spiritual energy of heaven and earth to replenish himself through the power of the Emperor's armor's heavenly Tao, Claude knew very well that as soon as he stepped out of the armor's merged state, he was afraid that all sorts of negative effects would immediately appear, unlike the white tigers and other beasts, these three people in front of him were serious armor masters, and as armor masters, they must have contracted battle spirit. And their other SSS grade talent, Dimensional Sealing, had the greatest ability to transform battle spirit by sealing it as a magic spirit stone. To the extent that magic spirit stones replenished spiritual energy, they were more effective than white tiger origin, however, unlike Antilla, Sintra usually chose mechanical creations as the battle spirit to contract, and Claude didn't know if he would drink a bellyful of machine oil during the transformation, most importantly, he could sense that there were a whole bunch of powerful spiritual fluctuations around him again, coming from not far away and rushing towards this side, from the looks of it, this time it would be those war gods belonging to Barnes, before unsealing the Emperor's armor, Claude didn't want to reveal his abilities, originally, Barry, the vest, was enough to conceal his identity, this time, the sudden summoning of the Emperor's armor was truly beyond his expectations, before these high-ranking armorers from Barnes arrived, it was necessary to fight a quick battle. A cold aura flashed through Claude's eyes as he looked at the three people in front of him, who seemed to be equally intent on fighting for their lives. As he reached out and pressed on the side of his belt, the aurora shield that had illusorily coalesced in front of his armor chest instantly disintegrated, at the same time, five golden seals engraved with snow mastiff, earth tiger, black rhinoceros, wind shadow and inferno dragon were silently arranged in the sky. This rare spectacle even overshadowed the dazzling fireworks that the Barnes officials had temporarily released to cover up the phenomenon, damn it. How could it be so strong? The Luxor trio, directly facing this imperial pressure, couldn't help but curse in their hearts as they felt the terrifying fluctuations of these five seals, with a strong person of this level, why would Barnes still be hiding them? If they had thrown them directly into the front line, the beast tide wouldn't have been resolved long ago. Now their goal had changed from the original assassination to saving their little lives. In the next instant, countless rocket lasers shot out of Mike's armor in unison. Not only that, but Luxor hastily pinched his hand seals, and a demon fox, slightly smaller than the moon-eating Tengu, swung its tail and charged at the five seals in the sky, to save their lives, the three of them had all used their best tactics, in the face of these magnificent and fancy attacks, the corner of Claude's mouth twitched slightly, and the Aurora sword in his hand instantly completed its transformation. Inside the body of the sword, which was originally spread out to both sides, the blade representing the power of the heavenly Tao was sheathed, as the aurora sword quickly passed through the five seals in the sky, a heaven-shaking dragon roar immediately echoed throughout the entire world. Above the body of the aurora sword, a five-clawed golden dragon exuding a divine aura hovered and straightened, the pair of brilliant golden dragon eyes, which possessed the power of an emperor, gazed at everything in the world indifferently, what kind of monster is this? This was the last thought in the mind of Luxor's trio, it wasn't until the moment of death that they realized what a terrifying being they had tangled with. Even the Barnes war gods who had rushed here couldn't help but stop in their tracks at that moment, looking in shock at what was happening in the sky, even though they had already entered the realm of the ninth rank, they still felt as small as dust in front of this divine dragon, this emperor armor that had suddenly appeared, how powerful it was. Without delay, the holy golden dragon opened its huge mouth, and the brilliant golden light above the dragon pearl in its mouth erupted, instantly devouring the three people in front of it, the next moment, the entire starlight city was as bright as day, beyond the horizon, the long night seemed to have come to an end. Five Saints to Kill Suburb of Starlight City, the hastily arriving Barnes warlords couldn't help but take in the cool air when they saw the huge crater that had been left behind, unless they were mistaken, this place should have been a mountain several hundred meters high, but now the whole mountain was gone, a fiery red, viscous liquid was spewing from the huge pit that had been left behind, if there was no mistake, this was the strike, it might even have penetrated the earth's crust. 
I'm afraid even the strongest of the battle god palace wouldn't be able to do that. You can imagine how strong this mysterious golden armor that appeared out of nowhere is. After examining the scene, a ninth class armor master couldn't help but open his mouth and ask in a tone that was vaguely filled with suppressed anger, how could they not expect that Starlight City, the heart of Barnes, would have so many enemies lurking in silence? It was these people who had slowed them down, without the intervention of this mysterious strongman, they simply didn't dare to imagine how serious the consequences would be if these people suddenly gathered and rioted later, since the start of the Beast Tide invasion, Barnes' main forces had been deployed on the front lines of the Beast Tide, fighting the invasion of the Fey Beasts, but while they were spilling their blood at the front, their own people, who were supposed to be of the same clan, were even using such tactics at the rear, now it seemed that treachery from within was more of a concern, I found out that most of them are from Antilla and the rest are from Luminous City, but they don't have the guts to do it, so I suspect that Sintra is behind it, and according to reliable information, Sintra, Antilla, Luminous City and the 9th ranked armor masters stationed there have all suddenly lost contact with each other. Lydia gently pressed the projection device on her chest and projected the information she had researched into the air, she had sensed that something was wrong as soon as she had been intercepted, and had immediately ordered the manpower to investigate, because of this timely order, she was able to preserve the evidence before the other party attempted to destroy the bodies, as for the three missing ninth rank armor masters, their fate was clear, that sacred golden dragon of the emperor's armor had even obliterated hundreds of meters of the mountain, and those three were afraid that they had all been shattered into molecules by now, damn it. Sure enough, it was that shit stirrer. After reading the relevant investigation information, a flash of shock and anger flashed through the eyes of everyone present, in the Blue Star Federation, Sintra was notorious for his love of treachery. But this time, it had unexpectedly betrayed them. Even though both sides were still considered allies in the fight against the Beast Tide, they were now strutting around on their own turf and committing murders. If there was still no reaction after that, it would be better to just become a turtle, who knows, will they be the next to be targeted. As for Antilla and Luminous City, they weren't much of a threat, the reason they had been helped to resist the onslaught of the Beast Tide at that time was also for humanitarian reasons, but even so, Barnes had already been kind, he hadn't even taken the opportunity to annex the two countries when they were at their weakest, but rather existed as a nominally subordinate special zone, with actual control still in his own hands. But now it seemed that they were still a bit too anthropomorphic, since that was the case, there was no longer any need to hold one's nose and be a good guy, without a ninth-ranked master of armor present, Barnes' desire to integrate these two areas was simply a matter of rewriting his hands, between conversations, the fate of Antilla and Lumina City had already been decided, by the way, what is the origin of that golden armor? Suddenly, a voice rang out from the corner, it was only after being reminded of this that the crowd reacted, yes, it does feel a bit like Barry's armor. Actually, when you put it like that, I do feel they are a bit similar, Listening to the discussion around her, Lydia finally asked the question that had been buried in her heart, could it be that this group of mysterious armorers are actually from the same organization? Or could they be the same person? The feeling that Barry's armor and Battle Spirit's armor gave her was too similar. As soon as that idea came up, it immediately caught everyone's attention, if that was really the case, it would be a bit scary, if they were from the same organization, how many people were there in that organization? What about the strength of the members? Emperor and Barry, what positions did they hold within it? The good news was that this mysterious organization, whose strength was unknown, seemed to favor Barnes, which was the only good news, as for the rest of the speculation, they couldn't even think about it, if these two armors were indeed the work of one person, I'm afraid the entire Blue Star Federation would be in shock, the reason why the humans were unable to defeat the Beast Tide and could only build fortresses to passively engage in a stalemate with the Fey Beasts, was largely due to their lack of peak combat power. Among the Fey Beasts, there were existences such as the four divine beasts that surpassed the Ninth Order, so in many cases, most of the Ninth Order Masters of Armor had to join forces to hold them back, which meant that they were unable to play a role on the front lines, and the appearance of the Emperor's Armor and Barry's Armor directly resolved this dilemma. Both of them had surpassed the ninth rank in strength, 
and were no inferior to the four divine beasts, and Barry Armour had even brought down the White Tiger with his own strength not long ago, even though it was only a doppelganger, it was still a feat that had not been achieved in the thousands of years since Blue Star. In the face of this mysterious powerhouse, Sintra's treachery and Antilla's betrayal could only be seen as small and insignificant problems. That being the case, we'll have to change the direction of our investigation and see if there are any relevant organizations in the country that can meet the requirements, after a moment's thought, Alex, who was chairing this impromptu meeting, gave the order, besides, the big head of the investigation is still on the line of Barry's armor, after all, the clues we have for this imperial armor that appeared today are too few, so we can only wait for the other party to turn up again sometime, also. If I remember correctly, the entrance exams for the major colleges are about to begin, right? Make sure that the test site is safe, because training the next generation is the top priority, those who excel in the examination may be allowed to enter the secret realm for training beforehand, after receiving the order, everyone in the room nodded in agreement. As Barnes think tank, there was no denying that Alex orders were usually given with Barnes interests at the forefront, Moments after the order was given, the vast machine that was Barnes quickly showed great efficiency, countless orders were sent out to all parts of the Blue Planet in search of Barry's armor, the whole of Barnes, all of it, began to work at a terrifying pace. And in order to make this behemoth of Barnes rise so much, there was only one goal, to find those two mysterious armors. And Claude, the instigator, of course didn't know that he had once again become the object of countless people's searches, at that moment, he was staring wide-eyed at the hotel owner, who had rushed over when he heard the news, I know you young people are understandably energetic, but it's not so bad that you're even drying through the roof, is it? The boss eyes were filled with confusion as he pointed to the ceiling above his head, which had a large hole in it, he had seen many young couples, but this was the first time he had seen one so passionate. Those who look like big men with tigers' backs and waists can at most collapse the bed, the young man in front of him at first glance, I did not think that the energy is much tougher than it looks, really worthy of young people ah. Seeing the boss in front of him with an I know expression on his face, Claude was helpless for a while, with that swarm of demons yesterday, you couldn't just walk out of the hotel entrance after the armor merged, could you? That wouldn't be an obvious way of telling Barnes that I'm the Emperor's armor, so come and find me. If I'm exposed because of this little thing, then all the hard work I've done to hide my identity before will have been a waste of time, sorry, how much will the repair cost be? After a sigh, Claude took out his mobile phone and obediently scanned the code to pay, it was true that he had cut through other people's ceilings because of his ambition, but the compensation should still be paid. The good news is that he still got some savings from the years, so he won't have to take Evelyn on a real-life version of wilderness survival after he's paid the damages, all right, all right, you young people are now playing with flowers, what cart ah, sit lotus ah moves I do not quite understand, remember to pay attention to safety in the future on the good, seeing him so quickly, the boss did not particularly difficult, simply quoted a cost price, I'm sorry, it's all my fault that you broke the bank, it was not an easy matter to settle, and after leaving the hotel Evelyn's voice was a little low, although her consciousness had been in a drowsy state last night, she was still very aware of what had happened in the outside world, if her body hadn't been so weakened, Claude wouldn't have had to risk using the white tiger origin to replenish her spiritual energy, originally, Evelyn had wanted to pay for the repairs herself. But when she saw the balance sheet, she remembered that she was no longer the carefree, high-flying schoolgirl she once was, the moment her parents had been exposed as traitors, all their assets had been frozen, even the cost of the trip to Starlight City had been paid for by Claude, Evelyn's heart grew heavier as she thought about it, don't think too much, if it wasn't for you, I might have fused the white tiger origin myself, you're like taking the bullet from me, as a master of armor, Claude was. Naturally able to sense the fluctuation of emotions in her heart and opened his mouth to comfort her, although the comforting component was mostly there, what he said was actually the truth, from the previous battles, Claude was well aware that Evelyn, as an SSS class battle spirit imperial armor, had unlimited potential in terms of combat, however, due to the problem of her realm, she had never been able to unleash her true power. Otherwise, even the most basic light and shadow 5-element armor was nothing a watery 5th rank like Devon could deal with, 
therefore, no matter how powerful the external force was, improving one's own strength was a top priority, compared to a limb that could be easily regenerated like the white tiger claw, the white tiger origin was even more available, compared to just using it to unseal the seal, transforming the spiritual energy it contained was obviously a more effective way to use its value, therefore, Claude had originally intended to rely on the effects of the dimensional seal reduction to assimilate and absorb as much of the energy in the white tiger origin as possible, but what he hadn't expected was that even a trace of the white tiger's berserk breath would be so harmful, it was only because Evelyn was a battle spirit body with a top class talent like the emperor's armor that she was able to successfully withstand it. If she were alone, she would have to shed her skin without dying, to put it simply, Evelyn had indeed unintentionally saved his life, let's not talk about it, have you unlocked your third layer of seals yet? Seeing that she still seemed to have guilt in her heart, Claude quickly changed the subject, he had worked so hard, not only had he summoned Barry Armor to slaughter the White Tiger doppelganger, but he had even gone so far as to decapitate three Ninth Order Masters of Armor in a row last night, what was he doing it for? Was it to be an invisible guardian in Barnes? Of course not. It's all about unlocking the third seal. The seal is broken, it'll give you the tablet now. This reminder successfully diverted Evelyn's attention, the next moment, a transparent plate appeared in Claude's field of vision, Birth Tiger Armor Quality, S-Grade Battle Spirit Growable Weapons, Earth Crackling Claw, Earth Crackling Blade Attribute, Earth of the Five Elements Skill, Earth Crack Palm, Earth Crack Split Special Move Seal of Zen Introduction, Earth Tiger Armor, the five elements are Earth, Earth Rocky Earth. After seeing the attributes on the tablet, Claude couldn't help but nod. His head. Although the Earth Tiger Armor was often jokingly referred to as a gift from the charge, the truth was that the Earth Tiger's combat power was not low, as long as it stood on the ground, it was able to draw a constant stream of energy from the Earth, this was a special ability that none of the remaining armors possessed but for some reason, the Earth Tiger armor had the strongest jumping power of the five armors, and almost all of its moves attacked the opponent from the air downwards. Giving up its best ability directly, to attack, you had to leave the ground, once you leave the ground, you can no longer draw energy from it, this completely contradictory situation in terms of ability settings left Claude puzzled, but no matter what, it was certain that the strength of the Earth Tiger armor was definitely not weak, it was just that due to its special mechanism, its true strength had yet to be developed. Claude was willing to change the attack method of the Earth Tiger armor, if possible, it should never give up its best area, summoning the Earth Tiger armor was just one aspect, the third seal of the Emperor's armor being unsealed allowed Claude to see the unsealing items needed for the fourth seal, last night, Barry was able to successfully summon the Emperor's armor by using the White Tiger origin as a medium, however. Since the White Tiger origin was consumed, the Emperor Armor has returned to its sealed state, to summon the Emperor Armor again, one would need to unseal the five layers of seals unless there is another miraculous encounter, Claude was surprised when he saw the items needed above the panel, the item required to unlock the fourth layer of seals was the Vermilion Bird's Feather. Although this name might have confused others, it was more than familiar to Claude, during his previous battles against the Beast Tide, he encountered the most resistance from the Vermilion Bird, the Vermilion Bird's feather is one of the four divine feathers, and only the most precious accompanying feathers possess the effect of unlocking the seal, similar to the dragon's reverse scale. The Vermilion Bird is known for causing hair loss and its feathers can be easily collected in the Beast. Territory, it is not recommended to engage the White Tiger after encountering the Vermilion Bird, Claude felt a bit overwhelmed after seeing the required unsealing items on the panel, the white tiger's appearance changed after her transformation, giving her the look of an imperial lady, however, her personality remained the same as before, prone to falling into a rage and unable to control her emotions. Compared to the Xuanwu, the vermilion bird was slightly better, during his time at the front line, Claude observed that the Vermilion Bird's familiars were the most disciplined, besides the Xuanwu that ate and slept, however, it is important to note that foreign beasts are still foreign beasts, and this fact cannot be changed, Claude did not have any good ideas on how to obtain the Vermilion Bird's feather. The Heart of Mirror Image was no longer a viable plan in his previous life, an eighth. Ranked foreign beast managed to blend into the festival due to the effect of the Mirror Image Heart, 
However, this time, the White Tiger was detected when she sneaked into the central area of the Blue Star Federation, additionally, her doppelganger fell as a result. The White Tiger's brain, even if more advanced, would still detect flaws in the mirror heart and cancel the assassination plan, as the 8th ranked King of the Beasts, it is a high-end combat force and cannot be sent to death casually, this is the butterfly effect I was worried about before, caused by one link, it is better to slow down for now, Claude relaxed his heart after a moment of contemplation. He had been reborn and traveled back, and only a few days had passed since then, in this short period, he had already successfully unlocked the three layers of the Emperor's armor seals, if the next one was as smooth, he would have to worry, despite having lived two lives, he was still certain about one thing. The thank you message on the cap of the drink bottle in his hand provided solid evidence, if a similar operation, where one could obtain the white tiger origin by taking a ride, were to occur again, it would either be orchestrated by someone behind the scenes or carried out by someone else, additionally, due to the seals unraveling so quickly, Claude found that his control over some of the light and shadow armors was not pure. The berry armor was used more frequently in these battles, however. It turned out that the berry armor had evolved by mistake, additionally, the berry's moment, which was required to summon the berry armor, would eventually be depleted, during the previous battle with the white tiger, the diamond-shaped crystal had shrunk considerably once again. Using the berry armor as a quick fix for an emergency is acceptable, but relying on it entirely is not a viable solution, ultimately, it is crucial to focus on cultivating the light shadow armor, the Academy examination provides an excellent opportunity for this, it is worth noting that the admissions test has been reformed starting this term, in the past, top academies valued talent above all else. However, now strength is the most important factor, even if someone has a deep grade talent and a weak battle spirit, they can still enter a top academy as long as they excel in the assessment, the first reform offers a special opportunity to enter the secret realm for training to those who top the admission test. Claude, a seventh-ranked master of armor, understands the value of this reward regardless of whether it is a training program or not. Claude, a seventh-ranked master of armor, understands the value of this reward regardless of whether it is a training program or not. Claude, a seventh-ranked master of armor, understands the value of this reward regardless of whether it is a training program or not. He can likely deduce why Barnes senior management has given this reward. Improving the bloodlust of the students was the main purpose of this secret realm, the participants were the seed players favored by the major colleges, so their safety was a top priority, the treasures in the secret realm were actually set up by Barnes in advance, and were merely benefits, if there were an undeveloped secret realm, it would not be their turn. A ninth-ranked master of armor at the God of War level would be responsible for opening up the way, Claude believed that exchanging dual cultivation tips with Evelyn would be more meaningful than embarking on a child's playground-like adventure, however, the secret realm for this adventure was located adjacent to the Vermilion Bird Territory. To travel to the Vermilion Bird Territory on the front line of the Beast Tide, one would typically have to wait until after graduating from the academy, however, some top academies do organize trips to the Beast Territories for their students to gain practical combat experience, the accompanying teachers were extremely nervous and unlikely to allow anyone to leave the group. This is possibly the only chance in three years to visit the Fey territory properly, and Claude did not want to miss it. If one were able to travel to the Fey territory at their own expense, the costs along the way would still be significant, however, this adventure includes all expenses for food and lodging, after paying for the hotel, Claude's wallet had deflated quite a bit. Although he wasn't reduced to scavenging for treasure next to the bin, in the current market where even the price of low-quality drinks had gone up, the quality of life was always going to decrease, why miss the chance to get something for free? Besides, he had planned to enter a top academy and take advantage of the cultivation resources inside, so it's like killing two birds with one stone. Claude carefully studied the admissions brochures issued by each academy. In his previous life, he awakened the SSS-ranked piloting battle armor talent, however, due to Ephraim's cowardice, he did not complete the examination and could only attend a top-notch academy. Even after starting a new life, his knowledge of these top colleges remains unclear, Claude did not care much about the teacher's strength, he believed that he had better spiritual power control and combat experience than most instructors, he valued the resources and benefits more, 
Suddenly, Evelyn's voice interrupted Claude's hesitation, she asked if he was considering which academy to attend, and recommended Wings of Angels Middle School, where a friend of hers used to tutor, Claude used to visit this friend often when his parents were alive, but since they were transferred to Tulum City, he lost touch. If you want to take the test, I can try to arrange it, Evelyn hesitated after considering it. Claude was a little surprised upon hearing this, he didn't expect that Evelyn had this connection, however, upon careful consideration, it was understandable, before the accident, her parents were at least fourth-ranked masters of armor, even in the Blue Star Federation, they were still considered powerful, so they must have had some connections, Claude considered Wings of Angels Middle School as a potential name for the college, the importance Barnes attaches to it and the welfare treatment can be seen, while most major colleges enroll students through admissions assessments, there may be exceptions, the quality of the student population is the most important factor between colleges, in addition to faculty strength. Therefore, top academies compete for the geniuses of each session, major colleges have opened a separate green channel for enrollment, as long as there is a tutor's recommendation, if you pass the internal test, you can be admitted free of charge, Claude had also considered this method before, Although he knew many tutors from top colleges, the issue was that they were his contacts from his previous life. If you were to approach them now, it would be best to avoid being rejected, would you like to give it a try? After some consideration, Claude agreed, if there was a shortcut available, why not take it? The wire ball's flower language represents stoicism and wealth. All right, I will contact her immediately. Evelyn noticed she could help, her eyes brightened, and she quickly retrieved her communicator, however, Claude was not optimistic. Walls fall down, as the saying goes, although the order had improved over the years of fighting against the beast tide, survival in Blue Star still depended on the strong and the weak, Claude had witnessed instances where even close relatives were betrayed for a small profit, and he himself had been a victim, acts of kindness, such as sending charcoal in the snow, were rare. He believed that the Aunt Evelyn mentioned was unlikely to be of any help as she was in a difficult situation when her parents were in trouble, Claude allowed Evelyn to continue contacting her to expose her to the harsh realities of the world, unlike Claude, who had lived through his first life again, Evelyn was still in the early stages of awakening, despite being gifted, she appeared naive due to her parents' protection. Despite facing unfair treatment, she maintained a positive outlook on the world, her pure heart was a rare quality, especially in times of peace even Claude, who had experienced countless hookups, was envious of her innocence, unfortunately, this was a chaotic time, Evelyn's motherly heart could cause her to falter at critical moments, Claude keenly sensed this from the first few battles, so he had to cut off sensory sharing in most cases, the battle spirit contract made master of armor and battle spirit of one mind, Evelyn's overly kind thinking could affect her judgment of the battle situation, but this was not a big problem for Claude himself. Despite crawling out from a pile of fey corpses in his previous life and being promoted to the seventh rank with a real sword, he was not carried away by such thinking, however, there were many anomalies that did not follow the normal flow, like Devon before him, he could choose to report and obediently wait for the official investigation, Claude, a former top executive of Barnes knew how tedious it was to launch an investigation into a mayor, the process could take up to three to five years. And there was always a risk of information being leaked, if anything went wrong, Devon would be notified, if Evelyn and she were just regular second-order masters of armor and battle spirit, the answer to resisting Devon's retaliation as a mayor would be obvious. Furthermore, if Devon were even more extreme and chose to defect to the Fae by jumping over the wall, the consequences would be unimaginable, Claude, of course, was not dismissing the Blue Star Federation's processes, he was aware that some things were not as easy to handle as they seemed, flexibility was necessary at this time, but not all means of flexibility were righteous. If Evelyn still believes that human nature is inherently good, she may disagree with her own views on some things. Causing a rift that will slowly widen over time, centrifuging master of armor and battle spirit could have unpredictable consequences, Claude didn't want to experience the feeling of being stabbed in the back again, he sighed upon seeing Evelyn walking nearby with a raised eyebrow. He didn't expect to feel like a father and mother again someday, he didn't want to destroy the righteousness in Evelyn's heart, childish thinking is a necessary part of human nature, 
however, she still needed to understand the dangers of the world, a world without thieves is non-existent. Claude hoped that he was overthinking, he didn't want to see Evelyn's hopes dashed, and he wants to meet us first. So she asked us to go to Wings of Angels Middle School, Evelyn walked quickly and was excited. Claude stood up and helped her sweep the fallen leaves off her shoulders, smiling, there may be a clash of worldviews between the Master of Armor, Battle Spirit, and himself, let's get going, what is your aunt's name? Evelyn looked up and replied, Wendy, same surname as me, Claude asked, does she also have a nephew named Ethan? Evelyn looked dumbfounded, and Claude couldn't help but twitch at the corner of his eye, he didn't want to spit, the name was too familiar as an initiation teacher, and Wendy, as Evelyn called her, seemed to know everyone in this small circle, Claude sighed, feeling helpless, unlike the kind-hearted teacher in another world, and Wendy was an uncompromising villain, everyone who crossed paths with her was later backstabbed by her, she remembers this well because her death was bizarre, she was, Shot eight times in the back to rule out homicide, Claude was handling the information at the time. It made perfect sense. The glorious history of Wings of Angels Middle School was a precedent for what he would encounter on this trip, the black rhinoceros armor and the Schwan Wu both belonged to water, and Wendy in front of him seemed to be very helpful, the item needed to unlock the fifth layer of seals is almost certainly the item on Xian Wu, even if I give up this old life. I will find a way to help them overturn the case. Claude adjusted her expression and smiled meaningfully, the cultivation resources for the Master of Armor and Battle Spirit were expensive, Claude already had a plan to drain her during their previous contact, if the opponent's realm wasn't too much higher, one could probe a part of their mind, did you awaken an SSS rank talent? With a deranked rubbish battle spirit, do you still have the audacity to want to enter a top-tier academy like Wings of Angels Middle School? Wendy was in a daze as she digested the not-so-real facts in front of her, she was so full of herself that she would go to overturn the case of two dead people, fortunately, she could still use this opportunity to show Evelyn the evil on earth to the greatest extent possible, Claude did not yet know the items required to unseal the fifth layer, however, based on the pattern of the previous layers being lifted, he believed that he might have to deceive the four divine beasts once again, upon Seeing the familiar body type, Claude confirmed that the Aunt Wendy Evelyn mentioned was not the same person as the one known to him, Wendy nodded in satisfaction upon realizing that she had successfully deceived her godniece, it appears that her acting abilities have improved once again. Claude, who was standing at the side and secretly observing, struggled to hold back his laughter when he saw this scene, Evelyn's betrayal was not right. Claude had no intention of letting go of this kind of person, Wings of Angels Middle School was a top academy and in the best position, it seemed like there would be no clash of worldviews, she even shed a few tears, betrayal was not in their nature, even if they were given a hundred chances, they would rather take the blame for someone else, a master of armor who contracted with a derank battle spirit, what kind of talent could be awakened? However, when she looked at the talent rating column, the words she was about to say suddenly stopped, she felt like a duck whose throat had been pinched, with a look of disbelief in her eyes, Evelyn, who was not familiar with the ways of the world, did not realize that she had already become the target of an experienced manipulator, and continued to wave her hand happily. Claude received the Xuan Wu tear, but wasn't sure if it was the real one, she couldn't let it go since it was delivered to her, Claude pretended to nod politely, the Emperor's armor was only summoned temporarily, but she inherited the mind-reading ability after the merge was disbanded, tutors who enrolled such geniuses would receive a large amount of resources as a reward. Evelyn's file clearly indicated that the derank battle spirit was the worn-out armor responsible for the awakening, with his mind-reading ability, he knew exactly what was going on in Wendy's mind, the only remaining unsealed armor was the black rhino armor, as a fourth-rank master of armor stationed at the border, they received a considerable salary and allowance, these items had to be purchased out of pocket before entering the academy. Wendy believed she acted well, but Claude saw it as a clown performing a one-man show, however, it suited him, Claude saw the huge gates of Wings of Angels Middle School within two steps, he had been short on cash lately, anyone who could put on the hat would know it was a big deal, if she had not planned to use that part of her inheritance for herself, she would not have paid attention to her so-called godniece, Auntie Bai. The rest of the inheritance must be with their only daughter even if. You are not talented, do not be discouraged, 
the master of armor path still requires hard work, how can this kid be an SSS grade talent? Although some of it has been frozen, there must still be unchecked portions. Therefore, in Wendy's opinion, Evelyn could be a valuable asset, the enrollment was merely an excuse to keep people here, at the doorway, a large woman weighing 200 pounds, with a large gold chain around her neck and solid gold rings on her hands, appeared to be waiting for something. After receiving Claude's information, Wendy glanced at it casually and reassured him. Additionally, Wendy appeared to have a drop of Genjutsu tears in her hand, which she obtained from an unknown source, it. Is unclear how this relates to the accusation of wrongdoing, it is important for Wendy to act superficially as a good aunt to make a lasting impression on Evelyn, although Wendy's heart was filled with contempt, she maintained a cordial demeanor, after mentioning the family name, Wendy turned to Claude, who was standing beside her, and spoke warmly. Hello, I'm Claude, the master of armor of the white students, what a joke, the wind eagle armor is likely to be unsealed at level 4, Starlight City is a place where every inch of land is valuable, and an entire city center has been designated as an academy area, Ching Li, you're finally here. Exclaimed Auntie, overjoyed to see you. Wendy's eyes lit up when she saw the two of them walking towards her, an SSS ranked talent is a genius among geniuses and is an existence that the major top colleges go all out to recruit, no matter where you put it in the Blue Star Federation. Additionally, the speaker inquires about the identity of the young man present, that's right, he's the SSS grade talent. I didn't expect someone to come to the door now, it seems that her useless niece has some value, Wendy changed her plans due to the unexpected situation, what was the inheritance? This kid in front of her was the real deal, how could she take all his money? He's just a brat, still just a handful. The transition chapter has ended, and we are about to enter the hot-blooded battle chapter, we are counting down to unlocking the new armor, I will explain the procedures for internal recruitment later, for now, please rest here for the night and contact me if you have any difficulties, Wendy, who escorted the two to the room, had a concerned expression. After she finished speaking, she gave Claude a meaningful look. Unlike Evelyn, this child is a valuable asset, it must be treated well before. It is exploited for profit, if you treat it well, you will be rewarded with great wealth, perhaps you could even benefit from its future success. Thank you, Auntie Bai, some time ago, I overtrained and depleted my spiritual energy, despite using many potions, I was unable to fully recover, I am concerned that I may embarrass you during the upcoming test, Claude appeared unfazed by the situation, it is unclear who is draining whom, Wendy was surprised to hear about the spiritual energy deficit, this situation was not uncommon, especially for battle armor pilots fighting on the front lines against the beast tide, it is unclear how a student who does not fight could experience a deficit in spiritual energy just from cultivation, initially, she suspected that Claude was attempting to obtain cultivation resources from her, however, upon careful observation, Wendy discovered that the child's spiritual energy was in a deficit state for some unknown reason, the situation was quite serious. Although the child's willpower was admirable for being able to stand and converse despite the condition, an ordinary person would likely be better than, could overtraining be the cause? Rest assured, I will find a solution to this problem, although she felt uneasy, she still nodded to stabilize the tree of wealth, however, Wendy still had a headache about how to solve the problem, usually, a lack of something can be compensated for, and a spiritual energy deficit can be made up with medicine, but for such a significant deficit, taking medicine directly would be counterproductive. The reason is simple, the deficiency cannot be replenished, the usual solution involves using mild medication and gradually replenishing the bodhis deficiencies to solve the problem, Wendy immediately thought of the highly coveted Xuan Wutir. However, due to the upcoming internal recruitment at the academy, there is not enough time to waste, therefore, a stronger medication is necessary, Xuan Wu is a divine beast with a water attribute that warms the divine soul, regardless of which part of its body is used, it is treasured not because it is excellent, but because it is not easily obtainable, the Xuan Wu tier is a precious item, but it is controlled in the Blue Star Federation as it is a drop from a divine beast, Wendy held something. That formal auction houses refused to accept due to low offers and safety concerns, however, it was still not enough to attract significant interest, it was comparable to a chicken rib, but at least it had some value. 
I had worked hard to obtain it, so it was a shame to give it away, it contained a crystal clear liquid, if you can't sacrifice the child, you can't catch the wolf, Wendy gritted her teeth and produced an exquisitely patterned jade bottle, kid, don't make me lose money, or else, Claude sat in the room, staring at three purple crystals suspended in midair, the crystals were magic spirit stones from Sintra, Antilla, and Lumina City, the three ninth-ranked masters of armor who were previously sealed by. The descending dimension, the most brilliant point of deception lies in half-truths and half-falsehoods, Claude had not lied about the spiritual power deficit. Wendy, a sixth-ranked master of armor, couldn't help but notice the foul play, although Claude had once been as high as seventh rank, continuous high-intensity battles had caused a spiritual power deficit, he purposely chose to use the five sacred battle spirit as a finisher to avoid any mishaps during the sealing. The magic spirit stones from the sealing of the three ninth order battle spirits solved his spiritual power deficit, on the far left was Luxor's magic spirit stone, Claude threw it. Into the toilet, he didn't want to fuse with Antilla's battle spirit, so it stayed in the trash, next was the magic spirit stone that glowed with a hint of metal, Claude could tell that the fragment came from Sintra, the blue planet humans were based on the battle spirit pact, but each country had developed its own distinctive roots. Sintra is the only one who would choose to have a battle spirit contract with a mechanical creation, in his previous life, Claude was interested in this kind of pact, unlike Antilla's fey contract, which has many hidden dangers, the mechanical creation doesn't have a mind of its own, therefore, it won't have a mental effect on the master of armor, unfortunately. Sintra has kept the exact process of this type of contract a deadly secret, and no news has been released, Claude held the magic spirit. Stone and exerted a slight force, causing the remaining two stones to transform into a ray of purple light, this increased the ability bar of the descending seal, after defeating the battle spirit, it can be transformed into a magic spirit stone. You can summon the sealed battle spirit for your own use, retaining some of its battle attributes from its life, the magic spirit stone shatters and cannot be summoned again once its energy is depleted, to gain the special ability of the sealed battle spirit, absorb the energy contained in the stone, the transformed abilities will then be available, Claude was surprised not by the mechanical invasion, but by the ability transformed from the Lumina City battle spirit, Earth Elemental Drawl to others, this ability may seem mediocre, but to Claude, it is one of the most adaptable abilities at the moment, the Earth Tiger armor was considered as an armor that could be obtained by charging a phone bill, however, it had a major flaw, it consumed a lot of energy and was unable to defeat even small monsters, the reason for its defeat was not weak strength, but a problem with its mechanism, as the name suggests. The Earth Tiger armor needs to be on the ground to function at its best. Unfortunately, most of its skills require it to jump to activate. The Earth Tiger armor was unconventional due to the conflicting skill mechanics, which led to ridicule regarding its battle power, however, the Earth Elemental Drawing solved this crucial problem by allowing energy to be drawn from the Earth even when not standing on the ground, Claude was initially contemplating how to address the issue with the Earth Tiger armor, he never expected the unintentional willows to provide shade. The non-existent Lumina City 9th rank master of armor brought the biggest surprise to himself. Wendy handed Claude the tear of Xuanwu, saying it should solve his spiritual energy deficit, Claude, who had just woken up from his dream, was surprised by Wendy's loving smile. Although he expected the result, he was surprised by Wendy's quick resolve, it appeared that she was determined to make a significant profit, how could one resist something delivered to their door, while indulging in pleasure may be enjoyable, the tears of Xuan Wu are a valuable treasure, Auntie White, this is not a matter of pleasure, but of importance, you are too kind. Claude didn't hesitate and put the jade bottle containing the Xuan Wu tears into his pocket, despite his earlier statement, Wendy, who is used to thick skin, was confused, is this kid really naive or just too cunning to care? It's like receiving red envelopes on New Year's Eve, you have to go through a tug of war and several excuses before receiving it, which is the normal process, to show elder-like care, how else can you do it? However, Wendy soon dismissed these thoughts, after all, this thing was initially intended as an investment, so giving it away would be a waste, it's fine, I will do my best to help, even if I have to use up my family's wealth, I will inform you when I have news, the words were so melodramatic that even Wendy herself was moved, Claude was speechless for a while, 
in his previous life, he had not encountered any people, however. This was the first time he had seen a cheek so thick that it could resist the Inferno Dragon Armor Ceiling Chop. The time that needed to be fought for has already been fought for, even though the mechanical invasion's impact would be significantly reduced without the mechanical creation battle spirit's assistance, invading an ordinary mobile phone is still possible, Wendy's mobile phone was successfully invaded during the recent exchange, Evelyn couldn't help but sigh after closing the door behind her, Auntie White is such a nice person. Wendy was willing to help despite her parents being falsely accused of being traitors, Claude raised an eyebrow when he saw this and wanted to borrow money from Auntie White's account, but there was something unexpected. After pressing the play button, Claude's mobile phone emitted a familiar sound, why is this person contacting me all of a sudden, this little ninny should still have an inheritance, right? Let's milk her dry first, the Dirank battle spirit. The parents and the child are both trash, it's the kid who awakened his SSS rank talent that's worth something, he has already signed a battle spirit contract with a loser, so he may not pass the internal recruitment test, if I fail the recruitment test, I will not receive the reward resources, let's focus on finding a way to defeat that little girl, this is my territory, and no one will care if a deranked battle spirit dies, as a voice segment plays, Evelyn is next to her, the voice was as clear as her Aunt Wendy's. Claude interrupted the voice playback and discovered that Wendy had accidentally left the emergency recording feature on, capturing all of her self-talk in perfect detail, Claude interrupted the voice playback and discovered that Wendy had accidentally left the emergency recording feature on, capturing all of her self-talk in perfect detail, the text has been edited for grammar, punctuation, and sentence structure. Claude interrupted the voice playback and discovered that Wendy had accidentally left the emergency recording feature on, capturing all of her self-talk in perfect detail, this incident made Claude more determined to purchase a simple mobile phone in the future, rather than one with fancy features that could potentially malfunction, there was more outrageous content to follow, but for now, it's enough, his only goal was to make sure Evelyn was cautious, he had no intention of manipulating her thoughts. How did this happen? Was she never going to help me from the start? I have no legacy at all, what's in front of me overwhelms Evelyn, one wanted to help but ended up almost harming Claude, it's not important whether you possess something or not, what matters is whether others perceive you as having it or not. Claude shook his head after touching his hair, Evelyn, I will clean up this person, but I cannot keep wiping your arse for you, you need to grow up yourself, if you want to take revenge, this level is far from enough, however, to Claude's surprise, Evelyn raised her head again. The hope in her eyes was swept away and replaced by a look of determination, thank you, Claude, take revenge upon yourself. This is the first round of internal recruitment interviews for Wings of Angels Middle School. Don't be nervous, as this round is just to gather your information and there won't be any difficult questions, before the interview, Wendy gave specific instructions, as the interviews conclude, it is important to consider what to do next, thank you, Auntie Bye. I have prepared a gift especially for you. Evelyn smiled brightly, after the interview, you will find out what it is, Wendy's heart skipped a beat as she watched the two enter the interview room, she couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong, what? Was there really a master of armor with SSS rank talent attending the interview? Lydia was surprised to hear the news outside the interview room, she was a tutor at Wings of Angels Middle School after graduating but as a ninth order, she didn't have much time to stay in the academy or lead students, the tutor's title was more of an honorary one, she returned today mainly to consult with a bigwig at the academy regarding the matter of Barry armor and emperor armor, however, I unexpectedly stumbled upon something interesting, an SSS grade talented master of armor. This is a treasure that every top academy would pursue, Lydia wants to see what this future leader is really like, however, when she stepped into the interview room, the chaotic scene in front of her made her frown, the mobile phone on the table played a segment of human and god's voice, in the middle of the room, a dark yellow armor held a long sword and pointed it towards a woman in a mentor's uniform. The tutor is an important position that teaches and educates people, how can someone with such low character serve as a mentor in your academy? I am questioning whether Wings of Angels Middle School truly deserves the title of top academy, it is unacceptable for the two of you to undermine me in such a manner, 
Wendy noticed the other tutors around her with grim faces as she looked at the mobile phone playing the recording on the table, she momentarily twisted her face upon realizing that the gift Evelyn was referring to was actually this. Wendy wouldn't have been so shocked and furious if it was just a recording of the two people who had counted on her earlier, to put it bluntly, this thing could still be interpreted as a minor offense or at least not punishable by death, however, in addition to that, the other hurtful things she had done before in order to get to the top had also been brought to light, according to Barnes' law, even if the sentence is not death, she will surely never see the sunlight again for the rest of her life. Wendy never thought that these two juniors, whose eyes revealed clear stupidity, had such deep hearts. They not only cheated her out of her Schwan Wu tears but also turned the tables and backstabbed her, now she has to grow up and take on the responsibility that belongs to her, it was a bit tricky, but she soon readjusted and was ready to cut him down, she felt an incomparable sense of peace of mind, Wendy, who already knew what would happen next, fell into a complete frenzy, Wendy's strength should be around the fifth rank now. Just as Evelyn was preparing to defend against the killing move, she heard an all too familiar voice, even if she died, she would want these two people to be buried with her, two newly awakened second stages, they could be killed with a wave of the hand, do you want to fight? However, Wendy surprised her by accurately catching her fleeting break, despite being old-fashioned. He chose to fight alone by cutting off his sensory sharing, Wendy, an experienced master of armor who had battled alien beasts, was far more skilled in combat than Evelyn, a newly awakened student, despite their lengthy fight, it only lasted a minute in the eyes of others, the boar battle spirit is considered an upper middle level existence among the beast battle spirit, Ching Li, for the sake of my friendship with your parents, please let me go, I promise to turn myself in immediately and accept the judgment of the law, Wendy's eyes filled with fear at the thought, if he couldn't defeat it, he could only congratulate Wendy on reaching the second stage of the boss, hopefully, an accident would occur soon, however, it wasn't a major concern. However, as she begged for mercy, she remained attentive to the movements of the yellow armor before her, Wendy's words had shaken her heart, but Evelyn's voice now carried a hint of determination, from the start Evelyn had not enjoyed participating in battles, preferring to provide spiritual support, having played with eagles all her life, she had ultimately been pecked by them. Perhaps the only thing lacking was combat experience, suddenly, the body clad in spiked armor exploded, transforming into a shower of arrows that rained down on the earth tiger armor, the single spiked armor on the surface was the most visible evidence, additionally, Wendy's awakening appeared to be the earth attribute branch breed of boars, the earth boar, throughout this time, he had been avoiding the battle, leaving the burden solely on Claude. Upon noticing Wendy's attempt to strike, the mentor summoned battle spirit to stop her, the battle was going well, but this scene was too perfect, with her spiritual power backing her, Evelyn wouldn't be at a disadvantage when she transformed into her earth tiger armor, if she could make their hearts fluctuate, she could seize the opportunity to complete the kill, Evelyn's face flashed with panic under the helmet. The progress wouldn't be any faster even if he replaced himself on the field, Wendy was deliberately showing weakness, suddenly, Evelyn lost control and reverted back to the battle spirit state. In the next moment, a cold aura flashed and blood splattered, Wendy was surprised by the success of the plan and quickly took advantage of the opportunity, please take control of the situation, Lydia is a rare battle spirit with a wild status, making her one in a million on blue star, Wendy's armor master was ambushed by Lydia during a wave of beasts, when fighting in the future. Do not get distracted by your opponent's words, keep focused, Wendy, who had been transformed into a boar, prostrated herself on the ground and confessed tearfully after being hit by the earth-splitting knife, Claude agreed with her after thinking about it. Claude was surprised when he sensed Evelyn's intention inside the earth tiger armor, not good. Hurry up and save the people. He thought, the wild boar battle spirit is often underestimated, but it is not like the domestic pig, it is a strong battle spirit with thick skin and innate bloodthirsty abilities, this time, I caused it all, you're right, you can't always fix things for me, a large pig's head fell heavily to the ground after being thrown. The information suggests that these two individuals had just awakened and were unlikely to be capable of carrying out the killing, as soon as these words were spoken, the earth. Colored armor attacking him suddenly stopped moving, Wendy had finished transforming, 
Claude was preparing to touch the fish and couldn't help but laugh when he saw her. This is simply a sixth rank battle spirit without a contracted master of armor, without a master of armor, a battle spirit strength will be greatly reduced, in his previous life, Claude had seen many such tricks, Evelyn's request caught him off guard, however, this was Evelyn's first battle, and her real world experience was not comparable to his own, unfortunately, when faced with strength, all routines seem ridiculous. There is a saying that the awakened battle spirit has something to do with each person themselves, however, the master of armor and battle spirit were comrades in arms who had fought together for their entire lives, in terms of actual combat, one can easily defeat a watery sixth order opponent, I can't run away, so you guys should be buried with me as well. Evelyn suppressed Wendy easily by relying on the strong attributes of the earth tiger armor and her own spiritual support, Wendy was a high grade wild boar meat that cost $50 a caddy, even if it was a pig, a wild boar draped in spiked armor appeared in the middle of the room, grunting and panting, at this moment, the wild boar battle spirit had no more reservations, Claude, who rarely had the opportunity to enjoy watching a spectacle like this, was frowning as she watched the two. Battle, however, just as she was about to win, the earthy. Yellow armor in front of her suddenly seemed to transform into a different entity, the battle spirit didn't realize that victory was within her grasp until the very end, simultaneously, an ice-cold voice reverberated throughout the entire room, why seek revenge if the law suffices? Am I interpreting this correctly? A person of lower rank killed someone of higher rank? It's not even a challenge, yet it's a fourth rank challenge. Even the war gods couldn't accomplish that, could they? The Wings of Angels middle school tutors present were in disbelief upon seeing the body with its head severed nearby, at first, they believed that when Wendy jumped over the wall, the two students in front of them feared for their lives, however, it was later discovered that they were killed in a matter of seconds, the scene before them was truly incomprehensible, meanwhile, Lydia who was waiting at the entrance of the room to rescue them, was equally shocked. The armor in front of her was dark yellow and slightly inferior to the berry and emperor armor she had seen before, however, for some reason, she felt a vague sense of familiarity, the tutors present glanced at each other, all showing cluelessness in their eyes, this was the first time they had witnessed a tutor being killed in public within the academy, moreover, the matter was not in their favor, regarding the released audios. Wendy's actions could be described as both human and divine, it would be reasonable to thank the two students in front of them for identifying the poisonous tumor, however, according to the process, even if Wendy committed an offense, it should still be reported to the appropriate authorities for handling. Ultimately, Barnes' law will determine the outcome of the trial, the current situation is comparable to a lynching, if left unaddressed, it would be a disgrace to Wings of Angels Middle School, furthermore, it would set a precedent for future incidents where perpetrators could easily evade punishment, this raises the question of whether the academy should continue to operate, these are all valid reasons that should be considered. However, it is important to note that some individuals present may have questionable backgrounds, in order to ensure Claude's success in the examination and secure the resources rewarded by the academy, Wendy made a deliberate effort to operate discreetly, as a result, those conducting the interview may have had some vested interests, Wings of Angels Middle School initiated an investigation once these voices spread out, one of the people present was involved, and none of them were able to escape. They delayed the rescue because they wanted Wendy to kill the two of them, so they could retreat, however, they did not expect the student in front of them to be so strong that they could kill Wendy with a single slash, forcing them to take action themselves, in battle, injuries are normal, it was reasonable for them to strike hard, but accidentally killing someone is not, a dead man cannot speak, but it is not the safest option, Claude tried to leave, but a few tutors blocked the door, student. Lin, it is a matter of human life, we need you to stay and be investigated, although his face appeared polite, his tone betrayed a hidden killing intent. Simultaneously, a transparent boundary enveloped the entire room, Claude, who had heard their voices under his helmet, couldn't help but furrow his brow, he had only intended to hone Evelyn's mind, but an unexpected branch line had emerged, these, however, were walking magic spirit stones. However, not all of the people in front of him were as weak as Wendy, who was only at the sixth rank, some of them had strength that matched their realm, 
Claude frowned as he checked his spirit power reserves, during Evelyn's fight, she relied solely on the Earth Tiger armor to overpower her opponent, although it achieved quick battle results, it consumed a significant amount of spiritual energy, in less than a minute, the energy dropped by almost 30%, this caused Claude, who is usually meticulous in battle, great distress, Evelyn's guilty voice interrupted his thoughts, I'm sorry, I didn't expect this either. If she hadn't intervened none of this would have happened, what surprised her the most was that although it was the same armor, the difference between Claude's control and her own was significant, Claude was able to utilize all the properties of the armor to the fullest and could easily deliver a one-two punch, she on the other hand, managed to kill with a single move, don't overthink it, the problem isn't with you, Claude shook his head upon hearing this, it was surprising to discover such a large and dangerous problem hidden within a prestigious institution like Wings of Angels Middle School, even as a reborn individual, he could not have predicted this, let alone Evelyn, a newly awakened battle spirit, however, the trip was not entirely fruitless, as they had obtained the tears of Xuanwu, the priority now was to deal with the individuals in front of them. Claude believed that Wings of Angels Middle School should not be corrupt, he thought that the current situation was an unauthorized act by those who wanted to block the news, if he could leave, he could resolve the situation, Claude analyzed the battle strength of the group, which consisted of three fifth ranks and two sixth ranks, he quickly switched forms and summoned the Inferno Dragon armor with a fiery roar, the blazing red battle armor covered him completely, the Inferno Dragon armor, is more suitable for the current scene compared to a specialized type of armor like the Earth Tiger armor, it is an all-round type that can perform well in all areas, additionally, Claude gained new insights about armor after temporarily summoning the Emperor's armor last time, if the Emperor's armor could use the five elements necessary kills at will, would a single light and shadow armor be able to use the necessary kills of other armors? For instance, the necessary kill that fused the Inferno Dragon armor and the Earth Tiger armor's fiery rock Earth, Emperor Lava. Could it change forms? The mentors present were startled when they saw the armor in front of them change form, normally, a battle spirit's form is fixed upon awakening, only slimes, whose ability is a special existence, or those with exceptionally high quality can change their form later in life, this is because a form may not be able to utilize its full abilities. The individuals mentioned in the records possess at least an SS grade battle spirit, indicating high quality, this means that the two individuals in front of us possess exceptional abilities, with one having awakened the SSS grade piloting battle armor talent and the other possessing at least an SS grade battle spirit, this is an impressive combination of talents, it can be said that as long as they do not die prematurely, they have already taken a significant step towards entering the battle god temple. For them, becoming a ninth rank master of armor seemed unattainable, a goal that couldn't be reached in a lifetime, but for this kind of genius, it was just a rung on the ladder that they could easily climb. Perhaps it would take them decades, but after a few years, they would likely be looking up to Claude, however, these corrupt mentors did not give up, instead, their determination to eliminate him only grew stronger, this kid must die. If you tie your hands now, you may receive a lighter punishment, if you tie your hands now, you may receive a lighter punishment, continuing to resist will result in death, following Wendy's example, the remaining few did not dare to attack Claude's head and could only try to persuade him to surrender, upon hearing their shouts, Claude chuckled, confess to leniency and you'll end up in jail, resist with severity and you'll be home for the new year, the individuals in front of him seemed unqualified to speak, the villain died because they talked too much, Claude taught Evelyn in the middle of his mind channel while fighting, remember, these are negative examples, do not learn from them in the future. To ensure the grass doesn't grow back in spring, it's important to inflict pain when killing, in the next moment, flames erupted above the crimson blade, Claude didn't hesitate to tap the word, chopper, with the flaming blade, the word turned into flames and lingered on the blade, summoning a red dragon covered in flames that roared into the air, this resulted in the demon sealing chopping post. Was this a fatal move? Several tutors' faces showed a flash of fear upon witnessing this scene. Why didn't this person follow the rules? Although they didn't have much combat experience, they could tell that this red dragon was definitely Claude's crushing stance, in a normal battle, both sides should first use small skills to test each other out, 
when the test is almost done, then they can finally use their big move to finish, how can anyone just come up and use their big move? Who wants to play tug of war with you? Claude probed their hearts and couldn't help but smile, these waterbenders grew up sheltered and lacked combat experience, the recruits on the front line of the beast tide are much better, in a real fight, who would play a turn-based game with Wudu and wait to save up their anger before throwing a big move. Seize every opportunity to throw a killing move, attack is the strongest defense. Mastering the first move can give you the upper hand in the next battle and lead to victory, victory often results from gaining even a small advantage. In this situation, the protagonist, a second-ranked master of armor who had recently awakened, was facing multiple fifth- and sixth-ranked opponents, to overcome this disadvantage, the protagonist had to act quickly and strike before the opponents could react, prolonged engagement would result in certain death, Evelyn was shocked when she sensed the battle knowledge transmitted by Claude in her battle spirit form, the combat experiences were new to her. In the past, teachers who taught practical combat only talked about vague theories, Claude, however, had taught himself the true art of combat, Evelyn was shocked and had a question in her mind, why did Claude have such rich combat experience, it was as if he were a veteran who had been fighting for decades. Claude's combat skills outmatched even the master of armor, whose realms were far higher, the mentors panicked as they saw the crimson fire dragon charging towards them and quickly cast their defensive abilities, they were aware that being engulfed by the fire dragon would put them in a dire situation, the crimson fire dragon roared and bathed in flames, it was unwilling when it saw that its attacks had not broken through the joint defense of several people, its golden eyes flashed with reluctance as it turned into sparks that slowly dissipated in the boundary. The fire dragon disappeared, and the tutors breathed a sigh of relief, however, they were still surprised, the strike they just witnessed had the aura of a peak 6th rank's full power strike, even with their full defense, they barely managed to block it, the child in front of them had a 2nd rank aura, yet was able to execute a powerful move. The combination of an SSS ranked master of armor and an SSS ranked battle spirit was formidable, however, their cold smiles returned as they realized. The move had consumed a significant amount of spiritual energy, the child's spiritual energy reserves were likely low, and this was a last-ditch effort to catch their opponent off guard, however, since this trick failed, there was no follow-up, the tutor, who didn't care about his torn uniform, shouted, not a bad idea, kid. You almost succeeded, but unfortunately, this little trick won't work against absolute strength, hurry up and tie your hands, and we might even be able to give you a good time, However, before he could finish his sentence, his voice suddenly stuck in his throat, he rubbed his eyes incredulously as two rays of light, one red and one yellow, shot up into the sky. The rays transformed into two seals that coalesced in front of the blazing red armor, the Inferno Dragon and Earth Tiger images were visible above the imprints, with their sounds echoing throughout the boundary, in the face of absolute strength, any techniques are futile, Claude's voice slowly sounded, urging them to go to their deaths obediently, he used the demon sealing chop post first to buy enough time to build up his strength, and fortunately, his guess was correct. By relying on the remaining emperor's chi in his body, he confused the power of other light and shadow armors into his own without transforming into the emperor's armor, however, he cannot use the fiery rocky earth emperor lava, which is an exclusive five elements essential kill belonging to the emperor armor, in the form of a normal light shadow armor, despite this limitation, it is still sufficient. The roiling meteorites reappeared within the boundary, the fire and earth's fiery rock is. Created by combining the power of the inferno dragon and the earth tiger, the two light shadow armor's masterstrokes, although not as magnificent as the one summoned by the emperor's armor of the night, the falling meteorites possessed the same terrifying power, this scene left the few people who had just been shouting completely dumbfounded, and a look of despair spread across their faces, a few seconds ago. They believed that the demon sealing chop post was Claude's limit. However, it turned out to be just a small skill of someone else's, Claude was the real mastermind behind it, could this be the real killing move? Just when a few people thought they were about to die, a white figure with a trailing flame suddenly appeared in the center of the battlefield, Claude's heart was startled when he saw Lydia's figure, his hands even paused momentarily, he wondered how she could be there, Claude did not hold back due to a vicious bridge, but because he had used the move fire and earth's fiery rock when he summoned the emperor's armor, 
Although the power of using this move in the light and shadow armor state was greatly reduced compared to when using the emperor armor, the essence of the move remained the same, it may appear to be broken, he did not want to reveal his identity until he had broken through to a sufficient realm. The reason was simple, high-ranked fey beasts possess intelligence and scheming abilities comparable to humans, unlike ordinary beasts that merely follow their instincts, both sides were stifling each other's top combatants. Consequently, many of the strongest human members were captured by the beasts and assassinated due to various oversights. Recently, one of the many actions taken was the assassination of the white tiger on the train. Additionally, not everything was secure within the blue. Star Federation, although the beast tide did not continue to expand, no country wanted other forces with strategic level 9th rank powerhouses to appear on top of what they already had. That night, the Luxor III carried out a desperate assassination in the heart of Barnes. Claude, who had fought the Beast Tide for decades in his previous life, knew a life truth very well, it's better to act than to pretend. Unless there is no one left in the world who can stop you from pretending, pretending is like being struck by lightning, although the language was coarse, Claude summarized the principle of life from his lifetime of experience, he did not intend to stop there and was determined to act, as the saying goes, if you don't cut the grass, it will grow again in the spring. He couldn't risk being backstabbed in the future by letting these few people go, however, the flaming rock of fire and earth was. Now unusable, Claude placed his hand on his belt, the original crimson armor disappeared in a flash of silver light, it was replaced by a majestic silver white armor, Lydia had just crushed the meteorite and was catching her breath, she was surprised to see the armor change form again. Claude's ability to change forms allowed the battle spirit to reach its full potential, the more forms he had. The higher the quality of the battle spirit became, the narrator had previously witnessed Claude. Change form once outside the boundary. The battle spirit in front of him had transformed three times, which is a rare occurrence even in the history of Blue Star, achieving three forms is a feat that very few people have accomplished, even with the legendary SSS class battle spirit, the talent of this armor is impressive, judging from the power of the meteorite that roamed the sky just now, it is at least of the seventh rank. Lydia always had a familiar feeling in her heart, however, she soon dismissed her thoughts as impossible. The student had exceptional talent, demonstrated by completing a second rank step over challenge, however, the imperial armor present was a transcendent existence of at least the ninth rank, making it clear that the talent was not comparable, Lydia shook her head and refocused on the silver white battle armor across the room, Claude spoke in a deep voice from underneath the armor, asking if she was going to block him too, Compared to those 5th and 6th order mentors who were like stinky fish and shrimps, the high rank master of armor was not even in the same league, the 6th and 7th orders represent a significant divide, beyond the 7th rank, one can only be referred to as a high rank master of armor, and only a 7th rank master of armor is a true high end combatant. Although the gap between the two sides was not apparent when facing these 6th, Rank opponents, Lydia's advantage in the SSS ranked battle spirit emperor armor talent would become evident when facing a 7th ranked master of armor due to the suppression brought about by the realm, additionally, Lydia is a 9th order battle spirit who has entered the battle god's temple, making her strength even more unfathomable, if possible, he would prefer not to fight Lydia, the risk was too great. Lydia shook her head and continued, this is Wings of Angels middle school, they are all tutors of the school, if they die here, it will be difficult for the academy to deal with them. Upon hearing this, the few tutors who were previously frightened were relieved, they did not expect Lydia to step in and defend them, with her support, those who had been provoking Claude forgot about the commotion they had caused, Claude's tone grew increasingly cold, although he did not have a negative impression of Lydia, he would not hesitate to be impolite if she chose to oppose him, Lydia's battle spirit was a mecha-type entity. And coincidentally, the magic spirit stone he had transformed earlier had the ability of mechanical invasion, if they had to fight, they might not be at a disadvantage due to attribute restraints. Lydia shook her head again and glanced at the few people behind her, clarifying that there was a misunderstanding, although they may be guilty of a great crime, you do not have the right to dispose of them, only Barnes's law can do that, if you kill them, you will be acting out of anger, and you will become the target of the law. It is not easy to mount a defense in Barnes, if you wish. I can move aside and let you dispose of them immediately, 
however, be prepared for Barnes to come after you. These words may seem like a warning, but Claude heard another layer of meaning, it was a tacit understanding that only the strong could comprehend, that's it. The Lydia god of war will not stand by and watch you kill innocents indiscriminately. Surrender now, boy. Do you still want to fight us? The people hiding behind them shouted behind their backs, however, they felt a sharp pain at their necks before they could finish their words, gushing blood splattered in mid-air, and several people died without resting in peace, their eyes filled with confusion, they didn't understand why Claude disobeyed Lydia, a ninth-ranked war god, until their last moments. Claude's shocking thunder axe dripped with blood. His icy cold voice continued as he revealed a cold aura in his eyes from underneath. His helmet, even though he had defeated a divine beast, the white tiger, Lydia's ninth rank, did not intimidate him, why did the imperial armor retreat after just a few threats? The shocking thunder axe crashed to the ground with a heavy thud, creating a loud echo throughout the space. Wiping the blood from his face, Claude slowly raised his head and looked at Lydia, who was not far away, as the cold voice repeated the same words, the cold voice repeated the same words, you want to block me? Feeling the terrifying aura that hit her face, Lydia's heart couldn't help but be surprised for a while, this kind of ice-cold killing aura, she had only seen it on the front line of the beast tide, on those who had fought bloody battles with alien beasts and climbed out of the pile of corpses, but the one in front of her was clearly just a student who had just awoken. The fact that you killed her meant that you should know what to expect next, right? After all, she was a ninth-ranked being, but Lydia quickly regained her composure. As soon as the words fell, an alarm bell rang not far away, the moment the boundary shattered, the spiritual energy from the battle between the various humans had leaked out, as the capital of Barnes, the safety of Starlight City was of course a top priority, the Defense Bureau had arrived within minutes, when they saw the corpses strewn all over the ground. The faces of the arriving members of the Security Bureau immediately changed, Wings of Angels Middle School, but it is the top academy in Barnes. Now that there was such a vicious incident, if it wasn't dealt with in time, it would be a huge blow to the whole of Barnes if word got out. At the moment, there were only two other people present, one was the famous Ninth Order War God, and the other was the unidentified silver white armor, any fool would know who the murderer was. This is the Starlight City Defense Bureau. Master of armor of this armor, disarm the battle spirit form immediately and don't put up any unnecessary resistance. Hearing the warning voice from his ears, Claude did not stop, on the contrary, without any hesitation, his body instantly transformed into a silver-white residual shadow and attacked towards Lydia, first, there was the sealing demon hatchet, and then the flaming rock of fire and earth, the release of both moves was a huge drain on spiritual energy, on top of that. With some of the spiritual energy that Evelyn had wasted in the beginning, his own spiritual energy reserves were about to run out. Even if he was at full strength, playing with Lydia, a ninth-ranked battle spirit, was not the same as seeking death, fighting slow with fast is always the truth of the battlefield. To retreat or not to retreat in this situation? Looking at the figure coming towards her, Lydia couldn't help but nod her head, her armor covering her entire body in an instant. With the tail flame shooting behind her, the incarnated white mecha instantly shot into the sky and hovered in mid-air, the next moment, an overwhelming number of roving missiles instantly took over the entire room, Claude's eyes lit up when he saw this, what worried him most was that Lydia was using her physical strength to fight hard with herself, in that case, even if the snow mastiff's armor could withstand the power of the ninth order, his own flesh as a summoner would not be able to withstand the impact of the penetration, Instead, using missiles was like falling into the trap he had set for himself, magic spirit stone, mechanical invasion, activated. In an instant, the skyrocketing missiles that had just carried a dazzling tail flame suddenly stopped in mid-air with a sharp deceleration, immediately after, they turned and bombarded Lydia, what? Lydia, who felt that she had suddenly lost control of her missiles, couldn't help but feel a flash of shock under her eyes, her own missiles had been counter-controlled. As a mecha battle spirit, her control over weapons was of course the most important existence in Blue Star. Even Sintra's ninth rank opponents, who were extremely good at mechanics, could not possibly reach this level. 
the silver-white armor in front of her should have been a weapon spirit type battle spirit no matter how she looked at it, but now it had actually crossed the field to do something that only a mechanical battle spirit could do. Watch out! When the surrounding defense bureau members saw this, they all transformed into battle spirit forms and tried to block the missiles coming down from the sky, a ninth-ranked battle spirit was a strategic level existence among any power, for Barnes, of course, it was also a treasure among treasures, so they had to ensure Lydia's safety, even at the cost of their own lives. But what shocked them the most was that even a ninth-ranked war god like Lydia seemed to be temporarily suppressed, so how? Strong was that silver-white armor standing not far away. Don't come over. Noticing the members of the Defense Bureau rushing behind her, Lydia hurriedly opened her mouth and ordered, those missiles came from her own hands. An attack from the ninth rank was far beyond what they could withstand. At the same time, the energy force field unfolded rapidly, the skies of reflected missiles turned into a trail of dazzling flames the moment they touched the energy force field, the sound of earth-shattering explosions was incessant, even the shockwaves generated by the self-destruction of the missiles sent a shiver down the spines of the crowd, if these missiles had just hit themselves, I'm afraid there would have been only one result. A corpse without any bones. Lydia, who had managed to stop all the missiles with great difficulty, let go of her hanging heart, to be attacked by her own abilities was truly a first, but before she could breathe a sigh of relief, a dangerous premonition suddenly appeared in her heart, not daring to be the slightest bit slow, she hastily concentrated her spiritual energy to create another shield. Sure enough, the next second, the sound of a dragon's roar rang out, and a red-hot fire dragon roared through the smoke in the sky, just as the hearts of those present were lifted, the fiery dragon, engulfed in flames, suddenly dissipated at the last moment, points of starbursts drifted down into the sky, out of spiritual energy. After checking his spiritual reserves, Claude shook his head sadly, after all, he was still at the second level of the realm, even if the control of spiritual energy was more exquisite, the total amount was still only so much, and it was impossible to increase it out of thin air, after unleashing three sure kills in a row, he had finally used up the last ounce of his spiritual energy. If he had a little more spiritual energy left, he should be able to successfully unleash the final blow by. Switching to the Inferno Dragon armor, the battle situation could have been reversed. Not only that, but what Claude hadn't expected was that Evelyn had actually supported herself up to this point, if she had fought cautiously until now, then she had fought with her own will until the end, as for the remaining thread of spiritual energy, the only thing that could be maintained was the condition of the armor ensemble, as the fire dragon dissipated, those present heaved a sigh of relief. If Lydia's missiles had only given them the shivers, the fire dragon had truly brought them. The pressure of death, they didn't dare imagine what would happen to them if they were the ones facing this fire dragon. Therefore, even though the fiery red armor seemed to be running out of spiritual power, none of them dared to rush forward. Perhaps they would never forget the figure standing here with a sword in front of him, after a long time, the members of the Defense Bureau adjusted their attitude and slowly surrounded Claude in a cautious manner, they were still too shocked by the battle, however, just as they were about to make an arrest, Lydia's voice suddenly rang out, Lydia's voice suddenly rang out. This matter has nothing to do with him. I'm the one who took care of that scum. What? The members of the security bureau who were about to make an arrest couldn't help but be a bit confused after hearing this, they had traveled a long way to get here, and as soon as they arrived, they saw these two fighting like mad, not far away, there was a pile of bodies on the ground, anyone else would have thought it was a riot, so now your old man is saying that these people were actually solved by you. Then what was that armor standing across the street? Just an eager citizen passing by. According to the investigation, Wendy, a tutor at Wings of Angels Middle School, and others used their positions to corrupt the law and use underhand tactics to murder their fellow students. Despite the facts, some people still tried to reverse the facts and murder the witnesses in the case, so I stepped in to wipe them out. Lydia lowered her energy shield and explained in a low voice, she had indeed suffered some minor injuries from the missile bombardment she had just received, not only that, but the most serious point was that after deflecting the missiles, she herself happened to be at the stage where her old power had been exhausted and new power had yet to be born, in this situation, 
She also had to protect the members of the surrounding defense bureau, if it weren't for the other party's final retreat, with. The terrifying aura emanating from that last fire dragon, Lydia could be sure that even if she didn't die, she would at least receive a not so small amount of serious injuries, originally, she had no intention of letting go of those few corrupt mentors, it was just that the genius in front of her, who could face the ninth order directly with a second order body, would not necessarily be able to produce one in a thousand years, even if there was a justifiable reason, killing someone in public. Was ultimately considered a stain, if he got his hands dirty here, it might have a slight effect on his growth in the future, since this was the case, it would be better for her to take the responsibility, and it would also be seen as a repayment for his kindness in closing his hands in the end, anyway, it wasn't a big deal for her to kill some scum, it was just a little more annoying to deal with. Taking advantage of the short time the members of the Defense Bureau had to look at each other in disbelief, Lydia slowly walked over to Claude's side and leaned down to whisper, you don't have the power to dispose of them, but I'm different, I have entered the Ninth Order, and as a member of the Temple of the God of Battle, I can represent Barnes Law, in the future, when you grow into my realm, it will be a piece of cake to deal with these matters, right now, you have that opportunity, the corners of Claude's mouth twitched slightly at these words, in fact, his earlier feeling hadn't been wrong, Lydia had planned this from the very beginning, with her character, how could there be sand in her eyes? In a way, even though they were strangers to each other, they were tacitly and invisibly working together to put on a show. Of course, despite his premonition, Claude didn't pin all his hopes on this, if the worst came to the worst, he would have been prepared to release all the recordings and documents in Wendy's mobile phone and rely on public opinion to force Barnes to react, it was just that Claude was not prepared to use this method until it was absolutely necessary, although the law had the meaning of surveillance, it was a double-edged sword. Once it was used by someone with the right intentions, they could turn the sword on themselves, he was grateful that events had not forced him to do so, so you want to invite me to the Wings of Angels Middle School, looking at Lydia before him, who still wanted to make another detour, Claude smiled and came straight to the point, an invitation. You could take it that way. Lydia's eyes flashed with a grin when she realized the subliminal meaning of his words, a genius like the one in front of her hadn't been seen in a thousand years, even those old guys from the War God Temple, if they saw him, I'm afraid they would all try to be his teacher, now that he had the opportunity to be near the water, how could he let it go? However, the word invite seemed to be used between people of the same level, and it was a bit strange to use it in this situation, but she soon pushed the thought to the back of her mind, to put it in perspective, Claude's ability to use his second rank to forcefully suppress several fifth and sixth rank armor masters was already an unimaginable feat, not to mention, he had almost seriously injured his ninth rank self. Although there was still a gap between the two sides in terms of realms. Lydia did not feel that she was qualified to be his teacher, even looking at the entire Barnes, I'm afraid that no one would dare to say that they had that qualification. At most, it would be seen as a senior and junior communicating with each other, would it not? In response to Lydia's invitation, Claude just shook his head, anyway, he and Evelyn should find a top academy to enroll in, since that was the case, they could go anywhere, in other academies, there were no mentors of the ninth rank realm like Lydia, this thing called a mentor might not seem useful, but it was actually quite useful as a supporter, at least in the future, when you were out there waving and cheating, and later when you were out there punishing evil, if you got into a fight with some rich second generation official or something, you could meet the requirements to become the crooked mouth dragon king, but Claude didn't think he should use it too much, normally, he practiced peace as a value and didn't really like to get into conflicts with people, but if it really came down to it, he would have to cut the grass without leaving any roots, if he really decided to take action, even if it was an earthworm in the ground at the entrance, he'd have to dig it out and cut it in. 2. In addition, as the only being who had attained the name of God of Battle with the body of the Battle Spirit, Lydia's understanding of the Battle Spirit was far from comparable to that of other Ninth Order Armor Masters, Evelyn thought that she could learn a lot from her. After thinking about it, Claude dispersed his flame blade and bowed his head, thanks to my mentor's guidance, my control over my abilities is indeed still not pure, good, good, good. Upon hearing these two words, Lydia's eyes were filled with surprise, this child is very up to date. Even if it's just a fake name, it can still solve things right now, 
if you hadn't stumbled upon him, I'm afraid the shit these scum have done would never have been exposed. In an instant, Lydia's expression changed to one of relief and she patted him heavily on the shoulder, as for your ability to go berserk at the end, I was able to control it in time, so it doesn't seem to have caused too much damage, the members of the Defense Bureau, who had just been able to mend their relationship, were stunned once again when they heard these words, from the initial situation. They thought that Claude had killed the tutors and that Lydia had stepped in to stop them. But the truth seems to be completely different from what they had imagined, ah. Now it seemed that these corrupt tutors were angry and wanted to kill Claude, who happened to have evidence, and then Lydia stepped in to save them, however, Claude's powers went wild in the end and Lydia tried to stop him, leading to the final scene where the two were seen fighting. The members of the Defense Bureau scratched their heads and felt as if their CPUs had started to smoke, that, it seemed like this person was really just a temporary, enthusiastic citizen. But no matter what, with Lydia's honorable status, it shouldn't be too much to think that she would hide this person from them, besides, it looks like all the evidence of corruption is complete. Moreover, with this one god of war in front of them, a disciple of the god of war, it looked like none of them could afford to be offended, with that being the case, they were too lazy to bother, and after cleaning up the scene, they left in droves, it was only after seeing the silhouettes of the Defense Bureau crowd disappear that Lydia turned. A hint of imperceptible meaning flashing through her eyes as she looked at the Inferno Dragon armor in front of her, from the beginning, she had been. Trying to figure out a question in her mind, the aura emanating from this armor was too similar to the berry armor that had saved her from the White Tiger. Right now, this was finally the opportunity, when Claude heard this, she couldn't help but feel a shock in her heart, although the fiery stone of fire and earth used by the armor of light and shadow and the five elements must kill used by the emperor's armor were completely different in appearance and power, a ninth class being like Lydia had long since stopped looking at things from the outside. Even if the users were different, the essence of the ability was of the same origin, had I known, I would have used a different skill, Claude's heart was a little numb at the moment, he just wanted to test his guess on a whim, who would have thought that he would actually come across something like this, you don't have much mental energy left, do you? Now that there is no danger, there is no need to maintain the form of the battle spirit, seeing that he was hesitant to move, Lydia thought that he still had some concerns in his mind, so she opened her mouth and reassured him gently, but she could understand, if she were in his place, she wouldn't let her defenses down so easily either, still, Claude really had no excuse to fight back, besides, Evelyn's condition wasn't good either. She could control her spiritual energy to the limit, but she was almost completely drained, not to mention that she was a newly awakened battle spirit, if she continued to hold on, it wasn't just a matter of consuming too much aura, she was afraid that it would have some effect on her body's foundation. After all, a treasure like the White Tiger Fountain wasn't a cabbage you could pick up by the side of the road, in the midst of Lydia's anticipation, the fiery red armor also turned into a white light and vanished into the air, in its place, two people stood in the same place, the moment she felt their aura, Lydia's heart couldn't help but let out a long sigh, they were indeed just two second-ranked little guys, no matter how you looked at it, they couldn't possibly be the berry armor that had hardened the white tiger, the gap between the realms was simply too great, however, she quickly changed her mind, how could an existence like Barry Armor, who had surpassed the ninth rank, show himself so easily? If he didn't want to reveal his identity, I'm afraid no one would be able to find him, how could he himself be so lucky to run into him when he came out to press a big road? Besides, the greatest gain of this journey was the discovery of a good seedling that would be hard to find in a thousand years. Not to mention the fact that he had crushed several 5th and 6th rank armor masters with his 2nd rank, and had even almost posed a threat to himself, a ninth rank being, he was a genius among geniuses, no matter what level he was at. Your spiritual energy consumption is too high, don't fight desperately in the future, every time your spiritual energy is overtaxed, it will cause irreversible damage to your body, after checking their physical condition, Lydia admonished them before pulling two potions from her storage device and handing them to them, this is the spirit power replenishing potion that the war god temple has specially provided, it is much better than the universal ones on the market, you will recover well in. These two days, by the way, I will go and help you with the enrollment formalities, thank you, after receiving the two potions, Claude looked at them and nodded. 
He recognized this kind of potion, Lydia wasn't exaggerating, even in his previous life, when he had already become a 7th ranked armorer, when he wanted to apply for this kind of special potion, he had to go through layers of approvals and countless reports before he could get his hands on it, in the end, the production of such high level potions was simply too low, especially at this point in time. If one remembered correctly, it was estimated that it had only recently been researched, so. Even for an existence at the level of a war god like Lydia, the quota wasn't expected to be abundant, however, the fact that she was able to take two of them directly and give them to herself was enough to prove her benevolence. When you are fully recovered, contact me. After sending them to the door, Lydia smiled and turned to leave, this trip back in particular. She had originally come back to seek confirmation of the identity of Barry's armor, now that she had those two taken care of, she naturally had to finish what needed to be finished. Seeing her back disappear a short distance away, Claude returned to the room, on the bed by the window, Evelyn had fallen into a deep sleep, her mental energy depleted, looking at the only remaining potion on the table, spirit power shook his head and finally decided not to take it, the state of his body was not too good but compared to the many times he had been on the edge of life and death in his previous life. It could only be considered child's play, Lydia probably didn't have much of. This kind of high quality potion with her, a large part of the reason she was able to kill two at once this time was also due to the greeting gift, and I'm afraid it wouldn't be so easy to get it again in the future, judging from her current state, there didn't seem to be a time when she needed to use it. After saving the remaining spiritual energy replenishing potion, Claude felt in his pocket, the next thing he knew, several purple diamond-shaped crystals were floating in the air, the reason why he had to take the risk of personally beheading those mentors was because of those magical spirit stones that had been transformed by the SSS rank dimensional seal talent, otherwise, it would be a waste to invest so much spiritual energy for nothing, after transforming all the magic spirit stones in front of him, Claude suddenly had a black line on his face, I don't know if it was because the quality of these watery battle spirits was too poor, or if his own face was just too black, but with all those magic spirit stones, he hadn't managed to draw out a single ability, even if it was a card draw, at least there was a guarantee. Fortunately, the spiritual energy inside had still been successfully transformed, so that was at least a consolation prize. At the same time, Claude felt that the invisible bottleneck seemed to be loosening up a bit and could break through at any time, he wasn't too surprised, before entering the third level, there were no high requirements in terms of understanding, as long as one's spiritual energy reserves were up to par, one could try to make a breakthrough, that was why most of the armor masters at the front lines of the beast tide were below the third level, but further up, spiritual energy was only the most. Basic requirement, to reach the bottleneck, what was needed even more was that moment of clarity, but for Claude, none of this was a big problem, to use a game analogy, his current self was the equivalent of opening a new gear and starting the second week, and of course he knew exactly where the pitfalls were. At least until you broke through to the seventh level, you didn't have to worry about advancing your realm too quickly, which could lead to an unstable foundation, as long as their spiritual energy requirements were up to par, they could break through right away, for most people, the ninth rank was the end of their entire career as a master of armor, becoming a god of war, a lifetime of glory, but for Claude, reaching the ninth rank was just the beginning, it was only the beginning. The ninth rank was far from the limit. This could easily be discovered by those four divine beasts whose strength far exceeded the ninth rank, if he hadn't stumbled into this secret realm in his previous life, it was possible that Claude wouldn't have been able to discover this ultimate secret of Blue Star in his entire life. So the scarcest thing he had now was time. With the experience of his previous life, the breakthrough from the second rank to the third rank was far less difficult for Claude than for those novice armor masters, even the breakthrough didn't have any special feeling, it was just like water naturally overflowing when it was full, and the advancement was completed in a natural way, as he felt the recharged spiritual energy in his body, he couldn't help but nod his head. Seeing that Evelyn was still sleeping, Claude sat down at the table and opened his mobile phone in boredom, the constant high-intensity battles had kept his mind in a tense state, it was not easy to get a chance to take a break, so of course he could not let it go. As soon as he opened the short video software, a video of curvaceous young ladies dancing appeared on the home page, in his previous life, 
this had been one of Claude's ways of relieving stress, but now that he had a beautiful woman of Evelyn's caliber by his side, those types were a bit too much, but he wasn't about to order a report, no matter what, they were all female bodhisattvas. He picked up his bowl to eat and put it down to curse, but Claude still couldn't do that, after flicking. Through a bunch of rubbish videos, one appeared that immediately caught his attention, the Starlight City Festival had been a success, and the fireworks display the night before had been a big hit. The time of the fireworks in the video was clearly the night he had dressed up in the Emperor's armor and fought three Ninth Order armor masters alone, surprisingly, he was using this method to hide from the world, and Claude couldn't help but nod his head. Whichever way you look at it, it was indeed justified and flawless, the sound of fireworks and the glorious special effects simply covered up the anomalies caused by the clash between the two sides that night, needless to say, Barnes really was quite good at controlling information, but there was still one thing that worried Claude the most, in his previous life. Starlight City's festival had not gone smoothly due to the Mirror Beast's assassination, but this time, the Mirror Beast did not appear, and in its place was the battle between himself and Luxor's trio, in a way, the butterfly effect did occur, but there always seemed to be a force in the underworld making corrections to the future what, you want to be a mentor. When Joe Fong, the Dean of Wings of Angels Middle School, looked at Lydia, he almost thought that something was wrong with his ears. Ever since Lydia had graduated from the academy, he, as a teacher, had been begging and pleading for this student to return to the academy and produce some good seedlings to replenish the talent pool of their Wings of Angels Middle School, but each time the result was a failure, the biggest result was that she was allowed to keep the name of honorary dean, since then, Zhou Feng had given up hope and simply left her alone. At the very least, having a ninth order war god on stage would give the academy a strong voice, but what he hadn't expected was that Lydia, who had never been interested in teaching students, would actually take the initiative and ask to be a mentor. What? Something wrong with the process? Lydia asked with some concern when she saw him standing there. After all, her own title of dean was just a false title, she did not know much about the running of the academy, how could there be a problem? The students in this class are at your disposal, you can take whoever you want. I'll bring you the information right away. In an instant, Zhou Feng reacted immediately and hastily patted his chest to reassure him, just kidding. If word of this got out, the number of students at the academy would definitely increase next year, who wouldn't want a ninth rank as their teacher. Only a fool would refuse such a request. However, to Zhou Feng's surprise, Lydia did not pick up the thick stack of information, there's no need to show me, I've already decided on a candidate, decided? Upon hearing this, Zhou Feng couldn't help but stare. Who? Was it the scholar from Lianjiang City who had awakened an SS grade talent, or was it the genius who had recently contracted the SS grade extreme battle spirit? Neither, Lydia shook her head and placed the document in her hand on the table as she continued, it's him, after receiving this information, Zhou Feng's face could not help but flash with a flash of doubt, he had to know that the two people he had just mentioned were both existences that had excelled in this test, in order to recruit them into the academy, the academy had destroyed a lot of resources, now, Lydia was actually giving up on these two excellent seedlings and choosing someone else. If there were even more outstanding beings than these two inch they should have been discovered long ago, it seems that being strong doesn't mean having a good eye, even though his heart didn't have much hope for this candidate, Zhou Feng still looked at the information on the table out of politeness. No matter what, he was still at the ninth rank, so this face still had to be given, he believed that based on his own reasoned argument, Lydia should accept the proposal, however, when he saw the rank in the talent column, Zhou Feng's disciples suddenly shrank, holy shit, the SSS rank piloting battle armor talent. Seeing the surprised look on his face, Lydia's face did not move, but a smile flashed across the bottom of her eyes, the fact that she, a teacher known for her culmination of Barnes, could actually make her persona collapse and start spewing profanity was enough to show the heavenly nature of Claude's talent, at that moment, the most confused person was Zhou Feng, not long ago, he had been convinced that Lydia's vision would not be as good as his own. Unexpectedly, in the twinkling of an eye, he was slapped in the face. The strangest thing to him was that this kind of heavenly genius was the candidate that all the major colleges were vying for, 
but why had there been no news up to now? This is not scientific. Could it be that there was a problem with the contracted battle spirit? With a stomach full of questions, Zhou Feng continued to turn the second page, when he saw the quality column of the battle spirit, his pupils shrank again, if they shrank any further, Zhou Feng felt that his eyes might go out, however, the problem was that the information on this profile was truly baffling, it wasn't that the battle spirit quality was too high, on the contrary, the rating in the quality column was simply too low. If it weren't for Lydia, a ninth rank battle spirit, he would have thought that this was someone playing a joke on him. A master of armor who had awakened an SSS class talent had actually contracted a D-class battle spirit, it wasn't that he discriminated against the quality of the battle spirit, but after so many years of teaching and training, Zhou Feng had long since stopped worrying about it, after all, he had also witnessed stories of low-quality battle spirits making a comeback, but this combination in front of him, how could he see it, was very much against the grain, generally speaking, the battle. Spirit was only downward compatible with the Master of Armor, there was no such thing as upward compatibility, however, any Master of Armor who had awakened a C-rank or higher talent would not choose a D-rank battle spirit to sign, not to mention a rare talent like SSS level, which would be hard to find in a hundred years, of course. There were some D-rank battle spirits that possessed certain special talents with the ability to evolve twice, but while Thousand Mile Horses were common, bull, was not, those who were able to find such special existences were all people with discerning eyes. Even Zhou Feng thought that if he encountered this special battle spirit, he would most likely lose his eyes, not to mention, masters of armor who had just completed their awakening. So how exactly was this pair paired up? Seeing Zhou Feng's stunned expression, Lydia's heart forced a smile on her face, preventing her from laughing out loud, at the beginning, her reaction was exactly the same, it wasn't until later, when she had personally checked the information on both of them, that she realized what the problem was. Claude's SSS rank was unquestionable, placed on the blue star, he was a genius that countless forces were competing for. On the surface, it's true that it's only a D-rank battle spirit, however, do. To Claude's talent, he had surprisingly received a second awakening. Because of this awakening, she has been promoted to an S-class battle spirit, but because the information has not been updated yet, she is still listed as a D-class battle spirit, but there was one thing Lydia was very concerned about, Evelyn's second awakening was certainly true, but is it because of Claude's extraordinary talent that she has forcibly increased her quality, or is the battle spirit she has awakened really something special? From the evidence we now have, the former seems more likely, However, Lydia, who was also a battle spirit, felt that it might not be that simple, if a battle spirit's quality was truly incorrigible, even if it was given the chance to awaken a second time, it wouldn't have any special improvements, therefore, only ugly ducklings could become swans, as for the ugly chicks, they could only become crazy Thursdays. So, Evelyn's battle spirit itself might have had some special features that were just covered up, how on earth did Claude pick her out of so many battle spirits to contract? Is it really just by relying on the SSS ranked pilot battle armor talent, that too is a bit too much of a coincidence, after a few moments, Zhou Feng finally recovered from the shock, compared to the embarrassment, he was more surprised at the moment, this kind of celestial configuration that had only been seen once in a thousand years had been found by Lydia. The only thing that was a bit unfortunate was that what this girl had awakened was only the extreme battle spirit of S, if it could have been a bit further, it would have been even more perfect, even so, Zhou Feng was already very satisfied. He still understood the truth that a person's heart was not enough to swallow a snake, with a broad stroke of his pen, the enrollment process for the two of them was instantly completed, as for the examination and other tedious procedures, they were skipped right over. How can we let those pigs out there give away such an excellent cabbage? Right, teacher, there's one more thing I have to tell you, after Lydia retrieved the signed application, her face finally turned serious, what's wrong? Seeing her tone sinking, Zhou Feng's eyes could not help but flash with doubt, even though Lydia was a war god, compared to other people of her rank, she was still very laid back and did not have that overbearing feeling especially towards herself, her former teacher, she remained as respectful as before. A situation like this is really rare, Wendy, you should know this person, right? It's her, what's wrong? 
After thinking about it, Zhou Feng finally recalled it from his memory, if I remember correctly, this person seems to have been assigned to the academy from above, it was said that the contracted armor master died in battle and was given a position according to the battle spirit's preferential policy, although he usually heard the occasional whisper, he didn't pay too much attention to it. Not to mention that Wendy's fate was in the hands of the official department she was assigned to, it was. Also very difficult to deal with an existence with such a special status, if the punishment was severe, she would have a war record as a shield, if the punishment was light, other people would inevitably be unconvinced. In short, it was a hot potato, therefore, as long as there was no line, Zhou Feng would simply turn a blind eye and let her go, could it be that this one really screwed up? Lydia saw this and put the recording on the table, when this evidence was placed in front of him, the more he looked down, the more angry Zhou Feng's heart became, he had not expected that Wendy would actually dare to conspire with other tutors and do such outrageous things. No wonder the number of students killed in accidents had skyrocketed in the past few years. So these people were behind it. Don't worry, I'll take care of this myself. I will definitely give you an explanation. After placing the information in his hands, Zhou Feng's voice was filled with icy coldness. He knew very well that Lydia was not sitting here as his disciple right now, she was also here as a mentor to seek justice, but to his surprise, Lydia just shook her head, no need, these people are already dead, dead. You did this? Upon hearing this, Zhou Feng's heart was suddenly shocked, it wasn't that he wanted to shelter these people, it was mainly because Wendy's identity was too sensitive, if she was killed by Lydia's hand, certain rats hiding in the shadows might make a big book out of it, it was me, it wasn't me either, Lydia nodded, then shook her head, what do you mean? Hearing this answer from her, Zhou Feng couldn't help but be confused, those people, it was Claude who shot them, it should be considered self-defense, Lydia raised her head, thought for a moment, and then opened her mouth, as soon as these words came out, a flash of disbelief flashed across Zhou Feng's eyes. If it wasn't for Lydia sitting in front of him, he would have suspected that he was being tricked. Claude's talent was indeed incredible, but he had only just awakened, to be able to break through to the second tier realm in just a few days was already considered an extraordinary talent, but those instructors are all fifth and sixth dimensional beings, a difference of three or four realms, not to mention killing. Even if you can survive at their hands, is considered an extremely excellent record. Are you actually saying that these people were killed by Claude? What a joke. Sadly, Lydia shook her head when she saw his disbelieving face. But she could understand, if she hadn't witnessed the entire battle, she wouldn't have believed that someone was actually able to fight several fifth and sixth class existences alone with the second class realm and kill them in the end, it was only after he saw the video of the battle with his own eyes that Zhou Feng was shocked and believed in it, originally, he thought that he had only recruited a very outstanding genius. Now that he looked back, this was no human being, it was clearly a Godzilla. Or the kind of Godzilla that had evolved to the point where it could swallow the entire blue planet in one bite. Even if it was the god of war of all time, I'm afraid no one would be able to do that in the second stage. After being shocked, the calm Zhou Feng also understood the meaning and patted his chest to reassure himself. I'll solve these problems. But I only have one request, this time, Claude must participate in the adventures arranged by the War God Temple. Take part in the training. In the middle of the room, after hearing Lydia's words, Claude shook his head without the slightest hesitation, not going. Just kidding. The nature of this training is really just a show for the Barnes executives, instead of wasting time accompanying these children, it would be more useful to have a happy double cultivation with Evelyn, Lydia was shocked to see his reaction, you have to know that the team for this adventure is only qualified if they have the top 10 scores in the national exam, as far as she knew, Zhou Feng had almost been pouted to get that one spot. How could this quota that countless people had dreamed of be denied so decisively? Still, Lydia couldn't force him to participate, she had tried before, but whether it was in the control of mental power or in the actual fighting, Claude's performance was perfect, especially when it came to actual combat, his performance was not inferior to his own, almost as if he had been at the forefront of a beast flood and fought with foreign beasts for a long time, but this was also the strangest thing.
if such an excellent control of spiritual energy could be explained as an exceptional talent, then practical combat experience should only be gained through battles, judging by his record, Claude had clearly only recently awakened, his previous CV could only be described as unremarkable, not to say mediocre. He hadn't even left Starlight City, the training he had received was, at best, a fully popularized form of escape acting, before that, Claude should never have even seen a fay, but for some reason, he was exceptionally experienced in actual combat, even suggesting a tactic that could be considered unique, even Lydia's eyes lit up when she saw these innovative over tactics, later. After returning to the Battle God Temple, a number of existences at the ninth rank level also recognized this, so. Much so that this innovative tactic was now being circulated on the Beast Tide frontline and was being widely praised, since then, Lydia had understood one thing, it wasn't that Claude was arrogant, but he really wasn't qualified to be her teacher. In fact, the two of them should be considered to be in the same class, it wouldn't be long before Claude's strength surpassed her own, and so she stopped mentioning the point, the two of them tacitly agreed that this so-called teacher-student relationship was just a false name, to put it simply, it was a superficial teacher-student relationship, however, Evelyn, who didn't know the inside story, had great respect for this teacher who was a war god, in order to cooperate with her, Claude would occasionally put on a show, as for this so-called innovative tactic, it was of course the experience of blood and tears in his previous life, he was a traveler, the so-called golden fingers were only the ones you had left in your head, if you were not allowed to use even those, it would be too much. As for the question of whether the butterfly effect would happen again, Claude was already looking away, the fact that he could travel back was already the biggest bug in this world, from a certain perspective, as long as he existed, the bugs of this world would never be eliminated, besides, this world itself might be running on bugs, if that were the case, why waste the thought? It would be better to happily double cultivate with Evelyn, of course, Claude also hoped to be able to reduce some of the casualties of the Masters of Armor who were at the forefront of the Beast Tide fighting against the alien beasts as much as possible, as a former member, he had seen his comrades around him change from one batch to the next. A newcomer who was afraid yesterday might be able to block the advance of the Beast Tide the next day at the cost of his life, thus creating space for other comrades to evacuate, in the end, only a handful would survive, this tactic, too, was paid for with their blood. The reason why he risked being suspected and told Lydia about these tactics was that Claude not only wanted to balance their relationship, but also wanted to use her as a means to pass on these life lessons to the masters of armor who were fighting to the death against the beasts, instead of organizing such a life-threatening excursion, it would be better to throw these flowers in the greenhouse to the front line. Isn't it more useful to fight alien beasts for a few days and gain practical experience than to have a flowery display? Seeing him so determined, Lydia couldn't help but sigh, after a while, the Defense Bureau will come to investigate the incident from earlier, although Dean Zhou will step in to settle the matter, it's best for both of us, as the parties involved, to go out and hang around for a few days. This adventure is just the right opportunity, Originally, Lydia thought it wouldn't be out of the question to settle a few corrupt tutors, but what she didn't expect was that Wendy's identity was just too sensitive, this kind of master of armor battle spirit that died in battle was a T-Zero level existence, no matter where they were placed, even if they did something more harmful under the blessing of their identity. They all possessed the heavenly buff of plus 100% legal resistance, the result was. Unsurprising, some rats hiding in the gutter immediately began to lead the wind with their rhythms, forcing the Defense Bureau to reinvestigate when the evidence was complete, even if the evidence says it all and the outcome remains the same, the trial must go on, I'll go pack my things then, Claude could only nod his head in agreement after thinking about it. As much as he wanted to spend a few days with Evelyn in peace and quiet, it seemed unlikely now. Instead of being told to squat in a little black room for nothing, staring at that confess and resist sign every day, it would be better to go on a government-funded trip. This time, the secret training area is said to be in the middle of Vermilion Bird territory, if you are lucky enough to pick up a piece of the Vermilion Bird's feather by the side of the road, you can also unlock the seal of the fourth layer of the Emperor's armor, alright, we'll meet at the playground later. When she finally saw him nod in agreement, Lydia was relieved, 
aside from the Wendy incident, there were other reasons why Claude was needed so urgently for the training exercise, this time, the entire Blue Star Federation was taking part, and Barnes' team was just one of them. From a certain point of view, the result of this training was tantamount to representing the potential of each country, those who were able to participate were basically the top geniuses, unfortunately, although Barnes seemed to have a lot of talent at the time, he didn't really stand out among the new generation, this was also the reason why Zhou Feng, after hearing about Claude's heavenly performance, had risked being scolded in order to secure a place on the calendar, not only for the sake of Tian High Academy, but also for the future of Barnes, he firmly believed that even looking at the entire new generation of blue stars, Claude was the strongest being. I didn't expect that this training would actually lead to the Vermilion Bird's secret realm awe. In fact, it was said that it was a super difficult S-level secret realm, the higher the difficulty, the more rewards. Besides, with so many mentors accompanying you, what danger are you afraid of? In the activity area, the group of people who had arrived long ago gathered to discuss the next adventure, however, the harmonious atmosphere was shattered by a phrase coming from a corner, I've heard that this time there's a connected person who's been hardwired into the team, ah. Oh. Everyone frowned at this remark, before they arrived, they had also heard something about this news, it was said that the original 10th place finisher had suddenly gone wrong in his cultivation and had to give up this opportunity, cultivating properly doesn't smell good just as Claude was about to go into divine mode, he suddenly found a figure blocking his way, just that. It doesn't look like anything special. A drop of cold sweat slowly dripped from the corner of his forehead, since this was a dismount, it was certainly necessary to teach him a profound lesson right from the start. This ninth-ranked war god was strange, just as he was thinking about how to defeat Claude, the voices of the other participants suddenly came from his side, or he must realize the importance of it, understand the urgency, stick to self-awareness, take the initiative, grasp the times with a global and forward-looking vision, and stick to practice. There is a good double cultivation this time, as one of the top executives in his previous life, Claude knew the process of this so-called meeting all too well. Where there are people, there are rivers and lakes, looking at the figure coming from a short distance, Wang Jia couldn't help but narrow his eyes as he stepped out of the group with great strides, without half a second's hesitation, Claude immediately rolled up his sleeves, even though he had a mentor with him, and there should be no danger in the experience, this kind of relationship with little power was of no use at all, except for dragging his feet, besides, he was the national examination. Champion, so why should a parachutist be so arrogant? Don't talk nonsense. I heard that his teacher seems to be Lydia. He thinks of himself as someone who can convince people with reason, although Wang Jia had tried his best to create a sense of oppression, in Claude's eyes it was as funny as a groundhog standing up and opening his arms to scare people, as for the normally aggressive Wang Jia, he couldn't help but freeze, without a fight, every single person here had basically already crossed paths at the national examination. At that moment, he walked towards the meeting place with a helpless face, but in a situation like this, it's useless to just rely on words, even though this kind of battle can provide a lot of experience, the taste of a bitter battle is not very pleasant, the most outrageous thing was that this kind of nondescript speech was stinky and long, why should it have such a terrifying pressure? Just as Wang Jia managed to channel his spiritual energy into his trembling legs, forcing him to stabilize his body, that ice-cold voice resounded in his ears once again, now it was so hard to have someone of the same rank willing to actively beg for abuse, not right, it would have been better to let him know better and voluntarily resign from the team himself. Even though the captain's choice had not yet been announced, Wang Jia had unconsciously submitted himself, only after a good beating would they be obedient and reasonable. When he looked up, he saw a student in the Dark Dragon Academy uniform standing in front of him, his eyes full of malice, the most important thing was that the last few fights were basically out of their league, civilian or martial. The eleventh person who was supposed to be the top candidate was none other than his twin brother. Those who could stand here were all selected by the national examination and had good relations with each other, for a while the crowd whispered again, if it wasn't for Claude's interference, both of them could have been selected for the training team. With this relationship in place, Wang Jia was naturally prepared to give it a good thrashing, if there were no surprises, then there would definitely be surprises. 
In the next moment, the aura of a 7th ranked armor master was fully released, although he already knew what was probably going to happen, Claude still sighed, every time there was a meeting, it was always the same few cartwheels repeated over and over again, it was simply the best tool for hypnosis, better than reading high numbers, in the end, the really useful part was probably just a few sentences. What they despised most was this kind of backdoor relationship. Although he knew that the other party was pulling his own flag and foxing him, Wang Jia still held his arms and grunted coldly, he took the initiative and was willing to come to the door to spar, how could Claude pass up the opportunity to abuse a vegetable? But the premise of argument is that people want to listen, why don't we give him a good wrestling match later? But you don't say so, the fighting spirit of his contract looks pretty good. But why do you want to do it now? That's not how it works. It's only natural. Something that could have been resolved in five minutes had to drag on for hours, and all the leaders had to show their faces, in the blink of an eye, Wang Jia felt a terrible pressure and all the cold hairs behind him stood up, however, Claude was unaware that he had been targeted for some inexplicable reason, Brother Wang, what do you think? No matter what happens, it would be better to at least bow your head and admit your mistake first, as the champion of the national test, Wang Jia then became a captain-like existence in an invisible way, at this moment, only these two symbols could represent his inner thoughts, under normal circumstances, they had such a strong aura that the other side should not have to bow down to the ear to show courtesy, nothing more than to invite a bunch of leaders to speak in order of rank. However, the one in front of him was obviously only a second-level armor master. There was no other reason, seeing this, a student took the opportunity to make a suggestion, after playing too many quality games, it was inevitable that one would miss the feeling of a cool game, as the top 10 in the national exam, everyone here is a genius picked out of 10,000, and none of them are existences whose hearts are higher than the sky, what qualifications do you have to challenge me? A scum who infiltrated this world by dishonorable means. Under normal circumstances, he should have been the 11th alternate, this kind of aura, he had only seen it from that old ancestor in his family. At the same time, he glanced at the black-clad figure standing in the middle of the crowd. Similar to what in the face of this problem, we need to come up with a new level, to reach a new realm, through new initiatives, new development, to form a new breakthrough. But I don't know why, but this time it didn't come in the usual way, but parachuted in a passerby they'd never heard of before. It seems to be called something Claude, this name comes the moment you hear it, it is very no gold. Look. There's the connection. It would be strange for an outsider like you not to be given a hard time, I'll ask you a question. Civilian combat, or martial arts? Then, civilian combat. Looking at Claude who was standing not far away, Wang Jia really couldn't understand him at the moment, faced with two choices, he unconsciously chose the safer one. Claude couldn't help but sigh at this unlucky boy who chose anything but a civilized fight, if it was a sparring match, he could at least make sure he got to the point, but if it's a civil fight, then he can't control his power very well, you come first, I come first. Claude asked politely after standing up, it's as one tradition to be polite before fighting, you first. Wang Jia snorted coldly, his face unimpressed, he comes from a family that has read all the famous books of the past and present, when it comes to literary achievements, he is not afraid of anyone except those who specialize in the study of the old man, in front of the eyes of this half-civilian, it is difficult not to be able to pass his own precision. Well, Claude coughed lightly, cleared his throat, then turned his head to Evelyn at his side and said quietly, cover your ears, when Evelyn heard this, although she was full of doubts, her telepathy as a battle spirit allowed her to immediately sense that something was wrong. Without the slightest hesitation, she hastily covered her ears as requested, what is this situation? Seeing this scene, Wang Jia on the other side was confused, it wasn't Bun Do, why did he have to cover his ears? However, it was the next sound of Claude's voice that woke him up completely, Wang Jia, who was born in a family, had never been baptized in this kind of culture, in an instant, he was confused, what about the promised civil war? You call this a civil war? Feeling the constant stream of attacks, he felt his blood pressure rise and his face instantly turned red, what's the matter? Can't you take it anymore? Could it be that you're not used to hearing Barnes language? 
why don't I change the language and we'll continue. Claude, who had stopped to catch his breath, inquired thoughtfully after noticing his flushed face. Nowadays, young people don't even have this ability to resist pressure, trash talk is also an indispensable part of the fight, sometimes trash talk could make the opponent get carried away and lose his cool judgment, in the midst of battle any small detail can affect the final outcome, perhaps it is this small, insignificant advantage that allows one to survive the battlefield, that is why, in his previous life, Claude had meticulously researched the various languages of the Blue Star. Federation, just to be able to come in handy at critical moments, and that cursed fey beast died precisely because of his own fey language rage, continued Nima. Wang Jia, who had been baptized for so long, finally reacted. What kind of literary battle is this? It was clearly a war of words. Of course, a lowly civilian could only use such crude tactics. Rubbish is rubbish, right? I guess that's why no battle spirit wants to sign with you, and why you can only sign with a D-class trash. In his rage, Wang Jia couldn't care less about etiquette and let out a curse, upon hearing this, Claude, who was originally in the mindset of teasing a small child, instantly turned dark, glancing at Evelyn beside him, he was slightly relieved to see that she still obediently covered her ears, for a master of armor, it didn't matter if he physically attacked himself, but if he insulted battle spirit. The nature of the matter would change. A few words of abuse might not result in a loss of flesh, but in the event of a martial arts fight, it would result in a real loss of flesh. With fire surging through his hand, Claude was instantly transformed into a stump, facing such a newly awakened rookie, he didn't even need an armor fusion, at that moment, Wang Jia also realized that he had just made a mistake. However, even in this situation, he had to harden his heart and summon battle spirit to meet him, as a dragon ward, a western black dragon appeared in the middle of the playground. And on the dragon's back was clearly Wang Jia, the master of armor, it's actually. The dragon battle spirit, no wonder, when I fought him before, my beast battle spirit always felt suppressed. It looks like he didn't even use his full power during the test. The moment they saw this black dragon appear, the crowd of students watching the battle were astonished, when they fought earlier, they knew that Wang Jia's fighting spirit was of extremely high quality, but they did not know his race, it wasn't until now that the secret was finally revealed. It turned out to be a dragon-type battle spirit. Moreover, it was a pure holy dragon, not a garbage dragon like the earth dragon, which only had a trace of dragon blood. Dragons, by nature, have a suppression of all beast battle spirits, not only the beast battle spirit, but other types of battle spirit are also affected, from a certain point of view, dragons were the existence that stood at the top of the battle spirit. Even if it was only a four-legged lizard like the western dragon. However, right now, this relative actually dared to attack with his bare hands, not just looking for death. Everyone present turned their heads away, unable to bear the bloody images that followed, at the same time, Wang Jia's heart was burning with rage, no matter what, he was also the number one in this session's exam, the pride of heaven that countless academies were competing for, this person actually dared to fight with himself empty-handed without summoning the spirit of battle. It was too much. Just as he was about to teach his opponent a good lesson, he suddenly felt a tremor beneath his feet, and his entire body almost fell off the dragon's back, the next thing he knew, a roar of pain echoed through the room. The originally majestic, pitch-black dragon had already suffered a huge crack in its wings, burning flames quickly spread over the dragon's entire body, what? As he felt battle spirit's agony through the psychic channel, Wang Jia couldn't help but feel a flash of shock in his eyes, it was only when he saw the long flaming blade in Claude's hand that he realized, so this was his battle spirit. Unlike the beast battle spirit, the weapon battle spirit was easy to summon, it seemed as if the other party had eaten up this point and deliberately pretended not to summon a battle spirit in order to let his guard down. Wang Jia, who thought he had seen through the ruse, was filled with smugness in his heart as he looked down condescendingly at Claude and opened his mouth. Your trick was good, you managed to hurt my fighting spirit. But next time, you won't have that chance. A trick? What trick? Claude was confused when he heard his words, 
in order to reduce the killing power as much as possible, he hadn't even chosen to fuse the armor, but just summoned the flame blade on his own, otherwise, he was even afraid that his full power would give this heaven's pride a direct hit, forget it, let's make it quick, by now, Claude was no longer interested in playing, above the nine heavens. The sound of a dragon's roar resounded once more, a huge red dragon, bathed in flame, soared between the clouds, appearing and disappearing, at the same time, Claude's icy voice sounded again, I'll show you, what is the real eastern dragon. It's normal if it feels like there's a lack of content, because Zwan's words have been checked like this. So strong. Despite the fact that the same species of dragon was below him, when confronted with the red flaming fire dragon soaring above the nine heavens, Wang Jia felt nothing but endless fear, however, he knew very well that this feeling of fear was not intentional, it was just, the natural oppression of the upper class against the lower class in terms of rank. You must know that his battle spirit was a legendary holy dragon. Even among dragons, it was in existence at the top of the food chain, but this oriental dragon in front of him, who had come from nowhere, was actually of a higher rank. At this moment, Wang Jia was incredibly sorry, what the hell was this D-class battle spirit? If he had another chance, he wouldn't provoke Claude to death. This was no longer within the realm of what humans could challenge. Him, he was clearly a monster. But no matter how much he regretted in his heart, time could not be turned back. Looking up at the roaring, flaming fire dragon in the sky, Wang Jia gritted his teeth and finally decided to merge with his battle spirit, even if he had to die, he had to die standing up, with the sound of a desperate dragon roar, the black dragon on the ground also spat searing dragon flames into the air, at that moment, a sense of enlightenment suddenly appeared in Wang Jia's heart, and the bottleneck in his body was instantly broken by the upward surge of spiritual energy, immediately after. That, an overwhelming aura rose into the sky, seeing this, Claude couldn't help but narrow his eyes, my good man, a breakthrough on the verge. As for the others who had originally watched the battle from the surrounding area, they had long since taken cover at the first opportunity, anyone with a discerning eye could see that this strike from both sides had at least the strength of the fifth class. In a collision of this magnitude, even the aftershocks from the impact could seriously injure someone. No one wanted to be the unfortunate one, the twin dragons collided. The searing dragon breath spilling out in all directions took the place of the collision as the center and quickly spread out to the surroundings, even if they were hiding behind a cover, the people present could feel the intense sizzling sensation and could not help but discuss it one after the other, unexpectedly, this relation actually possessed such power. You still call him a relative? That's just someone who hasn't taken the test. If we really want to fight, the few of us together probably won't be enough to defeat him. I wonder who won, I guess it was Wang Jia. He seems to have broken through to the third tier at the last minute. Indeed, that dragon breathstrike seemed to have the strength of a fifth tier realm, just as everyone was eagerly awaiting the outcome, the smoke from the impact finally dissipated, a silhouette stood in the midst of the swirling smoke. The black dragon, who had originally been incredibly proud, now put down his wings and knelt on the ground, it's Claude. I told you he'd win for sure. Big brother is great. In an instant, the crowd erupted in cheers, although they hadn't had a good impression of this relationship at first strength was being honored above the blue star, with such a big brother leading the flight in this adventure, they couldn't be happier. Besides, there was no real conflict between the two sides, so when Claude revealed his strength, there were quite a few people who decided to take his side, however, the one who was most shocked was still Wang Jia, who was the party involved, only by facing the flaming dragon himself could he feel how terrifying it really was. I really survived. After feeling that his body was not missing any parts, Wang Jia's eyes were filled with disbelief, he could feel that with the terrifying energy contained in this fire dragon, it should be enough to send him to the Yellow Springs. But for some reason, Claude didn't, he seemed to have stopped at the last moment. You one looking at Claude who was still standing on the opposite side, Wang Jia lowered his head with conviction, he didn't have any sad feelings from losing the battle, with similar strength, it was normal to feel bad about losing, however, when he lost a battle with a huge difference in strength, there was no feeling of losing 
because the result was already predetermined, if it hadn't been for Claude's timely retreat, he would probably have turned into molecules floating in the air where he would have had the chance to admit defeat. He had almost fallen over in the gutter, looking at the black dragon prostrate before him, Claude secretly sighed in relief, breaking through at the edge was not as easy as it seemed, firstly, the spiritual power had to be at its peak, touching the bottleneck of the breakthrough, second, in the midst of a duel, the pressure of life and death had to be there, pushing the potential of the human body to its limit. It was difficult to reach this threshold in a mediocre duel like this one, finally. And most importantly, it was necessary to accurately capture that extremely rare glimmer of clarity, only by achieving these few conditions would one have the possibility of a critical breakthrough, but it is only possible, there are only a handful of people who are truly capable of making a breakthrough, he also didn't expect that this one in a million person could actually stumble upon it himself. No wonder this guy came first in the whole Barnes test, he really did have a pair of brushes, unfortunately, the one he stumbled upon was himself, in the eyes of others, Wang Jia, who might have broken through to the third rank, had unlimited potential, in Claude's eyes, however, he was still not worth mentioning, a few days ago, he had already broken through to the third level through normal cultivation, moreover, with the large amount of spiritual energy provided by the magic spirit stone. The threshold to the fourth rank was not far away, if it weren't for the delay in this training, Claude would have reached the fourth rank bottleneck within a month, therefore, Wang Jia's desperate strike was nothing more than an ant trying to shake a big tree, even he couldn't force himself to use his armor to fuse, not far away, Evelyn still obediently covered her ears. As for those around him, who were incredibly amazed by a blow that could be compared to the strength of the fifth class, Claude was even more casual, these so-called geniuses in front of him were nothing more than normal, in short, you are strong, but I am stronger. Even if your protagonist's aura is attached to you and you explode, I can only knock you to the ground. In a fantasy novel, Claude felt that he was the kind of villain who would appear in the novel, unexpectedly, one day I can still enjoy the treatment of that kind of villain, however, I must say that the feeling of rubbing people on the ground was really cool, it was as soothing as if he had been exhausted from playing high-end games every day and had suddenly come down to the low-scoring section to fry fish. Of course, Claude kept one thing in mind. If you fry too many fish, you become a fish, this kind of low-scoring game is usually okay to relax and play a little, but if you really indulge in this kind of victory, which has little gold content, you will instead develop the psychology of pride and arrogance, which will affect your fighting mentality, Wang Jiao who had been trained by him before, was a good example, and not far away. When Lydia and the many mentors who had hurriedly arrived saw the group of geniuses Claude had tidied up. The smiles on their faces were instantly replaced by the color of confusion, this, what's the situation? Mentor good. Noticing Lydia not far away, Claude put down the mobile phone in his hand, which was playing a short video, and waved his hand in greeting, Without the slightest hesitation, the group of students behind him immediately bowed down and repeated the greeting loudly. Tutor good. A thick voice that went straight into the clouds, this cry immediately startled the mentors who had arrived, you must know that these geniuses were all existences that stood out from the national examination, were those who were able to stand here not arrogant and proud. In the past, these geniuses wouldn't necessarily have been willing to listen to what their masters had to say, usually, when they wanted to talk to them, they were all indifferent, but now, they were actually so obedient. Looking at Claude, who was respectfully surrounded in the middle, the tutor's eyes were filled with astonishment, he, how did he get those stitches back? Seeing this, Lydia also came over quietly and lowered her voice to ask, how did you manage it? It is very simple, ah, Xiao Xiaoyi, move to reason, as long as the good reason, will always listen to it. Claude just shrugged his shoulders, education is still very simple, children do not listen, what should I do? Just give them a beating. If one beating is not enough, then two. Under the cane, filial sons always come out, if they don't, it means the stick you're using isn't thick enough. Once you have pulled out the wolf's tooth stick, see who dares to push around. Why is Claude so skilled? All you can say is that people who are drenched in the rain always want to rip other people's umbrellas off. 
Hearing this, the group of so-called heavenly pride trembled for fear that one mistake would result in a cane, Lydia looked at the trembling group of geniuses behind her and held her forehead in helplessness, why hadn't she realized before that this bastard could actually talk nonsense with his mouth open? But she didn't really care, even though this group of people were all good seedlings selected one by one during the examination, their hearts were higher than the sky, so it was time to thwart them. At least Claude knew to hold his hand, otherwise, when it came to the real fight, that pride would be enough to kill them, ahem, since everyone is here, I will announce the matters of this training, seeing that everyone was already in place, Zhou Feng, who was in charge of leading the group, coughed lightly and continued to speak, this time, we're going to the Vermilion Bird Mysterious Realm, which is an S-Class difficulty, although most of the Vermilion Bird Mysterious Realm has already been Explored, there are still some unexplored areas that will be marked on the maps that will be handed out later, so make sure you never travel to these unexplored areas. In addition, other countries of the Blue Star Federation will also be taking part in this training, and the teams with excellent results in the final evaluation will receive extremely generous resource rewards. Therefore, in this training exercise, you are not only representing yourselves, but you are also representing Barnes. As soon as these words were uttered, the eyes of the students at the bottom suddenly lit up, originally, they had thought that this was just an ordinary reward-based adventure, unexpectedly, it was actually a competition involving the entire Blue Star Federation. At that age, who didn't dream of building a career? And here was their chance to do just that. The only one who sighed softly was Claude, he finally understood why Lydia had asked him to go on this adventure, obviously, it was to use him as a trump card, since he was able to intervene in the team's personnel changes, it was possible that even the side of the battle god temple had noticed him, anyone else, if they were coveted by those ninth ranked powerhouses in the battle god temple, they would probably be beyond ecstatic, but for Claude, this was not good news, the more glances he attracted, the more likely it was that he himself would be exposed. Whether it was the Berry armor or the Emperor's armor, they were both existences beyond the ninth rank, however, if one could study and understand the secrets, it would be possible for humans to break free from the shackles of the ninth rank and reach a higher level, the reason Barnes hadn't made a move yet was because one of them hadn't found a clue, and the other was afraid of their strength and didn't dare to move lightly, however, once they realized that the one who summoned these two Armors was only a third-level armor master, the outcome would be completely different, even if it wasn't as bad as them being dragged off to be cut up and examined, the possibility of them being sent to a secret base to be well-fed and have their blood taken every day was still very high, even if Claude had wanted to be a salted fish lying flat, it wasn't this kind of lying flat, being used as a guinea pig. But now the arrow was on the string and had to be sent, if he suddenly withdrew at this point, it would be a bit of a no silver, no 2 300 2000 2002 meaning instead, forget it, just take a trip, at this thought, Claude shook his head helplessly, with his previous epiphany, he was now able to perform partial transformations and combine the use of the various surefire techniques of light and shadow armor, even without summoning Barry's armor, he was now able to wield at least the equivalent of 6th rank strength, of course, he was referring to those elite armor masters who had been through hundreds of battles, as for those corrupt mentors who had been beheaded earlier, they were just some watery 6th ranks with no gold content at all, besides, with Lydia, a 9th rank battle spirit, accompanying them, there shouldn't be anything too wrong, as soon as this thought crossed his mind, Claude's heart suddenly felt an ominous warning for no reason. Bad. He himself had just inadvertently raised a flag well, I think everyone should have understood the rules by now, so I will now announce the captain's choice, Zhou Feng glanced at the students below and slowly opened his mouth, Wang Jia, since you are the champion of this national exam, you will be the captain, upon hearing this decision, Wang Jia's face suddenly changed, in the past, he might have even pretended to be a little humble before happily accepting the appointment, but now, Wang Jia's heart was filled with fear, after turning his head stiffly and looking at Claude not far away, he shook his head frantically without the slightest hesitation, no, 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 it can't be me. Just kidding. With that savage god at the helm, how dare he be this captain? Wang Jia had been scared out of his wits by the battle just now. If Claude told him to go east, he wouldn't dare go west. 
making himself the captain now wasn't that pushing him into the fire pit. Wen Jia raised his head and looked at Zhou Feng with resentment in his eyes, why didn't I see it before, this evil old man is very evil, Claude is both civil and military, wise and brave, I am willing to bow down to him, this captaincy is his. At that moment his brain worked fast and a big string of rainbow farts came out of his mouth, that's right. I support Claude. Whoever doesn't make Claude captain, I'll fight with whoever it is. Long live Captain Lin. The other students around him also reacted immediately, in a moment, the slogans echoed across the playground, seeing this scene, Claude couldn't help but feel dazed, he obviously didn't want to draw attention to himself, but what kind of situation was this? This position of captain, whoever wants to be the captain should go ahead. Even Zhou Feng was confused by this mess. Although he had intended to make Claude the captain, given the problem of parachuting and the fear of causing conflict within the team, he decided to give Wang Jia the position first, unexpectedly, it had only been a short time since they had met, and Claude had already won over everyone present. Was that the legendary charisma? At this thought, Zhou Feng could not help but nod in agreement, as a leader, besides strength, cohesion and charisma were also important, obviously, Claude had both, well, since everyone agrees, Claude will be the captain, after nodding, Zhou Feng announced, under the eyes of the crowd, Claude shook his head decisively, I don't have the strength to take on such an important position, so why don't we just follow what was announced at the beginning and let Wang Jia be the captain? It wasn't as if he was deliberately being polite and wanted to take a break, he really did not want to be the captain, it was just that these young freshmen thought that this position was very intrusive, in reality, this so-called captain's position could be said to be of no use whatsoever other than having to deal with a bunch of shit, instead of spending time playing house with these kids. It would be better to have fun and double-cross Evelyn. Claude, the captaincy is yours, Wang Jia had just opened his mouth when Claude glared at him, Wang Jia had just opened his mouth when Claude glared at him. With these words, Wang Jia immediately trembled and no longer dared to make excuses, but could only choose to obediently accept, can it still be like this? Whether it was the students participating in the experience or the mentors present, when they saw this scene, the eyes looking towards Claude were filled with shock. This is still the Wang Jia they know, with a heart higher than the sky, this is not just a licking dog. So how on earth did Claude do it? On the train to the border, Claude leaned back in his seat and couldn't help but think, as the confidentiality level of this training process was the highest, even his past self did not have the authority to extract the relevant information, so even in his new life, he didn't understand exactly what had happened during this adventure, but the strange thing was that, while it was reasonable for this kind of training to be kept secret from the public, the level of secrecy obviously shouldn't be. This high, after all, when the national exam was first held, it had already been announced that the calendar training would be used as one of the rewards. Unless there was some unexpected event that needed to be blocked during this training, but what was it that made Barnes keep it top secret? Thought Claude, but he couldn't come up with a clue, if he remembered correctly, in his previous life, since Lydia was killed in the incident where the white tiger attacked the train, the one who led the team at that time was Zhou Feng, a peak of the seventh rank, although he seemed to be only slightly higher than the sixth order in terms of numbers, in reality, the strength of a seventh order armorer was far from comparable to that of the sixth order, the gap between the sixth and seventh. Orders was as wide as a celestial rift, only those who had reached the seventh rank were qualified to be called high-ranking armor masters, so even if you looked at the entire Blue Star Federation, seventh-ranked armor masters were rare, and each one of them was a character capable of suppressing a group. Not to mention that it was Zhou Feng, an existence that was the pinnacle of the seventh order and had half a foot in the eighth order, at a time when most of the strongest people were scattered across the front line resisting the beast tide, for Barnes to be able to send out a half-step eighth-ranked armor could be said to be taking it extremely seriously, with the previous padding, Claude remembered something strange once again. It seemed that Zhou Feng had never shown his face since the end. Of that adventure, Three years later, the Dean of Wings of Angels Middle School was replaced, since then, there hadn't been any news of him. This was the same situation as Lydia's, and it was clearly abnormal, 
if this is true, it's likely that they both ended up on the same path and were both killed in battle for some unknown reason. Claude's heart leapt at the thought. Although he had fought against the Ninth Order before, he knew very well that those seemingly easy battles had actually been won by relying on the heavenly attributes of the Barry armor, those Ninth Order armor masters at the top of the Blue Star were an existence that most people could only look up to once in a lifetime, and the Seventh and Eighth Order masters of armor were the limit of what many people could achieve, as well as the most advanced fighting force of a country, so what? exactly had happened to make a half-step 8th class armor master unable to resist. Could it be the Vermilion Bird? The first thing Claude associated with it was the four divine beasts of the Beast Tide, the place where the secret realm of experience was located happened to be the territory of the Vermilion Bird, but he soon shook his head. Only those who had personally faced the White Tiger knew how terrifying that power was, if it was the Vermilion Bird that had struck, then it was impossible for any of the people present to have survived, Claude's body suddenly stiffened and he turned his head to scan the area, the other members of the team gathered around him to pass the time, there was a lot of laughter in the carriage, but the faces that seemed to be reflected in his pupils were incomparably unfamiliar at this moment. Those who had returned from the previous life training were indeed this group of people, Although Wang Jia was indeed quite a mess in his own opinion, compared to most people, he was undeniably a genius, logically speaking, it shouldn't be too much of a problem for him to advance to the 7th rank, and even the 9th rank of the War God realm wasn't out of the question. However, in Claude's mind, there was not the slightest memory of him, so those who later returned from their adventures were replaced in the reports, were replaced. That can't be right. There must be something wrong with this expedition. Claude reacted in an instant, during this exploration of the secret realm, there must have been some unforeseen circumstance that led to the presumed fall of Zhou Fong, a half-step eighth-ranked powerhouse, and it was this accident that had caused Barnes to take the risk of replacing the list of participants in a desperate attempt to hide it from the world, so what exactly had happened on this adventure? Even after searching the memories in his brain, he was unable to find any more information about it, if only he had known, he wouldn't have gotten into this mess, even if it was just to sit in a small black room. Looking out of the window at the rapidly passing scenery, Claude couldn't help but sigh. Not far away, the iconic giant tree stood between heaven and earth, being able to see the world tree meant that the train was not far from the front line of the beast tide, it was clearly impossible to leave at this point. Sure enough, the next moment, a voice rang out from the middle of the carriage, the front of the beast tide is about to arrive, this station is the final destination, please disembark in an orderly fashion. It's finally here. My back hurts from sitting here. Tidal wave front, here we come. Seeing the train slowing down, the students in the carriages immediately became excited, at this age, who doesn't dream of a career. And the beast tide front is just the place they dreamed of. You've got something on your mind Evelyn, who was sitting on the side, noticed that Claude didn't seem happy, and after a long hesitation, she opened her mouth to express her concern. It's nothing, Claude, looking into the distance, shook his head gently, it's just that the increasingly familiar scenery outside the window had stirred up memories in his mind that he wanted to forget, the cruelty of the front line of the beast tide, could it not be imagined by these newcomers who had never seen blood? This was never a place to come and gild the lily. Even if you just want to live, you have to do your best, but for these flowers growing in the greenhouses around us, it's probably hard to understand, perhaps only when their comrades personally fell by their side could they understand a little, as the doors slowly opened, a group of people couldn't wait to get off the train, they couldn't hold back the excitement in their hearts eager to witness the legendary beast tide which was incomparably dangerous. However, when they saw the scenery not far away, the anticipation in the eyes of the crowd instantly turned to disinterest. In front of this large gathering place, the look of the border towns is not much different, the hawking sounds are endless, as for the imagined image of the beasts attacking the city, it didn't happen at all, a peaceful scene in the city, it looks like there is no difference to these small towns. I thought there was a lot of danger, but it seems to be just a name in vain. When the training is over, I will kill some beasts and bring them back to show off. Upon hearing these words, the instructors leading the team shook their heads, this kind of mentality was really too worrying, 
if they were allowed to go into battle like this, I'm afraid it wouldn't be long before they were destroyed by the group. Seeing this, Zhou Feng could only cough and speak, although this place is within the front line of the Beast Tide, it is only a rear supply point, and the secret realm we are traveling to is still some distance away, before we set off, let's rest here for the night and stock up on supplies, when we actually enter the area where the alien beasts are, everyone must obey the order, and absolutely no one is allowed to go off on their own without orders. The announcement of these few pieces of news finally rekindled the fervent fire that was about to be extinguished in the hearts of the new students, no wonder there is nothing special here, the original is just a supply point. With their appetites whetted, they were even more eager to leave tomorrow. Only Claude shook his head. He had just checked the map he had been given, it wasn't until then that he realized that even though the Billion Bird Secret Realm wasn't very far from this supply point, many of the places on it were through foreign beast territories that hadn't been conquered yet, such places that hadn't been thoroughly explored were extremely dangerous areas at the forefront of a beast flood. It was even more dangerous than the areas that were specifically marked as the most difficult, such as the Divine. Beast Habitats this was because at least no one would go so far as to die to challenge the four divine beasts, however, these uncharted places were very likely to hide other dangerous existences. If you were lucky, you might just run into a group of beasts and escape death after killing a few of them, but if you ran into the four divine beasts, who happened to be out for a walk after eating their fill, you could only have one last fight before dying, at the very least, it would allow them to tighten their flesh a bit, these were not alarmist words, as the front line of the entire Blue Stars battle against the Beast Tide, how could they still be as childish as playing house? If one wanted to cross the Beast's territory successfully, one had to be well prepared, as a being who had once fought on the front lines for a long time, Claude was sure that even these mentors accompanying the team were afraid that they didn't have as much experience as he did, not to mention the students behind him who thought they were on holiday. If at first he had thought that this was just a government-funded excursion, now the possibility of such a thing was completely ruled out, what kind of an excursion was it to go through a dangerous place at the level of an undeveloped area? You see, those in this group are the so-called prides of heaven, the future hopes of Barnes, no matter how you look at it, they shouldn't be exposed to such danger. Claude was now a little confused by the thoughts of Barnes' senior management, so far, the whole operation had been too confusing. Suddenly, a figure flashed through his mind, could it be this person? Only he could influence Barnes' decisions. And only he was able to cover it up completely afterwards. Just like when we judged Evelyn's parents as traitors, Claude, now that we're free to go, are we going straight back to the inn? Just as he was deep in thought, Evelyn's voice rang in his ears at the right moment, no. Let's prepare the supplies, Without the slightest hesitation, Claude shook his head, even though Lydia, a war god of the Ninth Order, had joined the team this time because of the butterfly effect, I'm afraid that even she was unaware of the inner workings of the situation, if the truth was as he thought, then the only person he could really rely on was himself. Supplies It wasn't something that would be sent tomorrow hearing this, Evelyn couldn't help but be a little confused, just now, when Zhou Feng had announced the regulations, he had specifically mentioned that the supplies would be distributed afterwards, since they were already available, why would they bother to prepare them on purpose? Claude just shook his head in response, he knew very well that the supplies prepared by the officials were probably just the same old stuff, standardized, in the face of an ordinary beast attack, these things would of course be effective. But as soon as they faced a crisis like a small beast flood, it would be better to rely on these things alone or to dig a hole and bury themselves before it was too late, at least they can leave behind a whole body, masters of armor who have actually fought on the front lines of the beast tide have their own unique techniques for saving their lives, and Claude is no different, after passing through several crowded, large armory shops, a somewhat stained door appeared at the end of the alley. Yikes! Evelyn, who had obediently followed behind her all the way, didn't notice that Claude suddenly stopped in front of her and bumped into his back, unable to stop herself from letting out a soft cry, rubbing her forehead and raising her head, she noticed the somewhat dilapidated doorway in front of her and couldn't help but add a little doubt to her tone, this place is. At the sight of this familiar yet unfamiliar door, Claude's eyes lit up. There are good things here that can save your life. 
Save your life, Evelyn touched her head, her eyes filled with a confused look, this adventure, but there are so many mentors accompanying us, could anything go wrong? Don't put all your hopes in someone else, even if that someone else is me, you must remember that the only person you can trust is yourself, Claude, sensing her inner thoughts, sighed and spoke, above the blue star, it looked as if a fragile balance was still being maintained, but the weak and the strong was the true law, a little white rabbit like Evelyn was afraid that if she really went out alone, she wouldn't be eaten within minutes. The same, of course, applied to the newcomers who had come together this time. So many years of peace had made these flowers in the greenhouse oblivious to the dangers and evils of the world, it was no wonder that during the Beast Tide riot a few years later, people had died and been seriously injured at the beginning of the war, having seen her nod, Claude turned his head to the mottled wall at the end of the alley, then reached out his hand and tapped it rhythmically a few times, immediately. Under Evelyn's astonished gaze, the originally dangerous wall, which seemed to reach out at the slightest touch, burst into reorganization, revealing a portal to the inside, this was, Evelyn was stunned, unless there was some mistake, this wall had to have something to do with space technology, and a battle spirit that had mastered spatial abilities was a very rare existence in the entire battle spirit group. In the future, unless the master of armor it was contracted with died young, it would inevitably be able to rely on the special nature of its spatial ability to become a character that suppressed a group, but how could a great man of that level stoop to such a small place? And since this wall was the real passageway, why had a gate been deliberately built next to it? Claude, who was standing to the side, also felt her stomach growling with questions, this gate was just a barrier, otherwise, this man with his unpredictable spatial abilities would be afraid of the threshold being broken by the group of people who came to his door to ask for him, I'll go in later, you wait outside for a while, hearing this, Evelyn nodded, although she was also curious about what exactly lay behind the portal, since Claude hadn't allowed himself to follow, there must be a reason for it. As she watched the familiar figure disappear through the door, Evelyn always felt something strange in her heart, Claude was supposed to be the same as her, it was only right that he hadn't even come to the front of the beast tide before his awakening, just like the portal in front of her, she didn't need to think about it to know that he should be a very hidden existence, yet he seemed to know the code word to enter in advance, and managed to do so with ease, but why, he would be so familiar. With this place, Claude, who had already taken a step into the portal, was of course unaware of their inner thoughts, at that moment, he was forced to endure the feeling of celestial rotation that came over him, as one of the two major laws on the same level as time, the spatial ability was not as magical as many people thought, although it could be used well, it also had several shortcomings. Only an existence at the level of the emperor's armor would be able to master the ability to shift. Without the slightest side effect. After an unknown amount of time, Claude finally felt his feet touch the ground, in contrast to the narrow alley outside, what was now in her vision was a huge, deep palace, at the same time, a doubtful female voice sounded from somewhere, this guest, is this his first time here? It should be considered a first time, Claude thought and then nodded, even though he had been a regular customer of this shop in his previous life, it was indeed his first time in this life in order to successfully find his way here for the first time, could it be that the customer was introduced by someone? Seeing him nod his head, the tinge of doubt in that woman's voice became even more pronounced, at the same time, an overwhelming pressure of the seventh rank was quickly suppressed from the surroundings, don't worry, no one leaked the news. Okay, floating smoke, don't hide, I know it's you, come out and greet the guests seeing this, Claude didn't bother to continue playing tug-of-war with her, what? With a cry of surprise, the room not far away suddenly distorted, the next moment, a shapely figure quickly stepped out of the void, you, how do you know my identity? Floating Smoke's voice was filled with eagerness as she looked at the unfamiliar face in front of her, to avoid being followed, she had changed her name incognito and hid at the border of the most dangerous beast tide, not only that, she had also deliberately consumed half of her own origin to construct a special room to hide in, but this person in front of me actually revealed his identity right away. Don't be nervous, no one knows but me, seeing that she was still as shy as in her previous life, the corner of Claude's mouth twitched slightly, don't look at the one standing opposite you, she seems to be a long-legged imperial lady in black silk. 
In his heart, however, he knew that what he was seeing was not a human, but a transformed fey beast, much like the battle spirit, there were all sorts of special existences among the fey beasts, the heaven-swallowing beast was one of them, as a being born with an extremely strong affinity for the power of space, this type of beast was at least a seventh-class being if it could survive to adulthood, however. Along with such a powerful talent came misfortune, when a sky-devouring beast was born. It would have a space core in its body, as long as it could be swallowed, no matter what species it was, it would be able to inherit this heaven-swallowing spatial power, therefore, regardless of whether it was an alien beast or a human, heaven-swallowing beasts were naturally the highest priority targets to hunt, and floating smoke was one of them. The reason Claude was able to find this alien room in his previous life was also purely coincidental, back then, under the onslaught of the beast tide, the temporary direction he'd established didn't last long before it quickly collapsed, as for himself, he had accidentally entered the floating smoke's territory while injured, upon learning that the other party was a heaven-swallowing beast. Claude's first reaction was that he was also dead, even though he was also a seventh-ranked armor. Master, he had no chance of winning against the last fey beast of the same realm, which was still in its peak state, but he soon realized that the situation wasn't so bad, the heaven-swallowing beast in front of him appeared to be mature, but in reality it was just a disguise made to hide the eyes of humans, its true realm was only the fifth rank, but it was still a young beast. If it were any other beast, Claude could have killed it with her hands, but the heaven-swallowing beast was truly rare, most importantly, in the midst of the beast tide, the gentle heaven-swallowing beast was one of the very few beasts that had never attacked a human, moreover, if he killed it, he might not be able to leave this special place, all these reasons added up. And it was this that finally made him curb his desire to seize the space core in the floating smoke, and it was a decision. That made Claude incredibly grateful later on, you, how do you know my identity? Seeing Claude's silence, Floating Smoke's tone finally became alarmed, could it be that he had been discovered after hiding for so long, but usually only a few of his own kind would come? Where had the news finally slipped out? Just as she was about to give up hope, she suddenly noticed that something was wrong, the aura emanating from this human seemed to be only third rank. She was a fifth level fey beast. Even if she wasn't good at fighting, she should be able to scare people away with her aura alone. This human, trespassing on this lord's territory, you know what the consequences are, the floating smoke that was at the bottom of the barrel immediately boosted her courage, even her voice was filled with ice, this is her true form, without waiting for the floating smoke to react, she noticed that the figure in front of her suddenly disappeared, even the red carpet on the floor had hardened and turned a dark red. There was also an intimate sense of familiarity. He had no choice but to poke at the floating smoke on his leg and said helplessly, that clear female voice came out of nowhere, in his previous life, when he first met her, it seemed to be the same scene, it was hard to believe that she only knew this trick of the foxes, but just as Evelyn was about to get up quickly and look for Claude's trail, the scene in front of her made her freeze, looking up, she saw a long, red, flaming blade coming towards her, with no combat experience, all she could. Do was instinctively shield her eyes with her hands, she reacted in an instant, could Claude be in danger? I think so. This scene really made Evelyn feel as if her brain wasn't quite enough. Claude could only express his speechlessness, suddenly a terrible thought flashed through her mind, it turned out that it had already come a long time ago, seeing her like this, Claude's heart somehow recoiled with a few touches, without the slightest hesitation, Evelyn lifted her foot and stepped inside, not far away, Claude, whom she had just worried about, was actually holding a voluptuous imperial sister on his lap and spanking her. It was for this reason that Floating Smoke finally dared to pose for Claude again, in an instant, the flaming long blade quickly coalesced, obviously, she had told her before that she should not trust anyone, but in the face of a scene like this, which 99% of people would misunderstand, she actually believed it, after shaking his head, Claude slowly lowered his head, his voice finally dropping, besides, even if you're going to be scary, at least act like it. Emotions, of course, were no exception, the next moment, the flaming long knife slashed down hard, I'm telling you for the last time, change back. As he spoke, Claude once again nudged the floating smoke on his leg as it tried to escape, 
when I say that this is a fey beast, do you believe that, unlike those fey beasts and humans who only think about the space core in their bodies, what he has released seems to be a nostalgic feeling that only comes from not seeing each other for a long time. Though he could not recall ever having crossed paths with this human, it is certain that what he held from beginning to end was goodwill, with an endless feeling of celestial rotation, she finally felt herself back on the ground after an unknown amount of time, well, at least the legs aren't shaking Ah, looking at the slender, slightly shivering figure on the other side of the street, Claude sighed slightly. It was as if he had known her for a long time, just as floating smoke was confused, he suddenly felt his body being held in a horizontal embrace, in his place, a cat-like creature with a snow-white body strolled in, soon, the same portal as before reappeared with a blur of wall tiles, the tears dripping from the corners of her eyes fell to the ground like pearls on a broken string. The only one who can use the power of the battle spirit is the master of armor, and this scene is so familiar to me that I don't know if it's because I've been imbued with the power of the battle spirit, I don't know what kind of strange ideas have been implanted, obviously still in the juvenile stage, the time of transformation must be in the mature stage as a white light flashed, the hot figure of the imperial sister suddenly lost sight of him. He can no longer tell the difference, the floating smoke at the end is too natural because it has not been exposed to the outside world for too long, or it is originally black inside. Switch back quickly, when he lifted the floating smoke from under his feet, Claude couldn't help but get a black line on his face, as a heaven-swallowing beast everything was food for their clan, could it be that Claude's journey was to find them? No wonder, even with such a complicated way to enter, he knew everything, seeing this scene, a flash of surprise flashed across Evelyn's eyes, what? You finally couldn't suppress your inner desire to lay your hands on me, a weak, helpless and adorable cub. At that moment, floating smoke's mind went blank, what is this situation? I am happy to do it, what do you care? At these words, Claude's face darkened even more, a cold sweat broke out on her back at the thought, and she hurriedly pounded the wall in front of her in the order she remembered. Without pausing, Evelyn nodded decisively, at the same time, the deliberately created feeling of intimidating pressure struck again, immediately afterwards, a clear tapping sound echoed throughout the palace and at the same time, Evelyn, who had been waiting outside in boredom, suddenly felt a force being drawn from within her body, she had already sensed that there was no malice in Claude's heart when the flaming long sword disappeared. Strangely, the imagined pain did not come, hearing this. Floating smoke, who had originally been holding back her tears, finally stopped crying at that moment, the more this damn thing is described, the darker it gets. If this goes on, he really will be treated as a perverted jitterbug. On the contrary, it was Evelyn who sensed the wrongness of the words. Floating smoke, who was still dropping her little beads, finally wiped her eyes and began to transform back into her beast body with a small mouth, young beast. What young beast? But when he looked at floating smoke, who was sitting on his lap, he suddenly discovered a sad fact, he couldn't explain it himself. Anyone else watching this is a real pervert, ah. Feeling the increasingly outrageous thoughts inside her, Claude was so stunned that he didn't even care about the spanking and hurriedly tried to explain, although she had heard that some powerful beasts could transform into human form, this was the first time she had seen it with her own eyes. What were you thinking? Even though the one in front of her was a cute and cuddly cat, Evelyn was surprised to see an anthropomorphic expression on her face, by the way, damn human, you still haven't told me how exactly you found where I was hiding. At these words, Evelyn also raised her head, she, too, was curious how Claude had found this hiding place, Claude didn't really have a good answer to this question, he couldn't honestly say that he had traveled back from the future and therefore knew some secrets that ordinary people didn't know, could he? Nonsense, even he didn't believe it, unfortunately, it happens to be true, if I remember correctly, you heaven-swallowing beasts automatically condense a space crystal every year, right? It's useless to keep it in your hands anyway, so why don't you make me an offer? Even though Claude knew that this topic had taken a very rough turn, he was sure that he would be able to divert Floating Smoke's attention. 
From a certain perspective, space crystals were a kind of weakened version, similar to space cores, as long as the heaven-swallowing beast species was able to produce one every year, this weakening was not a weakening in terms of effect, as long as one possessed a space crystal, one could basically temporarily use most of the spatial abilities of a heaven-swallowing beast, this included, but was not limited to, very practical abilities such as spatial transference, spatial rearrangement, and spatial expansion, among them, the most useful was the divine level life-preserving spatial transfer skill, all one had to do was place an anchor point in one place, and after that, no matter where they were, they could be transported back to the place where the anchor point had been placed, despite the fact that the shift possessed by the emperor's armor was more convenient to use compared to this low-level spatial law, there was a problem. The last summoning relied on the energy supply of the white tiger origin. But treasures like this level were in existence that could not be found, apart from the conventional means of honestly unlocking the five layers of seals, Claude didn't know how to summon the Emperor's armor again, for the time being, the space crystal was one of the best life-preserving items, knowing that something was definitely wrong with this adventure, he started making preparations right away, at least if they encountered danger, they could ensure that he and Evelyn would be able to Retreat in one piece, of course, simply running away was also one of the solutions, but running away at the edge of danger always made Claude a little resistant, besides, this might be his only chance to enter the Fey territory for the next few years to get the Vermilion Bird's Feather and unlock the fourth layer of seals, and he didn't want to waste it, that was why he had come here specifically to look for the Heaven Swallowing Beast, to exchange a few space crystals as a base map for his Retreat Space crystals? No way. Unsurprisingly for Claude, Floating Smoke shook her head as soon as she heard this, although this thing was usually of little use to her, it was an item similar to a food reserve, however, if she was injured or her spiritual energy was depleted, she could choose to eat the space crystal and recover quickly, how could she casually give away something that could potentially save her life in an emergency? Even if this human exuded an inexplicable good feeling, it wouldn't be enough. TSK being rejected so dryly, Claude couldn't help but smack his lips, in his previous life, the space crystal had been given to him by floating smoke on his own initiative after they had gotten to know each other, but now, the relationship between the two was still in a strange state, the goodwill had not yet increased, it seemed that it was indeed difficult to ask for it, after a moment's thought. Claude felt that the only way was to exchange it for something. If he remembered correctly, floating smoke was still in its infancy, and its spiritual energy requirements were extremely high, however, this special space was cut off from the blue star, so spiritual energy was extremely scarce, since this was the case, it would need items to replenish its spiritual energy, at this thought, Claude's eyes lit up, this thing, it seemed like he had it himself. The two potions Lydia had given herself back then were still in good condition, except for the one Evelyn had used, as a high-quality potion produced by the Barnes War God Temple, its effect was of course undeniable, when he reached into the storage device, the potion instantly appeared in his hands, I'll take this in exchange for you, how? In this thing, there is a lot of spiritual energy in there. After taking a sniff, floating smoke immediately made a judgment, the spiritual energy contained in this tube of green liquid far exceeded the space crystals he had produced. There would be no loss. Without the slightest hesitation, she took the potion and shook her body, the next moment, a large pile of transparent crystals fell out of the snow-white fluff, which one do you want? Pointing to the pile of diamond-like crystals in front of her, floating smoke opened her mouth and asked, at the same time, she deliberately stretched out her claws and quietly scooped up some space crystals with particularly good shapes, they were her treasures, and she couldn't just give them away, only children make choices, adults I want them all. When floating smoke didn't react, Claude grabbed a handful of space crystals and quickly stuffed them into his pocket, floating smoke, who had never experienced the dangers of society, had never seen this kind of person who did not follow the rules, and stayed in place with a confused face. It wasn't until she saw Claude trying to reach out again that she reacted, hastily stretching out her claws and squeezing the restless hand to death, who let you take so much. You must know that space crystals could only produce one a year, 
even if the heaven-swallowing beast had a long lifespan, it wouldn't be anything outrageous, at most two or three hundred years, in other words, it would only be able to condense more than two hundred space crystals at the most after spending its entire life, not to mention that it hadn't been that long since she was born. The five space crystals that Claude had just rolled away were a third of her savings. Damn human. You can't bear to treat a weak, helpless and cute young animal like this floating smoke raised her head, her eyes filled with grief and anger. Don't act, the spiritual power in this potion was at least five times that of a space crystal, Claude, who had been in this world many times before, could tell at a glance that she was acting, however, after shaking his head, he pulled out another magic spirit stone and placed it on the table, this crystal also contains some spiritual energy, so I'll give it to you as a supplement. If you trade with me, I won't let you earn a cent, but I won't let you suffer either. With her claws resting on the demon spirit stone, Floating Smoke's original expression of sadness and anger was instantly replaced by surprise, she could sense that the spiritual energy in this diamond-shaped crystal was only slightly more than her own space crystal. In that case, she really hadn't lost anything, apparently, there was even a small gain. Deal. Anyone who backs out is a puppy. Fearing that Claude might back out, Floating Smoke didn't hesitate for a second and swallowed the magic spirit stone and spiritual power potion in one gulp. Only what is in your stomach is safe. By the way, I have something else to ask you, after setting up the five space crystals to anchor the teleportation, Claude raised his head again, his eyes filled with seriousness, Vermilion Bird sighed, what is the latest movement? Hearing this question, Floating Smoke's face was filled with speechlessness, even though he himself looks weak, pitiful, helpless, and cute, he is still a foreign beast, no matter how you say it, you will not casually betray your clansmen. Those were his own beloved family and friends, brothers and sisters, ah. The next thing he knew, another magic spirit stone was handed to him. All I know is that the vermilion bird seems to have left the area recently, and it is said that there is something important there, but what exactly I do not know. Without the slightest hesitation, Floating Smoke decided to sell his mate, however, the heaven-swallowing beast clan is not only hunted by humans, but also coveted by other beasts, making survival very difficult, if it weren't for that, there would be no need to hide in this place, to be precise, she didn't seem to be considered a team member. With that in mind, she had even less to think about, important things. Claude couldn't help frowning, the scope of this was just too big and the clues too. General to really judge the details, but there was no way to force it, after all, it was already not easy enough for floating smoke to get news from the outside world after being in this almost isolated room for so long. All right, all right, if there's nothing else, hurry up and get out of here, this beast is preparing to make a breakthrough, don't come and disturb me. Having sensed Claude's inner feelings, Floating Smoke jumped down from his lap in a flash, sharpening its claws before issuing an expulsion order, since you said that, I'll definitely come back later, you. Hearing these words, Floating Smoke couldn't help but choke for a moment, by the time she reacted, the silhouettes of the two had already disappeared, even if she hadn't said anything, Claude had no intention of staying any longer, the flow rate in this particular room was not the same as in the outside world, even though the difference wasn't that big, if they calculated it for the time they'd been here, it would be almost dawn on the outside. The team would have to gather and leave soon, so there was really no time to stay any longer, of course, that didn't mean he wouldn't come back in the future, Apart from the fact that the focus was on a handful of rebels, there was another reason, in his previous life, there had been a number of times when he had found himself in a crisis, and Claude had chosen to enter this particular room to escape the danger. It could be said that if it weren't for the existence of floating smoke, he was afraid that he wouldn't have had the chance to become a 7th rank armorer, and Claude also knew very well that her greatest wish was to leave this place and return to the Blue Star, but with his current strength, he could not do that yet, the space core inside the Sky Swallow was a treasure among treasures, even for a Ninth Order armor. Once it was exposed, the pursuit would be endless, even though he had already entered the realm of the Seventh Class in his previous life, Claude still didn't dare to take floating smoke out of here, to the end, he was unable to repay the favor, this life was different, Claude was sure that he would be able to become the future figure standing at the top of the Blue Star, when that time came, he would repay the favor he owed. 
Just as the thoughts in his mind were in turmoil, the familiar feeling of the celestial rotation returned, when he opened his eyes again, he was already back in the original alley, this is also too magical, looking at the still plain wall in front of her, Evelyn's eyes were filled with astonishment, only after experiencing it personally could one understand the magnificence of this spatial ability. And it seemed that this was only a low-level use of the power of space, this made them even more curious about the full power of the Emperor's armor once all the seals were broken. It should be about time, let's go ahead and gather, looking at the time, Claude realized that her prediction hadn't been wrong, after using the little time left to buy some common survival supplies, the two of them retraced their steps back to the rendezvous point, like them, the rest of the group had large bags in their hands and were stuffing them into their storage containers, but when Claude looked at them, he realized that what they were holding were not the supplies they would need next, but boxes of beautifully packaged special products. Claude could only shake his head helplessly at the sight, he'd thought this group of freshers would be enlightened, but he hadn't expected them to be flowers in a greenhouse. We couldn't count on them in the next training session and it would be good if they didn't drag their feet, in the end, we had to rely on ourselves, remember, no one is allowed to leave the group without permission, and offenders will be brought back and dealt with. If there are special circumstances, you must have a mentor with you, and you must not leave alone. There are alarms in the supplies you have been given, so if you see a dangerous situation, report it immediately. Standing in front of the group, Zhou Feng loudly announced the regulations, even though it had been many years since he came to the front line of the Beast Tide, as an existence that had personally fought against the alien beasts, he was well aware of the terror here. Especially since each and every one of these children of heaven's pride still had a heart higher than the heavens, and if they weren't restrained first, God knows what they could stir up. Understood, understood, scattered replies rang out, though their lips were full of promise, the hearts of these freshmen were still unimpressed, in the legendary stories that circulated in the Blue Star, it was not always the master of armor who struck a great blow and defeated the beasts, it seemed that there was nothing to be afraid of from the beasts, they were just more numerous, in their eyes, the beasts were just a bunch of lambs to be slaughtered, as for the deeds of these legendary heroes, I'll do it. They couldn't wait to see what heroic deeds they would perform after killing the beasts. They weren't the only ones who didn't care, the mentors who accompanied them didn't care either. The routes for this journey had all been mapped out beforehand, and the fey beasts had been consulted beforehand, so theoretically there wouldn't be any danger, therefore, as long as this group of students were sent to the designated location, they could happily return themselves to collect their generous field grants, this kind of good thing should come more often in the future. Claude couldn't help but sigh as he felt the gullible mentality permeating the team, the rear had only been at peace for a short time and had already forgotten the terrible feeling of oppression caused by the alien beasts that had descended on Blue Star. no wonder, then, that the human race would have been taken by surprise when the beast flood suddenly ravaged the previous world. If it weren't for the fact that these frontline armor masters, who were always in a state of battle, hadn't let their guard down, I'm afraid the entire history of mankind would have been erased in the long river of time, seeing that everyone had finished placing their supplies, Zhou Feng spoke again. All right, since everyone is almost ready, I announce that this drill will officially begin. Everyone, depart. This is the place that originally belonged to us after leaving the territory of the Fey Beasts, when she saw the clusters of abandoned skyscrapers not far away that were overgrown with vines, Evelyn suddenly had a feeling of time intertwining, if it weren't for the roar of the alien beasts that echoed around us from time to time, this sense of dissonance, where nature and technology intertwined, was indeed quite shocking. They weren't the only ones who couldn't help but marvel, some of them even took out their cameras to take pictures everywhere, as if they were schoolchildren on a field trip, no need to be surprised, just get used to it, after sensing Evelyn's inner feelings, Claude came over and said quietly. This kind of scenery is really quite unique when you see it once in a while, and is even called art by some people in the central area who are too busy to do anything else, the first time he had been here, he had been amazed, with her long-held doubts resolved, she felt much better, Noticing the astonished group of people behind her, Claude casually explained, using her psychic power to evaporate the blood that had stained the fiery blade, this group of carefully selected geniuses, it is hard to believe that they are all idiots, no wonder, 
in his previous life, the top management of Barnes had always lamented the lack of successors of the next generation they had cultivated, every blade of grass, tree, flower and insect around them could be one of the alien beasts, in that case, all of Claude's unpredictable actions could be explained. This group of flowers, grown in a greenhouse, would be strange if each one could stand on its own, while Evelyn, following closely, glanced in surprise at the back of the person walking in front of her, if she remembered correctly, the battle spirit the student who had just warned her was supposed to be a dolphin with the special ability of echolocation, for that reason, its hearing system was abnormally developed, this, it's too scary. The falling leaves were still slowly fading, but after a long time even the most beautiful things would get boring, the next moment, bright red blood spurted from the moorings, startling the surrounding students, hearing this, Claude stopped in his tracks. Evelyn was good at everything, but she just liked brainstorming too much, the reason Claude opened his mouth to remind him was because he didn't want to see such a powerful scene as a group of people running naked into the secret realm, after signing the contract with Battle Spirit, Master of Armor and Battle Spirit were one heart and one soul, I should have known to bring more clothes, if I'd let my guard down just a little, I probably wouldn't have even known how I died, but when Claude looked around, she didn't find anything strange, but she didn't expect to be right with her first guess, he suddenly realized that something was wrong. Anyone who wasn't deliberately putting up defenses could sense what was going on in the other person's mind, the devil vine, an inferior beast that disguised itself as a vine to ambush passing prey and secreted sap that could dissolve clothing, would be wary of passing by, therefore, before discovering the characteristics of its sap. The front line of the beast tide can often see a lot of bare buttocks covering the face of the naked master of armor, and behind summing up this point is the blood and tears of countless people, the reason I had to deliberately open my mouth to remind you was not because the devil vine had such a strong fighting power, but mainly because the kind of blood-like juice it secreted was quite special, most importantly, underneath this seemingly peaceful environment, there were crises everywhere, but that was also a good thing. Now that the entire forest was like this, there was only one explanation, you're right. The gift I possess does have a partially precognitive effect, plants could actually bleed. This was something they had never heard of before, not to mention that the ones in front of them were still homelands that had yet to be recovered, although it didn't have much effect on the human body, it had a very good dissolving effect on clothing, this was also the reason why they didn't have any spare clothes to change into, apart from the basic ones since even he had sensed that something was wrong, it meant that something had definitely appeared around them. The previous maneuvers had been a bit too obvious, and if it hadn't been for her brainstorming, she wouldn't have thought that she could even use the talent of precognition as an excuse to muddle through. And from the sound of it, it seemed quite justified. No wonder. The speed at which the leaves were falling from the surrounding trees seemed to be quite a bit faster than normal, if it was just one tree, it could still be explained as an individual difference, listen guys, is there something moving? Fuck me. There really is some kind of weird beast. Although the process was a bit dramatic, at least the result was good, solving a loophole that had not been dealt with before, while it was out in the world, the ratings were all definitely S-rated upwards. After all, who would have thought that there was such a strange fey beast in the world? This had only just reached the edge of Fey Beast territory, so it wouldn't get any more perverse further in, would it? And that was where the Devil Vine got its name, the effect of each ability was an existence that could be called heavenly, seeing that she was completely convinced, Claude breathed a sigh of relief, but Claude's operation seemed to have a clear plan for every step, as if he knew what would happen in the future, could it be that he also possessed an unforeseen effect among his awakened talents? Just as she was wondering, she noticed that Claude suddenly turned around and nodded with a serious face, since the devil's vine was extremely widespread, it was basically everywhere in Fey territory. Claude shook his head helplessly as he heard the sounds of remorse echoing around them, after such an explanation, the faces of the newcomers in the group suddenly changed as they huddled together and watched their surroundings closely, Fey such as the devil's vine, which were simply disgusting but not dangerous, were not among them, of course, after receiving the answer, Evelyn suddenly came to a realization. The most important thing was that this excuse was not a one-off, for expeditions like 
This interfaith territory, the most basic thing to do was to prepare a supply of food and medicine in advance, if anyone else questioned it later, this excuse would get them through, as he huffed and puffed, Claude casually chopped off a green vine at his side. The Fey Atlas she held in her hands were basically powerful races, although she had thought to prepare her food in advance, it was just in case, as she remembered, Claude had already awakened two SSS rank talents, Claude, synchronizing her inner thoughts, had helplessness in his eyes at the moment, one had to know that, but any precognition type talent was an ability that could be classified as a time attribute category. But now, there was actually another precognition type talent. External forces were interfering. At this thought, a terrifying thought suddenly flashed through Claude's mind, could it be underground? As it turned out, Claude wasn't wrong, if it wasn't an accident, it was going to be. Sure enough, the next moment the earth shook, if it was just an earthquake, it wasn't really dangerous, at most it would shake twice, the descent of the alien beasts had also changed the structure of the earth's crust on Blue Star, and small earthquakes were a common occurrence, but the most damaging thing was that a crack, visible to the naked eye, suddenly appeared on the originally solid ground and spread out into the surrounding area at an extremely high speed, bad. The moment he noticed those cracks, Claude's heart was instantly terrified, among the alien beasts, there were many races that lived underground. In order to expand their living space, these races would usually erode the underground part of an entire area, in normal times, this state would still be in a delicate balance, and of course, there would be no problems, however, as soon as an earthquake struck, the ground, which was already extremely fragile, would instantly collapse, and that was exactly what was happening. Claude, feeling that the ground was already starting to give way under his feet, wanted only to greet those who had prepared the route, hadn't he said that he had surveyed the underground shells before, that it wasn't an uncommon situation, as long as he scanned it with a little equipment, he would be able to tell immediately that something was wrong, so why would such an obvious problem go undetected? But this was obviously not the time to start assigning blame. The most important thing was to save his life first. After all, no one knew how deep this empty shell went. Without the slightest hesitation, he quickly grabbed Evelyn's arm at the side, with a flash of earth-yellow light, Claude's entire body was instantly covered in yellow armor, in this situation, the earth tiger's armor was clearly the best choice, fortunately, this race didn't seem to have dug very deep under the ground, and the falling process didn't take long, and after feeling the solid ground around him, Claude braced himself and slowly stood up, unable to hold back a few coughs, falling. From a high place without a cushion was, of course, impossible to escape and scathed, even though the Earth Tiger's armor had absorbed most of the damage, the remaining part of the impact still made him feel a bit uncomfortable. Even the most powerful armor needed an excellent driver, after slowing down a little, Claude took in his surroundings, despite being underground, the rays of sunlight shining down from the collapsed area above could barely illuminate the surroundings, if it had been these inexperienced armorers, they would have grabbed this one source of light and hurried forward to explore. But Claude knew deep down that this level of light was far from enough, in his previous life, he had spent so many Years battling beast tides, and of course he hadn't had to deal with these underground races, most of the beasts living underground were born with the gift of camouflage, and were extremely adept at blending into their surroundings, by relying on this innate talent, they were able to successfully sneak into the underground, of course, there is no such thing as a perfect creature. With such glaring advantages, the disadvantages must be obvious, Due to the age of living underground, these creatures are simply unable to see in the light, to put it simply, as long as there was light, this was simply a group of blind people, being familiar with their habits, Claude naturally made early preparations, with a flick of the wrist, a super powerful searchlight appeared in his hand. At the same time as he pressed the switch, the cave, which was originally pitch black, was instantly bathed in a blinding beam of light, the quality was quite good, Looking at the brightly lit road ahead, Claude nodded his head in satisfaction, there was a reason why it was expensive. Compared to those portable torches with their pitifully small light, this thing is just bull. However, after observing his surroundings for a while, he could not help but get a bit of a headache, this grotto was, to put it nicely, all around, in reality, it was nothing more than a disgusting labyrinth. When these underground creatures dug holes, 
they did not plan ahead like humans, they just dug wherever they came up with, so even they don't know what they've dug up, for these creatures, digging holes was just an instinctive reaction to expand their survival area, but it also avoided a situation, as long as you were willing to make the effort, you could still have a place to live. At least you wouldn't spend half a day digging and end up with nothing more than a half-collapsed cave, where would you find an exit? This was not good news for Claude, the more complicated the cave was, the harder it would be to get out, forget it, let's find someone first Claude held his forehead and made a quick decision, unless there had been an accident, not a single member of their team, including the accompanying mentors, should have escaped this cave in, since that was the case, it was still necessary to get the people together first. These underground creatures were best at fighting from ambush, if they fought alone. They would be broken one by one, fortunately, in this earth element rich environment, the power that the earth tiger armor could exert was much stronger than under normal circumstances. The next moment, an earth yellow halo flashed over the armor, in the blink of an eye, Claude felt the dark wounds that had just appeared on his body from the impact of the fall fade away and a flash of surprise flashed through his eyes, originally, he still needed to rely on the earth elemental drawing from the magic spirit stone as an intermediary to transform the power of the earth into spiritual power, but now, there was absolutely no need for that intermediary step. What the earth tiger armor possessed, this ability to constantly draw power from the earth, was simply a divine skill tailor-made for this situation at this moment. Under the increase of the earth's power, he even felt that his realm had temporarily increased quite a bit, after casually killing one of the alien beasts that had been strolling along the wall, waiting for an opportunity to sneak in with a claw, the countless pits in front of him gave Claude a bit of a headache. Exploring them one by one was definitely impossible, Judging by the depth of this cave, the subterranean beasts had survived here for at least a few decades, turning this place into an underground kingdom, I'm afraid that if you really searched through it one by one, you wouldn't be able to find the exit until you died, of course. Using a space crystal to return directly to the anchor point set at the beginning was also a solution, but Claude didn't want to run away until it was absolutely necessary, first of all, regardless of that group of flowers in the greenhouse, at least Lydia, who accompanied the team, was here, he didn't want to lose his teacher before he even started school, just as he was getting worried, the low roar of a strange beast suddenly came from one of the corridors in front of him, hearing this, Claude's eyes immediately lit up, the habits of these strange beasts that live underground are usually day and night, they should be asleep by now, the low roar they just heard was definitely not a dream, that means, someone must have woken them up, holy shit, what kind of monster is that? Inside a cave, Wang Jia looked at the iron-gray, stone-like creature in front of him and was filled with confusion, originally, he thought he was lucky, when the ground collapsed, he accidentally fell into an underground lake and was not seriously injured, but Wang Jia soon realized that he was very wrong, this underground lake had indeed protected him from a lot of damage, but at the same time there was a problem. The survival of any living creature required water as its foundation, in a situation like the underground, where water resources were scarce, a large underground lake like this was bound to be a gathering place for foreign beasts. Sure enough, the moment he stood up, he noticed that countless red lights had suddenly appeared from the originally dark shadows around him. In an instant, Wang Jia reacted, this was definitely the light reflected from the pupils of the alien beasts. Unfortunately, despite his quick reaction, when he tried to escape, he found that his surroundings were already densely packed with foreign beasts, originally, Wang Jia had planned to rely on his own strength to force his way out, but he soon discovered a problem, his own attack, surprisingly, it couldn't break through the defenses. Of course, he was a third-level armor master, but against these low-level foreign beasts, only an all-out attack that consumed a large amount of spiritual energy could barely repel them, most importantly, these stone-like beasts were not listed in the beast atlas that had been sent down, as if they had appeared out of nowhere. Faced with the approaching beasts, Wang Jia had no choice but to once again expend a large amount of spiritual energy to drive them back, although this method might work for a while, it definitely wouldn't last long, he could already feel that after this kind of consumption, he was afraid that the spiritual energy reserves in his body would soon run out, just as Wang Jia was about to despair. A sudden loud noise from behind caught his attention, as he looked up to see the earth-colored armor. 
His eyes couldn't help but flash with surprise, and he hurriedly waved his hand for help, Claude, save me, save me. Claude was in no mood to answer at that moment, he suddenly realized that he was afraid that the situation was even worse than he had imagined, these stone-like creatures might never have been seen by others, but they were incredibly familiar to him, in fact, they were not alien beasts at all. Although there was only a difference of one word, the essence was worlds apart. Fey beasts were the result of the invasion of a beast flood, and were a separate group in their own right, but the appearance of the exotic beasts was completely different, in the armored warrior's worldview, ectoplasmic beasts were born from the assimilation of magic spirit stones into the flora, fauna and special substances of earth, if memory serves, there were supposed to be 15 types of low-level altered beasts. They included mammalian devil horse beasts, devil bull beasts, evil wolf. Beasts, arthropod grasshopper beasts, ant beasts, silkworm beasts, reptilian crocodile beasts, lizard beasts, amphibian toad beasts, and plant-like thorny wood beasts, apricot wood beasts, and lily beasts, and the rock beast in front of him was one of the special low-grade exotic beasts that were formed by assimilating magic spirit stones into rocks. But the problem was that the magic spirit stone had been transformed into an item that was only formed after the battle spirit was downgraded and sealed in this world. Then how was the exotic beast in front of him born? It couldn't have been formed naturally, right? Claude rubbed his temples, feeling a bit confused in his head, the chaotic entry of the exotic beast was something he hadn't thought about, however, the most important thing at the moment was to eliminate them first, otherwise, if they were allowed to return to the surface, it would be a truly terrifying thing, however, there were too many of them, and it was impossible to see the head at a glance. It was clearly an exotic beast transformed from stone, and it was unknown how it had reproduced. So many of them. Looking at the blackened mass in front of him, Claude couldn't help but feel a bit of a headache, although rock beasts were low-level exotic beasts, they specialized in defense and were tough as nails, even among the low-level exotic beasts, their defense was the strongest, even an ordinary fifth-level armor wouldn't necessarily be able to break its defense from the front, Forget it, let's try it first. Earth yellow light surged out, and the earth splitting blade quickly coalesced, without the slightest hesitation, Claude directly used his must kill technique, earth splitting blade. With the infinite power of the earth behind him, he was finally able to experience the feeling of big money. As the earth splitting blade bombarded the ground, countless layers of earth spikes protruded and instantly spread out into the surrounding area. Even if the rock beast's defense was as strong as it was, it would be difficult to resist the earth-splitting slash, which contained the power of the earth, with a single move, the surrounding rock beasts were reduced to rubble tens of meters away, in the middle of the underground cave. A rain of debris immediately fell, at the same time, countless. Miniature purple crystals appeared in the air, clearly magic spirit stones, magic spirit stone, rock beast skills, Black Storm Rock Rocket Black Storm, spits out a black fog containing a large amount of carbon monoxide, causing the enemy to suffer from respiratory distress, Rock Missile, sends out rays of light to giganticize rocks or minerals and manipulate them to attack, status, sealed absorbable this can also form magic spirit stones. After seeing the information on the tablet, Claude's face couldn't help but flash with surprise. Even though dimensional sealing was an SSS rank talent, the requirements for forming a magic spirit stone were still very strict, at the very least, when it came to sealing against the battle spirit, the chances of successfully sealing were not very high, less than a third at best, of course, the higher the realm, the higher the probability of forming a magic spirit stone, however, high level armor masters were rare, and they weren't like leeks that you could cut and grow, therefore, the magic. Spirit stones in their hands were basically used as much as possible, making it difficult to store them, however, these exotic beasts in front of him now had a 100% chance of forming magic spirit stones. This single blow had just sealed off a hundred of them. Although the level of the rock beasts was slightly lower, the spiritual energy content of the formed magic spirit stones wasn't very high, but there was no denying that the quantity was great. As the saying goes, quantity creates quality. As long as the quantity was high enough, the quality problem could always be made up for. Besides, there were times when you were recovering your spiritual energy, 
and you didn't need those high-quality magic spirit stones that didn't move at all, which were 5th or 6th rank, this kind of low-grade magic spirit stone, which was available in large quantities, was more cost-effective for everyday use, looking at the gap that was quickly filling in front of him, Claude's face was filled with excitement, in his eyes. These rock beasts had long since ceased to be mere exotic beasts. Instead, they were a walking magical spirit stone. Looking at the rock beasts being harvested like leeks not far away, Wang Jiaren was stunned, what kind of situation is this? Obviously, his own attacks couldn't even break through the defenses, so why did this exotic beast look more fragile than paper in front of Claude? Could it be that I just happened to run into the boss? As soon as this thought popped into his head, the more Wang Jia thought about it, the more he felt that it was possible. He was at least a third-level armor master, and his contract was an SS-level battle spirit, so he shouldn't be able to break the defenses of this low-level beast, unless he was unlucky enough to run into a boss, Wang Jia raised his head and selected another rock beast, immediately after that, it struck out blatantly, for a moment, claw shadows splashed and sword shadows slashed in the middle of the underground cave. A fluorescent long rope suddenly appeared in his hand, it seemed to be the place of the accident in the previous life, although his own reasoning had been logical and organized so far, for some reason Claude always felt that there was a hint of injury, it was only the rock beasts that were being fought now, I don't know how long it took to kill them, but the last rock beast was finally sealed into a magical spirit stone and stuffed into a repository. This time Wang Jia, who had just been shocked by this scene, finally reacted and his answer was finally normal, although the brushing was great in the beginning, this kind of mechanical movement would always feel boring after a long time, when Claude noticed Wang Jia hiding in the depths of the passage, he finally had a chance to ask a question, if he continued to go down, he would most likely not be able to find an exit to leave, even if he saved someone, but in the end the result didn't seem satisfactory, Although he had fought on the front lines of the beast tide for a long time in the past, he had rarely explored places with extremely high mortality rates like the underground caves, originally, he had thought that the gap between them wasn't that big, otherwise, losing so many seeds at once would inevitably cause barns to suffer a great loss of energy. A serious question arose, the deeper the underground network dug by these alien beasts, the more complex it became, Having said that, he also reached out and pointed to a deep tunnel not far away, this one, a bit of a coincidence. But the most important thing now was to save the humans first, the creature that he himself couldn't break through his defenses with all his might was as fragile as a piece of paper in the eyes of the other party. Claude, who was happily chopping leeks, naturally didn't know that there was a person who had already fallen into emo because of him but the reason why he dared to explore further down in such a situation was also because of the card in his hand, but the reason why he dared to explore further down in such a situation was also because of the card in his hand, but now he finally knew the idea. But now he finally realized how ridiculous that idea was. When he saw the area being cleared, Claude heaved a sigh of relief, hordes of rock beasts had crumbled to rubble under this density of bombardment, scattered all over the cave, this kind of mechanical work always made him feel like he was turning screws in a factory, where are the others? Big brother, begging to be taken flying. Whether it was effective or not was hard to say, at the moment, Claude had a hunch, to go down or not to go down. As long as he worked hard enough, there would always be a day when he could catch up, in the middle of the underground cave, going down was the most taboo thing, however, Wang Jia was still in a state of shock and looked at the figure of Claude in front of him with admiration, hastily opening his mouth, he was lucky and did not encounter any more foreign beasts. Looking at the rope in his hand that was emitting an eerie green light, Wang Jia nodded in disbelief and watched as the figure jumped into the cave, if there really was no way out, then the only thing to do was to wash it, that thing it really could be that difficult. Thinking about it, Wang Jia couldn't help but take in a breath of cool air, if that's really the case, how strong was Claude, the one who chopped him up? Did you see anyone else? I did not, as soon as I fell, I was here and there was no one around, it's safe to assume that this entire team is filled with celestial talent, cutting-edge forces specially trained for the future, with Barnes advanced combat power, if they were to spill their nests, even if they were to face the upper four divine beasts, they would have the strength to fight, at the moment. 
It seemed that only an extremely complicated environment like the underground cave was not suitable for the rescue. Otherwise, there was no need to deliberately hide it, right now, he just wanted to have a good time stealing the demon spirit stones. Then there was only one possibility, there was something on the other side of the passage that interested them more, but before you arrived it seems that some of the alien beasts suddenly swarmed to the other passage, could it be that there are survivors in that passage as well? Having made his decision, Claude reaches out and waves his hand over the storage device, with the Earth's infinite power as a supplement, the Earth-splitting chop and Earth-splitting split, which before could only be used as a big move and which he usually didn't bother to use, were all thrown at the group of rock beasts with brains, space crystals, but if they kept going up, their chances of survival would be much higher, because they were low-level exotic beasts, coupled with the fact that their bodies were rocks without the ability to think, the rock beasts didn't have a high level of intelligence, and they would keep attacking after they had fixed on a target. However, according to Wang Jia, some of the rock beasts actually left in the middle, in his opinion, even if these so-called prides of heaven were still just flowers in a greenhouse, as long as one of them could grow into a dominant flower in the future, it could be considered capable of protecting barns from the wind and rain. The method of tying the rope had also been heard of by other armorers, it was likely that once down, it would be impossible to find a way back up, unlike this tunnel. That had just appeared, the one Wang Jia was pointing to was clearly down, after slipping the end of the rope into Wang Jia's hand, Claude continued, it was good that the effort was not in vain, the thousands of magic spirit stones in the memory device should last for a long time. At this thought, Claude couldn't help but frown, why is this answer so donkeyish? Unable to do anything else, he could only nod and ask again, there's been an accident, Barnes should have done his best to save her, you just stay here and don't move, I'm going to buy some oranges, no, I'm going to find out if there are any other survivors, it's hard to believe that the accident that was covered up by Barnes' top management was here. Looking at his rapidly swelling hands, Wang Jia was confused, where's the promised boss? How did this one become even harder? At this moment, even though his heart refused to believe it, there was only one answer left, hearing this, Claude couldn't help but feel a bit confused. As he tried to absorb this information, Claude couldn't help but feel a little strange in his heart, feeling his feet on the ground again, Claude quickly switched on his searchlight, which was a relief, even though he wanted to save these barns geniuses, there was no way he was going to risk his life here, just as Claude turned to look around, a reflection in the corner caught his attention, when he saw the familiar white shard, Claude's heart stopped, it seemed to be, is that Lydia's armor? The surprise lasted only a moment, soon Claude realized that something was wrong, for this group of hothouse flowers with no real combat experience, the rock beasts, whose defenses were specialized, were indeed extremely tricky beings, but Lydia was different, her ninth rank realm alone was enough to make her fearless against the vast majority of creatures on the blue planet. Even if the defenses of the rock beasts had become more specialized, they were still only of the third or fourth rank, as far as Lydia was concerned, these specialized beasts couldn't even be considered as chopping vegetables, at best they could be considered as tofu that could be squashed with a gentle squeeze, logically, these rock beasts shouldn't be able to hurt her, however. The piece of white armor scattered in the corner was surely dropped by her, unlike ordinary beast battle spirits. As a special branch of mecha battle spirits, if Lydia was injured, she wouldn't be able to move without experiencing blood spurts, instead, it would be a breach in the armor that covered her entire body, in this way, she could maximize her combat power to continue fighting despite her injuries. However, in Lydia's realm, the attacks of those alien beasts below the seventh rank would most likely leave some scratches on her armor, and it wouldn't take long for it to automatically recover, what kind of existence could knock a piece of armor off her body? Could it be that there were creatures of the ninth class and above in this underground cave? Lydia was indeed in the realm of the ninth class, but her superior battlefield was in the sky, going underground now was tantamount to wiping out her best tactics, on the contrary, if it was true that a ninth class foreign beast existed in the underground cave, it was definitely the king of this underground world, under the offset, even though they were both of the same ninth class, Lydia was still at an inherent disadvantage due to the objective conditions. If that was the case, then everything made sense, 
looking at the dull, pure white armor in his hand, Claude couldn't help but shake his head, as a wild fighting spirit, Lydia did not sign a contract with another armorer, while this gave her the most freedom, it also prevented her from being able to heal her injuries and replenish her spiritual energy as quickly as other battle spirits could. Even though as an armored battle spirit, Lydia should have similar self-healing abilities, now that she was underground, the other side would definitely not give her a chance to recover, in the worst case scenario, I'm afraid he'd still have to use his bottom card and transform into Barry's armor, but the problem was that after the first few transformations, the Barry's moment in his hand was mostly gone, now there was only a small finger-sized piece left of the black and red diamond-shaped crystal. I'm afraid that if I use it again, it will be exhausted, there was also a very tricky problem, there was no way to explain why Barry's armor had somehow appeared in the grotto of the beast tight frontline, with a little bit of investigation, you could easily find that Barry armor himself was present at every single appearance, this 100% attendance rate would certainly attract the attention of certain existences. The palace of the war god, for example, until he was big enough to stand on his own, Claude did not want to deal with those in the war god's temple, at least for the moment, the war god temple was still controlled by that person, he couldn't be sure how many of the people in the war god temple still held to their original beliefs. Of course, Lydia was an exception, the reason was simple, at this point in her previous life, Lydia had long since been killed in battle under the attack of the white tiger, and it was impossible for her to be involved in his plans, this was also the reason why Claude wanted to save her from the white tiger, apart from testing the butterfly effect. He also wanted to place a trustworthy person in the middle of the war god's temple, unfortunately, she had to be saved looking at the deep hole in front of him, Claude shook his head helplessly, no matter what, Lydia had to be saved, even if there was no reason for the layer above, this layer of the mentor's identity alone was worth his own hand, during this time, he could tell that Lydia was indeed very fond of Evelyn, and could even be said to be devoted to her, although Claude was considered to be very proficient in mind control and practical combat experience. The field of battle mind was indeed a blank slate, after all, he was only a master of armor, and there were some secrets between battle spirits that only the battle spirits themselves understood. Moreover, Claude could sense that Evelyn's strength had indeed increased significantly under Lydia's tutelage, not only that, but the hidden danger of her unstable foundation due to her breaking through too quickly before had almost been resolved during this time, as for how to explain the issue of Barry's armor, one could only take it one step at a time, unsurprisingly. The Barry's moment should be used up by the end of this transformation, even if it were investigated, the big deal would be to deny it with a stiff upper lip, with Lydia, a ninth-ranked god of war, as a supporter, the war god temple side couldn't go too far without evidence, although he seemed to have thought a lot, it was only a flash in his mind, and in reality, only a brief moment had passed, without the slightest hesitation, Claude tied the rope around himself and continued to explore towards the interior of the cave. Without the advantage of foresight, even with the SSS grade battle spirit emperor armor, he had to be careful, the ground collapse that caused them to fall into the underground cave this time was clearly no accident, it was likely that there were more than just these fey beasts and exotic beasts to deal with underground, it was even likely that certain unknown forces were involved as well, the deeper levels of the cave. Looking at the circle of wounded around her, Lydia's heart sank. Originally, the collapse of the ground had given her enough time to fly and escape, but once the strongest fighter in her team was gone, the rest of the people in the cave would be in a life or death situation, you see, all the people in that team were future leaders, if they were all killed here, it would be a painful blow to Barnes. So, at the last minute, Lydia decided to go down together anyway, the good news was that most of them weren't separated by the collapse, not long after landing, she managed to find quite a few people, the bad news was that while searching for the people, unknown people had stirred up the surrounding beasts, if they were just ordinary alien beasts, it would be easy for her to take care of them with her hands. But the problem was that within this group of beasts, there was actually a ninth level. Beast King After paying a small price, Lydia finally led everyone out of the Beast King's territory, however, the strangest thing was that this rock-like creature had never been seen before. Even Joe Fong, who had read all the books, had no idea, this creature was like a race that had appeared out of nowhere. 
I don't know how Claude is doing Lydia couldn't help but sigh as she glanced at the group resting against the stone wall. Even though she had started looking for Claude at the first opportunity, there was still no sign of him, if it hadn't been for her request, he would have been cultivating at the academy right now and wouldn't have stumbled upon this current danger, she simply didn't dare to imagine what she would face if something happened to Claude, unfortunately, after a slight sigh, Lydia stood up again, in case she hadn't heard correctly, the booming footsteps had come closer, even though this landing place had given them a brief respite from their pursuers, giving them all some precious time to recover, she knew very well that she couldn't stay here for long, this huge underground network was originally built by that ninth-ranked beast king himself, and there was simply no place that could evade their pursuit, the proximity of those heavy footsteps now indicated that this landing place might soon be searched as well. No matter what, it was necessary to evacuate, However, just as she was about to lead the wounded away to find the next hiding place, a loud bang came from the cave entrance behind her, the next moment, shards of stone flew through the narrow space, as the dust and smoke cleared, it was clear that the rock beast king from earlier had appeared in front of everyone's eyes. After quickly opening her force field shield to block the flying debris, Lydia's eyes were filled with gravity, despite the Time she had set aside for evacuation, the tracking ability of this strange underground beast was truly beyond her imagination, so much so that it was now accidentally blocked as she left. Lydia gritted her teeth as she looked behind her at the wounded, who had curled up into a ball, and stepped forward anyway, during the previous attack, the fledglings had been full of confidence and high morale, charging at the rock beasts in groups, however, they soon realized that their attacks were incapable of doing any damage to the rock monsters, and that they themselves would crumble at the slightest touch, however. By charging in too deep, the original retreat was soon blocked by the endless rock beasts, and the situation instantly turned into a turtle in a jar, to help them out, Lydia decided to trade injuries for injuries, forcing the rock beast king back and clearing a path. Although there were no casualties in the end, everyone was injured and their combat power was less than 50% of their original strength, if only their combat power was weakened, they could still be forcibly exploded by external forces, but the self-confidence of those flowers in the greenhouse was directly destroyed, and the entire team was filled with a depressed atmosphere. The team's morale was already extremely low and could not withstand another blow, after another blow, Lydia felt only a sweetness in her throat, in order to minimize the loss of her spiritual energy, she could only endure the discomfort and forcefully swallow the mouthful of blood that gushed from her chest, wiping the blood from the corner of her mouth, Lydia's face immediately collapsed, as a mecha battle spirit, she would most likely transfer her injuries to the armor that covered her entire body. This unique feature of a mecha battle spirit was able to maximize its combat power in the event of an injury. However, the impact she had just received had been directly on her body, and the armor that was supposed to protect her had completely lost its effect, in other words, there was no room for error, and every step she took next would be on the tip of a knife, looking at the scattered pieces of armor around her, and then at the rock beast king in front of her, only slightly damaged on the surface of the stone, Lydia sighed slightly. She was good at mobile combat, and the battlefield should have been in the sky, with the ammunition she was carrying, it would be enough to give any Ninth Order a headache if she opened a full bombardment at any cost, but now that it was underground, the vibrations from the explosion would probably cause the entire underground network to collapse, it was feared that all creatures would be buried underground. Therefore, she had to give up her greatest advantage and turn around to fight hard against this Ninth Order Beast King, Looking at the still black rock beasts in front of her, Lydia couldn't help but feel a pang of despair in her heart. The armor that had originally protected her was now worn out as well, she really didn't know how much longer she could hold out, boom. Another loud bang sounded, seemingly aware of her predicament, a flash of red light flashed through the rock beast king's eyes, in the blink of an eye, the attack was fierce again, even though Lydia had raised her spirit by 200%, with the loss of her armor's protection, it was inevitable that a loophole would appear, poof. After an unknown number of direct hits from the rock beast king's stone fist, she finally couldn't take it anymore, and a mouthful of fresh blood suddenly spewed from her mouth, above the rock wall, it instantly turned red, after enduring the intense pain and reattaching her dislocated arm, Lydia couldn't help but groan in pain, 
She couldn't remember how long it had been since she stepped into the ninth rank that she hadn't suffered an injury of this magnitude, but just as she was about to stand up, a flash of fear flashed through her eyes, the rock beast king, who had been moving sluggishly a moment ago, suddenly turned into a remnant shadow and attacked. Did it do this on purpose? Watching this scene, Lydia was shocked in her heart, so the slowness of movement it had shown earlier had actually paralyzed itself. It was simply waiting for her to show a crack so that it could kill her with a single blow. When did such a foreigner who could use tactics appear among the foreign beasts? The rock beast king's speed was far beyond Lydia's expectations, in that flash of lightning, all she could do was immediately gather the spiritual energy of her entire body, a transparent force field shield instantly condensed in the air, the rock beast king didn't dodge in the slightest, however, and rammed straight into the transparent shield blocking his path, with a crunching sound, cracks appeared at the top of the shield, immediately, they quickly spread out into the surrounding area. In an instant, the force field shield shattered, what? Lydia was even more shocked when she saw that the shield only held for a moment, this beast king was not only hiding his speed advantage, but even some of his power, this transparent shield was already her last resort, is it possible that we really have to die together? Looking down, Lydia's eyes showed a hint of confusion, if the weapons she was carrying were all fired at this moment, they would of course be able to blow up the entire cave, but Claude was still underground. He might even be breaking out at this very moment. If he blew up the cave, would he not be killing himself? The strand of unknown emotion in her heart, mixed with apologies, made her hesitate to decide. Should she let these beasts die with her, or give Claude the hope of escape? In the middle of the bomb bay, the light gradually faded, at the last moment Lydia abandoned the idea of blowing up the whole cave, but that did not mean she was giving up, even if she were to die, she would want the rock beast king before her to be buried with her, if she was truly unafraid of death, the peak combat power of the ninth rank might be even more terrifying than imagined. Just as Lydia was about to use up her last bit of hidden energy, a flash of surprise flashed across her eyes. A black shadow suddenly blocked her path, with a single blow, the charging rock beast king was unceremoniously thrown out. Barry? When she saw the black shadow clearly, Lydia couldn't help but let out a cry of surprise, right now, the most important thing was to settle this rock beast king in front of her first, you must know that this place was underground. In the middle of a narrow passage, even dodging was very difficult, let alone an operation like accelerating, at most, the type of rock was different before it was transformed, I'm sure I aroused suspicion, but I could not say a word, could it be a spatial ability? As for how the rock beast had mutated, he really didn't want to look into it, it had to be said that the mutated rock beast was indeed much stronger than the original, but this individual in front of him, whether it was strength or intelligence, it had clearly surpassed the limits of what a rock beast should be. If he remembered correctly, the last time the berry armor had appeared was in Starlight City. Even if you looked at the entire blue planet, there were not many people in history who had ever awakened it, it could only be explained by the different rules of the world, Lydia, who had fallen to the side, couldn't help but cry out in shock when she saw this scene, it was necessary, a quick fight. Barry's armor, now reduced to a mere shadow, didn't seem to be limited by the terrain at all, after turning his attention back to the rock beast not far away, Claude realized a serious problem, you couldn't say that gold was smarter than rock, could you? Claude scratched his head, he felt like he was connected to a network of rock people, there was always the illusion that he was about to grow a brain, at this moment. All he could feel was that this thing in front of him was just like a stone. In a latrine, smelly and hard. When he placed it in the middle of the beast flood, he felt afraid that only Xuan Wu's defense could compare to it. That series of combos just now seemed to have only removed layers of skin, unlike these foreign beasts, the rock beasts were all transformed from stone and didn't need to reproduce, so where did the genes come from? However, considering the fact that the cave could collapse again at any time, he finally gave up on this idea and switched to bury hundred breaking strikes, which had little effect on his surroundings, just as he was puzzled, the countless remnants of Barry's armor in the middle of the cave suddenly attacked from all directions, it turns out that this is the true strength of Barry's armor, Claude, in the middle of the battle, obviously doesn't know their inner thoughts, one move, two wins. 
However, the spatial ability was one of the two great laws, on a par with time. Only by mastering the spatial ability could one do this. There wasn't even a single break in the tight fit, in an instant, the force field shield shattered, what? Lydia was even more shocked when she saw that the shield only held for a moment, this beast king was not only hiding his speed advantage, but even some of his power, this transparent shield was already her last resort, is it possible that we really have to die together? Looking down, Lydia's eyes showed a hint of confusion, if the weapons she was carrying were all fired at this moment, they would of course be able to blow up the entire cave, but Claude was still underground. He might even be breaking out at this very moment. If he blew up the cave, would he not be killing himself? The strand of unknown emotion in her heart, mixed with apologies, made her hesitate to decide. Should she let these beasts die with her, or give Claude the hope of escape? In the middle of the bomb bay, the light gradually faded, at the last moment Lydia abandoned the idea of blowing up the whole cave, but that did not mean she was giving up, even if she were to die, she would want the rock beast king before her to be buried with her, if she was truly unafraid of death, the peak combat power of the ninth rank might be even more terrifying than imagined. Just as Lydia was about to use up her last bit of hidden energy, a flash of surprise flashed across her eyes. A black shadow suddenly blocked her path, with a single blow, the charging rock beast king was unceremoniously thrown out. Barry? When she saw the black shadow clearly, Lydia couldn't help but let out a cry of surprise, right now, the most important thing was to settle this rock beast king in front of her first, you must know that this place was underground. In the middle of a narrow passage, even dodging was very difficult, let alone an operation like accelerating, at most, the type of rock was different before it was transformed, I'm sure I aroused suspicion, but I could not say a word, could it be a spatial ability? As for how the rock beast had mutated, he really didn't want to look into it, it had to be said that the mutated rock beast was indeed much stronger than the original, but this individual in front of him, whether it was strength or intelligence, it had clearly surpassed the limits of what a rock beast should be, if he remembered correctly, the last time the berry armor had appeared was in Starlight City. Even if you looked at the entire blue planet, there were not many people in history who had ever awakened it, it could only be explained by the different rules of the world, Lydia, who had fallen to the side, couldn't help but cry out in shock when she saw this scene, it was necessary, a quick fight. Barry's armor, now reduced to a mere shadow, didn't seem to be limited by the terrain at all, after turning his attention back to the rock beast not far away, Claude realized a serious problem, you couldn't say that gold was smarter than rock, could you? Claude scratched his head, he felt like he was connected to a network of rock people, there was always the illusion that he was about to grow a brain, at this moment. All he could feel was that this thing in front of him was just like a stone. In a latrine, smelly and hard. When he placed it in the middle of the beast flood, he felt afraid that only Xuan Wu's defense could compare to it. That series of combos just now seemed to have only removed layers of skin, unlike these foreign beasts, the rock beasts were all transformed from stone and didn't need to reproduce, so where did the genes come from? However, considering the fact that the cave could collapse again at any time, he finally gave up on this idea and switched to bury hundred breaking strikes, which had little effect on his surroundings, just as he was puzzled, the countless remnants of Barry's armor in the middle of the cave suddenly attacked from all directions, it turns out that this is the true strength of Barry's armor, Claude, in the middle of the battle, obviously doesn't know their inner thoughts, one move, two wins. However, the spatial ability was one of the two great laws, on a par with time. Only by mastering the spatial ability could one do this. There wasn't even a single break in the tight fit. Could it be a genetic mutation? In addition, the dark pits and traps that littered the area were extremely annoying obstacles, compared to the white tiger, the rock beast king's aggressiveness was nothing more than a mole cricket looking at an elephant, but the stone armor condensed from minerals was actually thicker than a turtle shell, without the slightest hesitation, Claude reached out and grabbed the handle of the halberd, his entire body surging with black chi, and then turned into a shadow towards the rock beast king. Slashing heavily, that was Claude's first thought, even though he already had a brain, he still didn't understand why there were so many of them, However, a trace of doubt soon appeared in her mind, 
after shaking her slightly sore arm, Claude finally figured out the upper limit of this thing's defenses, Lydia reacted in an instant, what was even more annoying was that in this narrow passage, in order to maintain such a high speed, one had to constantly use shift to avoid the surrounding rock. Walls in time. But why, he suddenly found himself at the forefront of the beast tide, from the most common rocks to the most valuable rare gold mines, there were all kinds, logically speaking, it should be difficult for a low-level exotic beast like a rock beast to cultivate to a high realm, besides, they were still being transformed from mindless rocks, and their intelligence was also at an extremely low level, capable only of acting on instinct. Each of the remnants of the attack completely shattered the stone armor that had taken a hundred years to form on the rock beast king's body, Looking at the only piece of Barry's carving that remained, Claude knew one thing for sure, but in front of Barry's armor, it wasn't enough. In front of him, this black armor exuding a killing atmosphere was not exactly the Barry armor he had struggled to find before, the next moment, a black halberd slowly coalesced in the air. Among the minerals, the variety is much greater, however, no matter how rare it is, it is still a dead thing, Barry hundred breaking strike. Originally, Claude wanted to use a big move like Purgatory Blade Chopping Strike or Divine Demon Extermination Split to finish off directly, however, she had to give up her advantage and go hard against the Rock Beast King, this was not only to maintain the mystique of Barry's armor, but also to avoid saying more than she had to, looking at the suddenly more numerous figures in front of him. The Rock Beast King couldn't help but see a flash of confusion in his tiny eyes, even though the rock. Beast King was no worse than the White Tiger, this time he could not end the battle as slowly as before, but he soon shook his head, a few moments later, Lydia's worry was gone, replaced by a heart full of surprise. Not only would he be able to kill the Rock Beast King, but he would also be able to annihilate the surrounding Rock Beasts as well, the good thing was that this short distance instant transmission, the consumption wasn't too high, it was still within the acceptable range on top of Barry's purgatory halberd, black light surrounded it, if you were not careful, it would hit the surrounding rock walls or pillars, not only that, but it appeared inside this collapsed grotto. At that moment, Claude, who had also sensed her doubt, couldn't help but sigh in his heart, even when it looked like he was about to crash into the rock face, his figure always disappeared a moment before, only to reappear in another place, the next moment, Claude's figure instantly split into a hundred, watch out. The sky was filled with shards of stone, splashing everywhere, although not as powerful as the other two sure kill techniques, the characteristics of Barry's hundred shattering strike were more appropriate for this occasion, if the rock beast king wasn't completely crushed, it was likely that he would be reborn as a block of stone after a few years. Barry's hundred breaking strikes, on the other hand, were enough to grind him to powder. Even a monkey that jumped out of a rock wouldn't be able to be reborn under such an attack. I can't believe it, so strong. Lydia's eyes were filled with shock as she watched the rock beast king crumble to dust and scatter across the sky, you must know that this beast had forced itself to the point where it had to die together. But to the berry armor in front of her, it seemed like a mere minion to be dealt with casually. On top of that, she found that the information Barnes had gathered was simply inadequate, whenever they thought they knew enough about Barry's armor, the next time he appeared he would bring different and entirely new abilities, things like the just revealed spatial law or the final packaging of the split technique were all information that had never appeared before, so the limit of Barry's armor, where exactly was it? Or maybe it didn't have a limit at all. At that moment, Lydia was ashamed of her earlier thoughts. Earlier, she had wondered why Barry's armor had appeared here by chance, as she swept away the debris that covered the ground, an earth-colored light flickered in the center of the stone pestle, sure enough, his mind was still too pure and flawless, truly a for-good youth with all-round development of morality, intelligence, physicality and aesthetics. As this underground network was so intricate and complicated that it was difficult to find an exit, it was simply better not to look for one, Claude, who had been passively listening to her thoughts, couldn't help but get a black line on his face when he sensed these thoughts, and Claude couldn't help but sigh a little, it was the first time she had looked up to someone so much since stepping into the ninth rank. The surrounding group of students couldn't help but feel a little strange in there. Hearts when they saw this scene, however, at that moment, Claude's current actions caused them to be confused, 
the matter of Barry's armor was something that only the barn's hierarchy had the authority to know about, as long as you can get out, that's called an exit, well, Lydia herself is done brainstorming. Instead, you have to believe it before you believe it. How could someone so pure and powerful have an agenda? It seems that in the future, when faced with Barry's armor, there is no questioning before believing, after all, it was a ninth-ranked beast king, even if it wasn't comparable to the white tiger, one of the four divine beast qualities, how could it not fall too far down the ranks? Having stayed underground for too long, it was inevitable that his eyes would have to adjust when he saw the bright light at first glance, looking up at the black figure rising straight into the sky, Lydia's heart was filled with the complex feelings of shock and powerlessness, just as she was about to rub it in, she reacted violently, seeing the berry's moment shrink to the size of a mere fingertip. Claude dared not delay any longer and reached out to pull out the berry's purgatory halberd. That was stuck in the ground beside her, with that, he pointed the single halberd at the sky, the only thing he cared about was the prey that had fallen from the rock beast king. Now the group of flowers in the greenhouse were finally learning that the beast tide frontline wasn't just a place to gild the lily, as they had imagined, the main battle was a one-handed one. Such a good saying, why hadn't he thought of it before? You must know that this place was thousands of meters underground. Any small burst of energy could cause a chain reaction in this underground cave, that senior, what will it be? Originally, he was still struggling with how to explain the appearance of Barry's armor, now it seemed likely that he was here for his own breakthrough, at that point, not just them, but even the Barry armor would have to be buried together deep underground. As the loud noise echoed, Lydia suddenly felt a slight discomfort in her eyes for some reason, if they could get over this hurdle, this experience would be a boost to their growth. Barry's armor was about to disappear, so of course it was important to use it until the last moment, there was no envy or jealousy in Lydia's heart in the face of such an existence, without the slightest hesitation, Claude raised his hand and took it, as long as they were the actions of a strong person, they definitely had their own purpose, Lydia knew very well that even though she and the other party were at the same ninth rank, the difference was heaven and earth, and Barry's armor was at the ninth level because the peak was only at the ninth level. From a certain point of view, this ninth rank that countless people looked up to was just a shackle that limited his realm. Among them, there should be quite a few people who would have a psychological shadow as a result of this incident, after all, who would question a strong person without a long eye. Lydia, who had managed to recover a little, quickly brought a possibility to his mind, and his heart skipped a beat. But this had nothing to do with him, but just as she was about to warn him, the pitch black armor had already turned into a dark light and soared into the sky, there were even those among them who believed it was a guard Barnes had specially sent to protect them in the shadows, the reason was simple, indeed, even through the layers of dust, the searing sunlight was exceptionally conspicuous, there were no roads in this world, and when people walked more, they naturally made roads, from a certain point of view, the nature of this thing and Barry's moment were somewhat similar, around him was this, the rays of sunlight filtering down. Not caring about her uncomfortable eyes, she looked up quickly, her own breakthrough to the ninth rank had been the result of hard work all along, when he saw the message that appeared above the tablet, a flash of surprise flashed across his eyes, to be able to precisely punch through a rock formation without causing it to collapse, this kind of superb control over power proved that Barry's armor wasn't a reckless person with only power. In fact, it was even more perfect than the explanation he had prepared, if he couldn't cross it, he would simply die, glancing at the group of newcomers who had long since retreated to the corner, Claude didn't say anything more, the exit was the same, in their eyes, the black armor that suddenly appeared was just a strange senior who had saved them from the rock beast king, immediately after that, a deep black light that seemed to devour everything lingered above the armor that covered his entire body, was that really it? If the effect was really what he thought it was, after Barry's moment had been consumed, he himself wouldn't be in a situation where he had no cards, even if, he had been blasted out by force. Looking up at the huge rock above him, a cold glint flashed through Claude's eyes, what is the point of storing up energy now? Is he trying to force the exit open? Claude never thought that this time, his helpless move would reap such things. 
That ninth order beast king, is it already dead as for the rest of those rock beasts, they have also lost control due to the death of the rock beast king who equals as the central brain and instantly dispersed in a flurry, the opponent's talent is simply not an existence of the same class, all that could be born was a feeling of powerlessness, as Lydia drifted off, she noticed that the black figure in the sky had long since disappeared, Claude lowered his head to find that the pitch black armor on, his body had already turned into pieces of flying ash, disintegrating in the middle of the sky and the earth, looking at the small piece of pure black crystal left in his hand, he couldn't help but shake his head. It would be better to just use it up, this remaining bit of Barry's moment, it was hard to say if it could still support a transformation, however, this harvest more or less made up for the loss, unlike ordinary exotic beasts, what the ninth-ranked rock beast king dropped was a yellow diamond-shaped crystal that emitted a strong earth elemental aura, as he picked up the crystal in his pocket. The corresponding information instantly appeared above the tablet in front of Claude's eyes, adamantium. Armor quality, S-grade battle spirit growable weapons, explosive thunder drill, explosive thunder cannon, explosive fist, thunder steel explosive hammer, thunder steel explosive axe Claude thought for a moment before making a suggestion, this luck, it's a bit too good, isn't it? It's just that they haven't found a way to awaken Evelyn yet. Looking at the earth-colored crystal in his hand, Claude couldn't help but frown. If he hadn't guessed incorrectly, the two armors, Wind Shadow and Interdictor, could also be awakened in addition to the Vitra armor, but now, with such a big event, there was no reaction from the War God Temple, which was already bizarre, besides, even a ninth-ranked War God like Lydia would almost collapse in the grotto for a catastrophe of this magnitude, anyway, this world even had Fey and Battle Spirit, so it was reasonable to be a bit metaphysical. At that time, the distance between the entire team wasn't that great, so it was reasonable to say that even if it was a ground fall, the place of the fall shouldn't be too far away, he couldn't predict what would happen next, if he, a third level armor master, ran out of the room in one piece, how could that be considered outrageous? Ignoring the wounds on her body, she hurried over. Attribute. Law, although it is extremely unlikely, there is actually a battle spirit on the blue star that awakens multiple forms at the same time. According to the theory of the battle spirit that has been passed down in the blue star for 10,000 years, Evelyn shouldn't be able to awaken an armor outside of the light, shadow, and five element series, even if it's wrongly evolved. Just then, a thought suddenly flashed through his mind. Hearing this explanation, Lydia was also left speechless, skills, Thunderbolt Strike, Vidra Heaven and Earth Fist, Vidra Boom Thunderbolt Strike. Hybrid Drill Ares Destruction Technique was actually. Vidra Armor actually, the battle spirit that Evelyn had awakened was an SSS grade Imperial Armor, and it shouldn't have been in the same series as the Vidra Armor, not only that, but he had actually managed to find the exit in the middle of the complex underground network of layers and layers. He didn't believe that this subsidence was just a coincidence, where did you fall when the ground subsided? As a result, people explained it directly with metaphysics, sure enough, Lydia, who had just stepped out, glanced at the familiar figure not far away, and his heart was immediately overjoyed, after a quick check of his body, Lydia shook her head with some confusion in her tone, how about we return to the rendezvous point first? But now it seemed that her limits were much more than that. Just as he was thinking about it, he suddenly felt movement at the entrance to the cave not far away, but if that was the case, there was another problem, under normal circumstances, if she contacted the war god temple at her level, even if it was just a small matter, she would receive an immediate response. The cases in the records were also all discovered by accident after cultivation, even the awakening ceremony could not be verified because the ratio was too rare. Once this speculation was made, Claude felt that many questions could be answered, what was the ultimate armor of the series in which they existed? Could it be that the appearance of Barry's armor was not a mistaken impression? In his previous life, limited by his sight and his realm, all he knew was that Evelyn had the power of the Emperor's armor in her body, which she hadn't been able to awaken, after hastily throwing the crystals into his storage device, Claude hurriedly found a comfortable position to lie down and assume an injured appearance, special ability. Spell seal block it's hard to believe that it's really the chosen one's chi that's protecting her, since she died a long time ago. 
Since the person behind it hadn't succeeded this time, it was conceivable that there would be a second and third coincidence, according to the direction of the previous life, if it hadn't been for him, the people present would all be dead by now, what's more, those people who were supposed to be dead were still alive, he looked up and saw the students who had been trapped underground climbing up the passage they had left behind, I don't know, but when I woke up I saw light coming from above, so. I followed the direction of the light and came out, the berry armor she had summoned earlier was also the product of a faulty evolution, Claude said, looking back at the group of wounded leaning against a tree, but if she herself had other battle spirits that hadn't been detected during the awakening ceremony, then it all made sense. After sensing her thoughts, Claude couldn't help but blush. Rather than go to the trouble of explaining it, it would be better to just accept the metaphysics. The thing she was most worried about hadn't happened, otherwise, she really didn't know how to face Claude, and after thinking about it, Lydia still asked the question that had puzzled her the most, but Claude hadn't followed them down to the bottom of the underground cave, he was close to the ground, is it possible that Evelyn herself has awakened more than one battle spirit? Why didn't she think to use that reason herself? Except for Lydia, his unexpected knowledge can't work for the current situation either, introduction, adamantine armor, immovable as a mountain, moving like a thunderbolt, the great power of heaven and earth, compared to before, I'm afraid the butterfly effect this time will be unprecedented in scale, fortunately, it's only a depletion of spiritual energy and a few minor injuries, so it won't take more than two days to recover. The Emperor's armor can be divided into the five elements of light and shadow armor, but the Vajra armor can't be divided from Barry's armor, and Claude didn't expect that before he unlocked the five elements of light and shadow armor, another armor of the same lineage as Barry's armor would actually appear, what to do next? If we continue to march forward with this group of wounded people around us, their fighting power greatly reduced, entering the alien beast territory ahead of us will be no different to sending them to their deaths, I've contacted the palace of the war god, but there's been no word yet, the procedure he had so carefully thought out was to follow the logical chain as closely as possible, according to scientific principles. The safest way, of course, was to retreat to the rendezvous point first. And then discuss where to go from there, to his surprise, however, Lydia shook her head, no way. This answer had obviously not occurred to Claude. Logically, in such a serious situation, the first priority must be to ensure the safety of the personnel, how is it possible, with such a high rate of injury, to continue exploring with a stiff upper lip? Seemingly sensing his doubt, Lydia simply pointed behind her and opened her mouth, look behind you, hearing this, Claude turned his head to look, when he saw the scene in his field of vision, his heart suddenly stopped, at some point, the road they had originally come from had collapsed, even the ground that could be seen was shaking at the moment and was about to collapse twice at any moment making it clearly impossible to get through from above, looking at the scene in front of him, Claude. Couldn't help but frown, there was one point he had overlooked, the underground network formed by the group of rock beasts that had been hibernating for so many years was connected in all directions, and the entire underground had been completely dug out, if you wanted to return the same way, there had to be at least one road, but now the roads were all gone. The only option was to keep going, but is going forward a path to life or a path to extinction? Of course I know that going forward is dangerous, but staying here is even more of a dead end, looking at the darkening sky, Lydia sighed a little, of course she knew the risk she was taking by continuing, the beasts, they could show up at any time, but if she stayed here, she wouldn't only have to face the beasts, but also the ground that could collapse at any moment Claude didn't answer and remained silent. Even though Lydia didn't say it explicitly, he already felt a strong sense of powerlessness, as a being who had once fought at the forefront of a beast tide for so many years, Claude was also aware of one thing, with the current team's fighting power, if they continued, even if they were lucky enough to reach the end of the line, it was feared that very few people would be able to survive. However, the point that Claude found most strange was still the war god's palace, no matter what, after such a major accident, whether it was a negative response or an active rescue, there should have been an answer the first time, but now, after such a long time, the war god's palace had strangely fallen into a state of silence, this was not reasonable at all. Claude's movement suddenly froze, could it be that something was wrong with the war god palace itself? 
According to certain top secret information he had seen in his previous life, the War God Temple seemed to have been holding a meeting at this very moment, it was just that for so many years, the number of meetings held by the War God Temple was simply too many, even if one were to go through them all, it would be impossible to be impressed by every single one of them. So what was the content of the meeting, but even after searching his entire brain, he was unable to find any relevant memory fragments, no, this can't go on, in an instant, Claude made a decision, with the flapping of the butterfly's wings, a storm had formed, instead of staying confused in the phantoms of the past, it was better to open up a whole new future, you couldn't rely on the temple of the war god anymore, you have to rely on yourself. After a quick scan of the area, Claude quickly counted up the remaining fighting force, fortunately, there were no missing members among the newcomers and their accompanying mentors, moreover, due to the protection of the mentors, most of the newcomers had suffered only minor injuries and did not appear to have broken arms or legs, however, none of the guards sent by the rallying point to protect them were spared. In addition, Lydia, the lead fighter, was not in good condition either, not only was the armor that covered her surface only one-tenth of what it should have been, but her spiritual energy reserves were nearly depleted, making it difficult for her to continue fighting, trouble, this group of old and sick people really gave Claude a headache, however, when he unfolded the card that had been handed out before the training began, he was immediately shocked by the image he saw, this one, it looks a bit familiar. Even after decades, his mind was still stuck in the habit, so he didn't recognize it at first, however, after blacking out the area where the landing had taken place, the map in front of him began to match the memories in his head, if he remembered correctly, this area was not exactly the place he had passed through when he had sneaked into the white tiger mystic realm, and in order to avoid frightening the beasts as much as possible, Claude had personally surveyed quite a few routes. The current site was one of the alternative routes, it was only because of the subsidence that this route was not chosen in the end, but even so, his mind was still very familiar with this route, of course, it was impossible to go back, the area where the ground was sinking was the only way out, but that didn't mean it was impossible to go on. Since this adventure had been organized by the countries of the Blue Star Federation, as long as they could reach the location of the Vermilion Bird. Secret Realm, they would be able to contact the outside world immediately, Although the Blue Star Federation's internal secret rivalries were always going on, when it came to the issue of foreign beasts, there would still be more or less a certain amount of restraint, the most important thing now was to act immediately, relying on the surveys from his previous life. Claude knew very well that the area they were in was not only prone to frequent subsidence, but that there was also a small swarm of beasts hibernating not far away. Although the strength of this small group of beasts was not that great, their group was even weaker now and could not withstand any more tossing and turning, should I give you the command? After hearing his suggestion, Lydia couldn't help but stare, it wasn't that she had a problem with it, it was just that the way the team was set up, it shouldn't be Claude's turn to lead, she was worried that there would be people on the team who would not be convinced, however, after a scan of the area, that concern vanished, apart from herself, who was crippled at the ninth rank. The tutors accompanying her were all badly injured and had no fighting power left, as for the group of disciples. If they really encountered a flood of beasts, what use would a group of second-level armor masters be? After all, they would probably have to be protected by those injured old things, looking at the entire team, Claude had already become the strongest fighter. 